I'm thinking I probably should have stayed home today. <laughs> Is it that bad? Oh, my God. You got a cold? I, uh, I had a massive allergy attack yesterday because I was staying with some people that had a dog, and I'm really allergic to dogs. But it's stupid me. I'm like, no, it'll be okay. Every yeah. time I go, no, it'll be okay. And then I'm just, like, sneezing and runny eyes, puffy eyes for, like, eight straight hours. And then drove back to New York last night thinking, all right, it'll just it'll just pass and I'll be completely normal today. And, uh, no, it just continues. So now I'm thinking that I, I probably caught a cold on top of that. I'll tell you where you caught a cold. Atlantic City. It's the only, time, it's the only place I used to catch colds. Until I, and now people make fun of me for this, but I'm I'm awful about it. Uh, getting up and washing my hands constantly yeah. during uh, when when you're playing any of the casino games, those chips you're holding, oh Jesus, are just yeah. little little petri dishes of yeah. disease that you're handing back and forth to everybody in the place. Yeah, I bet one hundred dollars and. A little bit of cancer. Yeah, okay. here's a little bit of that. Right, right, right. I got some. I'm gonna raise your emphysema. I have to. I'm I'm pot committed with tuberculosis, yes. and I gotta raise your emphysema. Yes. That's yeah. what you're doing. You're trading them around. You ever see the guy comes over with the big, um, the the plastic case, and he brings over new chips. That's a new diseases. Yeah. All for everyone, and they stack them up in the yep. disease dish, and then they hand them around. And just look around at the table. Would you? Would you touch? The hands of 99% of the people you see at the casino? No. You are. Yep. It's worse than sexual transmitted yeah, you're, diseases. You're licking their bellies when you... You're pretty <laughs> much licking, like, belly and just mouths. Just go up to that Asian gentleman smoking the cigarette at the end of the table and lick his mouth. Just yeah. lick the inside That's nostrils. what you're doing. The when inside you're nostril. Taking his chair. You feel yeah. all good that you won his money. You're yeah. like, yeah, look at me, crank it over here. Ah, uh, take whatever he's got. That's what I was telling you, that disease actually runs the world. It yeah. runs everything. We, like, if you look at it from a certain standpoint, everything we do is to spread disease. To spread disease. That's the sole purpose of yeah. us being here on this planet. Like, some bugs in our brains put the idea in that gambling is a good idea, because it's an amazing disease-spreading Yeah, system. it's a great disease-spread. You're yeah. absolutely right. I like that theory. Anthony uh, always talks about the casinos and how dirty they are and how, how they're filled with germs. I'm like, shut up. Up, you germaphobe. Mm -hmm. But here I am yeah. on Monday morning with oh. a nice uh, heavy cold the, that I thought the was dice, allergies. The craps table, people, craps. You blow on the dice and <laughs> yeah, yeah, them yeah right they're like, throw them to the come table. on, let me hack on it. <laughs> yeah, the last, and then throw them. Yeah, and they give you five dice. Like, which what do you want to get this time? <laughs> yeah, which disease yeah. do you want? And the people that just touch the dice at the craps table, those disgusting <laughs> verminous. <laughs> Just brought a disease from China or someplace? Yeah, because SARS now has been introduced. Yeah. Uh, that's right. Well, ladies and gentlemen, we just opened up a new SARS table. <laughs> new SARS table is opening. Uh, it's disguised as craps, but feel free to play. Yes, and people will like, what the hell? Why, why am I? And uh, Oak played three-card poker. Yeah, I figured out the game, by the way. It's a cool game. Yeah, you, you lose all night long. You yeah. go down about $800, mm -hmm. and then uh, you're... You're drunk, it's 4.30 in the morning, your girlfriend wants to go to sleep, everybody else around you wants to go to sleep, you're like, all right, one more hand. So $100 down on the ante, $100 down on the other thing there, the, the thing, pair plus. the pair plus thing, and then you get your three cards, and then you just bet $100 without looking at your Don't cards. Don't even look yeah, to yeah. see if they're worth it. Don't betting. even look and even announce... Announce ahead of time this is what you're going to do. I won't be looking. This is my last hand of the night, and I'm going in blind. I'm not even looking at my cards. Is everyone hearing me? Yeah. So I got 100, 100, 100. Don't even know my cards. She comes up with, uh, I think, it just ace high, whatever. I'm like, I, I guess I'm looking pretty good. She qualifies. A um, couple people won. A couple people lost. She turns over my cards. Flush. Oh, so you had the flush. Wow. Went about a thousand dollars even for the night. Good night, everybody. You leave. See Thank you tomorrow you. morning. Oh. I'll be back. Never happens. Wow. No. So I gotta you figure it out. You took your disease chips yeah. to the disease uh, yeah. cashier where they hand you disease room. money. Yeah. Right. So, it's yeah. fantastic. But that game. So I was even for the night, but now I got a heavy cold for a week. So yeah. I, I guess the casino won. Of course. <laughs> it's <laughs> another game where um, they have uh, uh, added a new disease factor, the cards themselves. Yes. The disease, you get the card disease from the cards. 
you get them from the chips, and then yeah, when you cash in the, the money, money, and then when you give that money to a hooker who gives right you, another uh, disease when diseases. she's up in your room, oh, yeah, my God. maybe sure. that cancels it out though. Oh, maybe <laughs> that's how you inoculate. They got the uh, it's one of the few table games that allows you to touch the cards. Right. So because uh, I guess with Texas Hold'em being so big, they wanted a game where you actually feel like you're in control yeah, of something and holding cards. your cards. Yeah. So you're able to pick up the cards in three card poker, which just adds another, you know, when you hand those cards back and they go into the shuffling machine and come back out. That's not one of those sterilizing shoveling machines. I thought it was. Oh, these cards are hot. Oh, oh, they're piping hot. <laughs> they just came out of the sterilizing machine. Like what do they call barbers. that? A clava? What, what is it called? A barber's <laughs> towel machine. A clava? Clava? Yeah. Something know. sterilizing machine. But no, it's the it's opposite. Just, it's doing exactly the opposite. It's shuffling the diseases yeah, together. Exactly. <laughs> What an awful place. <laughs> and just the smoking. Like, I understand people yeah. love smoking. Yeah. God yeah. bless you. Have a pisser with it. This could be from smoking. And you know, too. by the way, I'm, the free uh, drinks. Yeah, it could be. Yeah. The, the free drinks come in. Um, they, boy, do they wash those glasses between each other. Well, they have I'm to. I'm sure they sure. really make oh, sure they they're have clean. To. they got to keep everything clean. Sure. Louis C.K., by oh, the way. That's don't. the voice you're hearing in the background. They don't just let the glass, like, <laughs> just blow just on refill it. Just another one. You rinse it off. Well, you've seen you've seen uh, behind bars what they do. They take yeah. a, a it's a single sink, and right. uh, they throw a tablet. This magical tablet. <laughs> right. We can't cure diseases, but bars can. With yeah. this magical <laughs> white tablet, yeah. they throw in a single sink, <laughs> and there's like five brushes <laughs> yes. that are in this water, mm -hmm. and all night long. A tired bartender. A tired bartender is taking your glasses and yeah. the, those of the other patrons yeah. and dipping them in this water concoction. Yeah. Just giving them that one, so one little dip, <coughs> dip yeah. over the brush, yeah. and then this rinse in another sink that is just standing water. Yes. And then they're <laughs> magically sterilized. <laughs> yes. He's giving it that one kind of, I hate all of these people. Oh, us. this job sucks. And if you need it dry, of course, there's a rag that sits there all night yes. that he uses to rub the bar with yeah. and puke yeah. and whatever else might come. Yeah. You mean they're not scrubbing transom. the edges of the glasses? Oh, I don't think they're goes? really... Not like, like at like home. Like you do at home, no? At home, with the people you know and love. Actually, yeah. I was... You scrub away at the rim of the glass. Yeah. And a little known fact, I was a bartender for a few years. It's just a quick dip, dip, dip. You're yep. busy. You That's got the it. very soapy water, then you got the sort of soapy water, right. then you got just the water. The rinse sink. So it's dip, 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 done. Air dry. You're, you're not scrubbing There's anything. There's no scrubbing no. around the, the edge what? of the glass. The alcohol. Uh, well, that's what they that say. Sure. That kills all the sure. germs. Yeah, no, and the ice right. is made of incredibly good water. <laughs> <All right. laughs> the ice is made. That's ice maker. That's another thing. The ice where they just take the glass and shove it in the yeah. ice anyway. Yeah. I'm, su <laughs> I'm surprised I don't have the flu at this point. Keep talking. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Uh, you're working on it. You're talking you into a case of cancer. Jesus. We all are. I just went yeah. to Atlantic City for the night to have a little fun with Big Ken and the gang from Philly. It's a gamble, all right. And I come back with this uh, this heavy cold, but I, I I learned how to beat three cards. So. Three cards, good. It's a game of uh, you just got to keep your ass in the seat long enough. Yeah. Grind, it out, grind, grind it out, grind it out, grind it out, grind it out until you hit a big not, hand. Not caring and thinking it's your last hand. When I was in Vegas to do comic relief, I, I just I decided I'm going to lose two hundred dollars at the blackjack table and go to sleep. That was just going to lose it and yeah. be right. So I decided to, and I was tired. Like I don't know why I had to lose it, but I was like two one hundred dollars. <laughs> hands and I'm gone. That's it. So $100. I think everybody does that because you don't want to go upstairs with the chips. You're no. like, you know what? I, I'm just tired. I'm just going to make two huge bets yeah. and get out of here. Yeah. You're, you're not exactly. even thinking that you're just losing. You, you might as well just throw the money on the floor and let someone pick it up. <laughs> Come Complete. on, pick it up. So I lose 100 bucks, and then the second $100 I win. And then I just keep leaving it on the table because I want to let it play. ride. And I just kept letting it ride, and I and I every, I just kept winning. And I'm dumpling down with like showing a seven against his <laughs> ten oh God. with a thousand dollars on a hand. That was like the first stupid thing I did. I showed a seven, and he showed a ten. I doubled down with a thousand dollars on it and won. <laughs> and I kept winning and winning, and people were crowding around me. And did I, you I make won. a decision like? Maybe now I should just leave and, and win and not. No, I just kept going because I had a friend with me who was just that uh, who was mad at me for not starting to be conservative. <laughs> right, like, right. Screw what are you, you doing? The whole, the whole point of this was, was to lose to money. Money. <laughs> Yeah. So I just kept going. I won ten thousand dollars playing blackjack. <laughs> right. Come on. Playing blackjack oh, on your last two hundred. Yes. Ten thousand wow. dollars went home. Went up to the hotel room. Stupidly didn't turn it into cash. Because <clears throat> uh, if I saw the cash, I would have respected it. Yeah. Oh, well, that's why they give you chips. Yeah, exactly. <laughs>
it's a disease <laughs> so then, then you I, I, to keep you from remembering. It's <laughs> your money. Exactly. So then I call my wife and I tell her I, I won ten thousand dollars. She's like, "That's amazing." And I said, "Well, I'm not. I'm still in Vegas. <laughs> I'm not done yet. I'm not done yet." <laughs> and she's like, "What does that mean?" And I'm like, "I'm oh. still in Vegas. I'm yeah. not." You know what that means? You're I, thinking in your head, "I could turn this ten thousand into a hundred thousand uh, with ease." That would be a hell yeah, of a just pay means I, I'm not. I, I haven't <laughs> won it till I get it home to my state that has no legal gambling. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> For now. Yeah. Casinos are popping up all over the place. Yeah. You know, they they, they want to be responsible and, and keep everyone safe from the uh, the online gambling. But uh, no, but, but, let's, just, but let's make sure there's a casino yeah, on every corner everywhere. eventually. Yeah. How much did you lose of it? I lost all of it. All of it. Plus <laughs> another thousand. <laughs> the next day, <laughs> as quickly as I want it, doing the same dumb betting, the same stupid. Yeah, thinking strategy. that was a new strategy <laughs> that you're going to write a book about it and. Yep. And my I broke the is, system. She's so mad at me. She's like, you lost $10,000. I'm like, no, no. I didn't. No, I, I came. Uh, it's nothing. She says, we needed that 10000 I'm like, you can't say that we needed money that I got magically. That you want that right. <laughs> you can't say that it was ten uh, grand that we need. And I made twenty grand while I was there. I earned money. Right. You were like, working. No, you, were... you lost You lost ten. See, that's where some people don't understand. No. You didn't. You lost 200 And yeah. you actually made money because you were there to work. Like exactly. Some people go there on vacation and they uh, do lose money, but I uh, I had a little gambling weekend myself. Yeah, a little private gambling uh, uh, Saturday night. Went over to uh, Kevin Smith's uh, uh, comic book store. Oh, his illegal poker Bank. game he does every Saturday it's night. Not illegal. He's not taking any rake. He's not taking any money. <laughs> he's he's taking the other people's money. He's not. You know, the house isn't getting any money. <laughs> I just mess with you. But uh, yeah, a little poker game uh, went on, and uh, as you recall, some of the listeners perhaps. Um, I got raped last time I went there. About a month ago. How much went, did you lose? It was a, a hundred dollar buy in and um I I bought in five times. So <laughs> I, I dropped five hundred dollars the last time and lost everything. Could not <laughs> win, could not get a hand, could not make anything work. Mm. Any hand I did get, someone had a better one and yeah. I you know, it was it was one of those situations. Well, uh Saturday night Start playing about 7.30, around there, around 8 o'clock on Saturday night. And uh, it's me, Kevin Smith, and uh, uh, listeners and viewers of his movies, you know, message board people. And um, Kevin's got a great little system worked out. He has figured out how to get his listener, his listeners, his viewers of his, of his films and fans to come over to his comic book shop and hand him over money. <laughs> wow. <laughs> He's really a good poker player. Right. And he just gets people, hey, play poker. Play poker with Kevin Smith. Yeah. Who wouldn't want to do with that? It's a dream sure. come true. And they don't want to leave, so they stay there all night just <laughs> pulling money. I buy unlimited buy-ins. <laughs> That's Kevin, it. Because when are you going to get the chance to play poker with, with Kevin, Kevin Smith? Smith. <laughs> and he knows that. Yeah. So last time I got I got raped, and uh, l this past Saturday, I made up the money I lost last time and made more. I was like the terror of the table. Wow. And Kevin still won also. Like, yeah. Sure. So, in essence, we raped our fans. <laughs> oh my! God. Completely took their money. Yeah. I remember uh, one uh, one poor poor girl. And you're the two rich guys. Yeah, yeah. we're the two guys that actually have a pretty. She's we've been blessed with a good living. Yeah, exactly. And she must have pulled out about five or six hundred bucks oh, just no. to hang out. Just to hang out and keep playing. That's what it's all about. If you want to hang out, you're you're paying a hundred dollars an hour. At one point, I had a huge stack of chips and. Just a wad of cash that people were now buying my chips from me to stay in the game. <laughs> so I had a wad of cash shoved behind the chips and a huge stack of chips, and I'm selling the other people the chips. Go back and forth. Are you kidding? Uh, yeah, I became like the house. Are you and uh, Kevin just kind of nodding, nodding at each other? Not look straight down. Ke Kevin will. He, he wasn't acknowledging that you were winning just as well as he was. Kevin Smith. Uh, Very serious. Lo love poker, the right? guy. Loves movies. Love his directing. His acting. When you play poker with him, don't talk about any of the above. <laughs> Just no. he will he will look down, he will look at his chips, he'll look at the cards, he will play mm -hmm. poker. He's there to play poker. As a matter of fact, Big Kev was doing his show over there at XM and uh I guess um uh Kevin Smith was supposed to call in for a little interview a segment it lasted about a minute and it was Kevin Smith playing and just maybe saying three words into the phone <laughs> so he's very serious about his cards and uh we wound up um we were counting out at about 
I guess, 7.30 Sunday morning. God, it was what? bright light out. We're just counting out. And it's like, oh, I don't know how you do like, that. It's like, how'd you do? I go, I made up for last time and better. He goes, yeah, I did all right here myself. Don't you just feel like crap at that point for being up 12 hours? You just be up so I mean, long. Oh, you really, or up you all work, night just playing cards, yeah, drinking. Yeah. And you make more money actually working. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Oh, wow. It's not like, you know, making money hand over fist on an hourly wage that I, you know, would normally make it. But it's the it's the fun of playing and it's just, yeah, you know. I mean, Gambling is not about winning. It's about just a feeling. Yeah. You know, it's just a rush of. Like, it's a definite, yeah, rush where yeah. you could def you, you could tell where the addiction comes from, yeah. things like that. Because I, if you get enough winnings to get excited, then you do something really dumb, like whatever, putting five hundred dollars on <laughs> right. on black because you're passing a roulette table. <laughs> like, hey, yeah, I got my now. stack of chips. You walk into the cashier to cash your chips, and it's like, let me just throw this chip on this number, yeah. and, uh, and then it doesn't hit, and you go, ooh, and like, you feel a little drop, and it's. Um, it, it really is up for that. It's really yeah, amazing. Yeah, I gotta, I gotta give it's amazing more. how carefree you, you get with your money in a casino. Oh. You would never do that They're as chips. you're just walking around Manhattan. No. They're colorful, round little chips. They're yep. not money. Like you no. would never just take five hundred dollars and like, hey, I'll just uh, give it to this homeless guy or yeah, something. It, there's no excitement there. I know because no chance he's gonna no, pay off. No, I understand. There's part of you thinking that you're gonna, you know, get <laughs> he's some. not gonna go. Congratulations, <laughs> right? Yeah. Hey, you know something? I was I said the hundredth guy that gives me money today is gonna get all the money. I collected. <laughs> wow, the homeless guy game is great. Paid off. I got the system down. You might struggle to give a homeless guy like $2, but yeah. you have no problem throwing $500 no. down on black on a whim. That's <laughs> awful. <laughs> exactly. I guess that's what I'm trying to say. Exactly. Yeah, I got family members, you know, that would be like, hey, you... <laughs> Couple of bucks, maybe. I need yeah. it for this thing. You're like, no. Nah. Yeah. And then it's like, I dropped 10 grand down at <laughs> the Borgata. Holy Jesus. <laughs> People don't, I mean, no, that 10 grand that I had, I could have done some, like, I could have won an award for giving it to somebody. <laughs> yeah. Like, right. it's enough money to give to Would have made the news, yeah. like, wow, Louis C.K. hands over 10 large to some, you that know, cancer nowhere. kid or yeah. something. <laughs> But, but now let me just like, double down. I'm making stupid. Let bets. me just waste it here. <laughs> it's gone. All right, let's take a break. Louis C.K. in it. for Jimmy Norton. Jimmy's gonna be back tomorrow. I guess we'll talk about the uh, the Oscars after the break. We got uh, Britney Spears stuff that's pretty good. We got an assault on the media that happened over the weekend. Ah, uh, yeah. We have uh, we have so much to do. Oh, topless. Uh, American Idol chick. More than topless, my More friend. More than topless. We'll get into that as well. It's the O.P. and Anthony Show. Hear what everyone else is talking about. ONA Uncut and Live continuing the show on XM Satellite Radio starting at 9 a.m. Eastern. Visit XMRadio.com to subscribe. It's the O.P. and Anthony Show. The virus is spreading. Yeah, yeah, yeah. O.P. and Anthony! Okay, we're recording. <laughs> yes. Coming this weekend to the Saturday Night Virus, it's the return of Uninformed with Bill Burr and Joe DeRosa. That's this Saturday, March 3rd, from 9 p.m. to midnight on XM202. You're checking out the Opie and Anthony Show. Louis C.K. in studio today for little Jimmy Norton. So the Oscars, uh, I guess everyone's going to be talking about that this morning. Are they? What a bore for fest, first of all. <clears throat> Worst television ever. It really yeah. was. It, it's getting these award shows are just oh. useless at this point. They're Not, a very dated thing. Didn't they used to give the big awards earlier? Some of them at least, like throw you a couple of yeah, throw you a bone here and there. It's and just sound editing and they foreign make, film. They make you wait uh, three and a half hours and then they just pile them, pile them Get up. The biggies on, that everyone cares end. about. But uh, Ellen DeGeneres sucked. And I kind of, I think she's uh, funny for a female comic. Yeah, she's all right. <laughs> you got to preface it by saying for a female comic. Uh, a couple of articles written saying she uh, was the incredible missing host. Like she was barely on. The, the thing didn't even need a host. You could tell how much of it I watched. I yeah. really didn't watch much. I, I watched for two hours and I was I was bored. Two hours. It was awful. And I'm like, you know what? It's just time to go to bed. Yeah. Nothing to see here. I no, in those awards, the sound editing really? Yeah. I mean, it doesn't matter. I don't. Those people. I mean, I've worked in movies. Yeah. Those people don't need an Oscar. They don't need to make a speech on national television. It doesn't matter. Yeah, and they're you the ones that get up there. Send it to them at their house. You send it to their house. Yeah. <laughs> Just mail it to them. Yeah. Why are they up there at the podium giving a speech? And I love them when they're really excited and they're thanking a bunch of people. And 
can they possibly think anyone cares? Yeah, how yeah. creative can you get with sound editing? It's uh, you either have well, it or you don't. Yeah, and the thing is, like, what a weird coincidence that all the big uh, movies, the big grossing movies, are the ones also getting those. Yeah. Like, there wasn't some little French film where somebody actually did some creative sound editing that won. It's, yeah, yeah. It's, it's the... <laughs> You know, Pirates of the Caribbean. Yeah, I bet their sound editor was amazing. Yeah, of course. They're just, they're just divvying up those awards just to make the other movies feel good. That's so, all it so is. So they invented these other awards like, all right, we'll get one for sound editing. Yeah. Oh, costume, all right, we'll get one yeah. for costume. So that way they can release but it and put watch it. Oscar award winner. Yeah, you don't know it. if it's the, you know best costume. That's all it is. <laughs> but what are the odds that the Pirates of the Caribbean had a, you know... But th there was thousands of movies this year. None of them were better at sound <laughs> editing. Yeah. Well, I bet they just pick it out of a hat. Yeah. No, sound editing. It around. Yeah, just pick it out of a hat. So in case you didn't stay up until, I think, uh, 1230, uh, good old Marty. Marty Scorsese. That's the big news everyone talking about. Martin mm -hmm. Scorsese finally I, winning. I was telling Louie during the commercial, he uh, he wins Best Picture for The Departed and Best uh, Director for The Departed. Mm -hmm. It's like... What? Those weren't the movies. If no. you wanted to give the guy an Oscar, Raging Bull, yeah. Goodfellas. They're just yeah. throwing you know. him a bone at this point. Now like it's obvious. know that finally he's not going to make a better movie. Now, yeah, yeah, this <laughs> is pretty much it. Yeah, he's not going to make Goodfellas. Uh, he, we were hoping he was going to top again. it before we gave him an Oscar, but now no. we just realized. Now, The Departed was a really good movie, but was it better than Goodfellas? Was no. it better than Raging Bull? No. I don't think so. No. no. They're just throwing him a bone at this Taxi point. Taxi driver, things like that. Yep. No. Sorry. Yeah. So, I mean, we're happy for him, but it, it, this should have happened years ago is what we're getting at. Yeah. Yeah. They decided to finally give him one. Uh, Forrest Whitaker, the last king of Scotland, best actor. I said he would win. Did that. they make a big deal about uh, him being African American? I don't know, man. Winning, he, no. His acceptance speech was at one in the morning. I don't know. <laughs> I don't know what he said. He talked morning. about how much he likes acting. <laughs> oh, really? Like, that just shut up. Did he shut really? Up. He enjoyed it in Fast Times at Ridgemont. Yeah, High. look. Yeah. All I know is Let's the other football down a player. Bit. It's amazing how this wandering eye crosses so many character barriers. <laughs> yeah. He, he he gained 50 pounds for the role. I know that that's much. Right. Yeah, that's great. That's really hard to do because you eat a lot. And yeah. You have Honestly, do. he was amazing in Last King of Scotland. He was, but uh, still, actors, who cares? There's right. probably like a thousand guys that have done it just as well. Four tickets for Earth, Wind, and Fire and Little Brother. <laughs> <laughs> and who was saying he was sweating a lot up there? You? Well, uh, no, no, in the movie. Oh, in the movie. Like in the so, movie. Oh, yeah, yeah. Of Like he had the best well, sweating in a movie. That was pretty great. Best sweating in a movie award, ladies and gentlemen. Yeah. Forrest Whitaker. It was Uganda. Yeah, but, you know, he's African. He's not supposed to sweat that much. And then we got, uh, oh, thanks, you got Al Gore. <laughs> we, uh, uh, we'll, get in, Al. we'll get into the Al Gore in a minute here. Uh, best actress, uh, Dame Helen Mirren. Dame. Is she, is she a dame yet? Yeah, she's old. She's old. Mm -hmm. That means old. She won for the queen. She's still in that sort of uh, have sex with an old lady fantasy. <laughs> Is she? Though. Yeah. Yeah. But Judy Dench. She couldn't. You couldn't. Dame Judy. Dame Dench. Judy Dench. Get it right. Helen right. Mirren. You can still. Can still do. You can still picture her giving you a weird authoritative look <laughs> while you're doing her. <laughs> <laughs> you can still have that fantasy. Go ahead, love. Go ahead, love. That's why, yeah, ahead, love. Love. That's why we you're love pleasuring me. You're a sick one, man. Doing a fine job at pleasuring me. Like in the Emma. bathroom of the Oscars with her Oscar on the sink. <laughs> oh, one leg propped up. <laughs> yeah. That nice dress. Go ahead now. <laughs> That's what I She did. was, uh, I, I actually watched uh, The Queen. Uh -huh. I was on the plane. Mm. It's one of those plane movies. Mm -hmm. And uh, it was pretty good. Yeah, uh, she she did a good job. She actually was one of those roles where um someone gives you an Oscar, but you realize you're just doing a really good impression of somebody. Yeah, like they've had those before where someone goes, "Oh my God, the acting!" It's like you're not acting no. to me is you you get a script. Here's a completely made up person where you just have to take words and a description mm -hmm. and, and bring it to life. And now make it your own. Now this role is kind of here's a real person. Yeah, do a great impression of this person. Right. It's like, it's like it's giving not... Rich Little an Oscar for the uh, <laughs> yeah for, for, the for Richard Carson Nixon story for yeah. his <laughs> Richard for his portrayal of uh, Richard Nixon. Like at the beginning of the movie, uh, she should have turned her back and went. <clears throat> and okay, here we go. I think <laughs> this comes the queen is what it might look like. <laughs> <laughs> and then a couple of <clears throat> uh, musses her hair up a bit and turns <laughs> yeah, around. Yeah. Uh, the old Frank Gorshin used to do that. <laughs> yeah. Oh, how annoying. <laughs> We're running out of who, you know, uh, we're running out of categories we care about. So, uh, best actor in a supporting role, that grump Alan Arkin for yeah. Little Miss Sunshine. Yeah. He's a grouch. Oh, is he a grouch? What a lost. 
Oscar. I mean, it's just what a bummer. I mean, yeah. if, if any of the other guys would have been so happy. Mm -hmm. Right. But he's like, who is this? <laughs> and then, uh, oh, you, you're going to win an Oscar. You don't watch yeah. out doing that impression. <laughs> oh, yes. <laughs> That's pretty good. Yeah. yeah good Alan Ark in there. Uh, the big booby monster one, best actress in a supporting role, Jennifer Hudson for Dream Girls. I, ah. I hated her because she said, uh, see what God can do. That's her first thing she said. Oh, boy. Because um, that's what God is doing is giving people Oscars. Giving Oscars Lloyd, out. Yeah. We talk about this all the time. The yeah. Super Bowl guy <clears throat> was talking about all the tornadoes. <laughs> In uh, in Florida, and then thank yeah. God for winning the Super Bowl. Right? Yeah, yeah, that's what he cares about. <laughs> right, that's about good... the tornadoes. He wants to make sure you get your Oscar. Yeah. <laughs> no, because people pray and then they get something and they think it worked. God. Yeah, yeah. So what do you say to some mother of five with no money and a bad leg who prays and gets nothing? Sorry, I was busy. I, I had a I had a busy Oscar. The Oscar. <laughs> yeah. And doesn't everybody pray? So what about the five people or so that lost? Yeah. That they didn't win the didn't, Oscar. God didn't. God couldn't help him. Couldn't, couldn't help him out. I can only give away one. They don't no. believe in God as much as the it's guy that won. As Academy what, rules is what I would say. Now I think God would override Academy rules and like everyone would win, but no one would find that suspect because <laughs> no. it's God doing it. Yeah. He could pull that Jedi mind crap on everybody, yep. and if it was truly God, everyone would uh, be a winner. Oh. Yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. All right. Uh, wow. Animated feature. I mean, come on. Uh, now yeah. Who saw this coming? Now you're reaching. Happy feet. Yeah. <laughs> I really thought Cars was going to win that one. <clears throat> yeah. I mean, come on. Jesus. Did they have a goofy segment where an actual animated character came out on the stage? So, and they show the audience looking up at the monitors because there's really nothing on the stage. <laughs> I love when they do that. They try to pull some wacky stuff like, yeah. all right, we're going to have an animated penguin or somebody come out on stage by the podium to do this. And they sh they they pan the audience and they're looking up like the little kids used to at Wonderama when the camera yeah. would go on them <laughs> and they're looking up. Yeah. God, the, why, no. why aren't they looking and you at get the to stage? find out how funny the animators are because the character. Oh the yeah. Podium and does like a Sally Fields impression. It's, or whatever. it's so yeah. hysterical yeah. to no, watch. No, last night they had the two cars in a fake audience. Yeah. Oh, is that it? Yeah. They they cut to the audience and the cars are in the front row. Oh. Two of the cars. Look, but, I didn't even but you, see it. But you look around and there's like bad acting. Yeah. It's awful. <laughs> oh. Um, adapted screenplay. Oh my God. The Departed again. Yeah. Best documentary feature. Uh, did Al Gore actually win an Oscar last night? Well, his for for an his inconvenient name. truth. They said the name of that guy who produced it, but I guess he's one of the producers. Davis right? Guggenheim. Yes. Oh, but uh, Al Gore is like the face of right. the movie. Yeah. So did he get up and accept? He got the first Davis who Guggenheim made a speech uh, with his hand on Al Gore's shoulder, <laughs> saying, "This man." Oh, really? Oh, one of and, those. And Al Gore was standing there like, "I'm supposed to talk, you idiot." I was the vice president. <laughs> yeah, unless you Cigar forgot. Rich. I was yeah. like the second in charge. Yeah, for uh, 12 years. And believe me, I was the first in charge was almost gone. Yeah. So yeah. I was telling Louis C.K. during the break, look, I'm not a, I'm not a fan of Bush. I'll tell you right off the bat, but I am so glad that Al Gore is not our president. <laughs> That's what he. Did you see like him right at now. the Oscars last uh, night? Just doughy faced. Freak. He doesn't look like he's in control of his own body, his no. own brain, his own mind. He's yeah. starting to look like an old lady, like kind of a wide old lady. Right. Oh, freaky. He's starting to look like your your if you had a retarded brother, what he would look like when he turns uh, like 50. He's going 52 that route. years old. Yeah. yeah. Ex-presidents are odd things because you don't really see a lot of them once they're out of office. Yeah. And without that visibility, the few times you do see them, so much time has gone by that you're like, what the hell? What <laughs> happened to that guy? Well, whenever you see pictures of uh, or footage of the president in his first few days of office, yeah, yeah, they look totally because they they all of their hair goes. Wild. Yeah, they all go like to the they go to the mountain and see the burning bush at <laughs> yeah. some point during their that presidency. Come down with a shock of white hair. Yes, I've exactly. seen God. Why? And you think something that happens? They take him to a room in the basement of the White House and say, "Here's what really goes on." All right, yeah. here's everything. Right. Oh my God, that's okay. true. Fill him in on all the secrets. Yeah, they tell him everything. Okay, first you have to drink some of Kennedy's blood. <laughs> so that, and you're going to take we're going to take pictures of it so you're complicit. Here's the, exactly who killed him. Here's yeah. the video of it. Yes, yeah. we had video back then. Exactly. Of uh 
All you'll, we'll take a break, we'll take lunch, and then we'll show you the <laughs> alien. And then you'll eat some poor people. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Eat poor they, people. They show you the alien. I, we'll I like fly that. you around in the ship yeah. a little yeah. bit. Yeah, exactly. And, <laughs> and then you come out and your hair is white, <laughs> and you're just going, die, die. <laughs> and here's proof there's no God. All, All right. right. Well, you got four <laughs> years. Have fun. <laughs> yeah. Have, have fun. fun with it. Just talk about the economy yeah. and make a war if you have to. Just anything. Whatever you got to do. But just keep all this stuff on the QT because yeah. let me show you what happened to the last guy that yeah. said he was going to say something. Yeah. Oh, we even got video of Abraham Lincoln getting assassinated. <laughs> yeah, we had video back then. Yeah. That was us, too. Yeah. <laughs> we spun that nice. And memory. here's John Wilkes Booth because we've figured out immortality. Right. Yes. He, uh, we have to keep him down here because he'd yeah. just yap. Exactly. That's a great way to look at it. They, it is. And they find the white hair. They find the out. white hair. They want to run for office. lizards running the country. <laughs> there's, all this, there's all this excitement. You're going to be president of the United States. Oh, totally. And then they bring you down to the base. Do you believe... <laughs> wait, wait, you actually think that the people voted you in? <laughs> what are you, idiots? Oh, okay, okay. Yeah, come on, come on. All right, come come here, get on the that's... elevator, you daffy bastard. I think that's what happened to Bush. Do you remember after 9-11, oh, after first of all, he, he shows up the first time on, on camera in some weird place in Nebraska, looking, yeah. looking like there's a guy with a gun to his head right off camera. Right, yep. Um, yeah, the hostage then, footage. The next time we see him, he's crying a little, like his lip is quivering. Yeah. He's starting to, like, come unglued. <laughs> because they told him, yeah, we did this. It's just for money. <laughs> we, we ran the planes and the buildings for just... It's an, it's like busting out in a restaurant we for insurance. Had to. And um, if I could hold <clears throat> this up... Yeah. You signed off on it. Yeah. <laughs> so your signature at the yeah. bottom. And then he showed up with uh, a, a bandage on his head. Do you remember this? This was right after 9-11. Yeah, I believe they a, removed something. No, or, he had a band on, bandage on his head, and they said the story was that he choked on a pretzel <gasps> oh, okay. and fell over and hit his head on a coffee table. Which, if you've ever been in a writer's room or any kind of pitch room, that's a pitch. That's people going around going, okay, how did he get? Because what happened was he said, I'm telling everybody that you guys did this. I'm telling them. And Dick Cheney punched him in the face and said, shut up, you little bitch. Play along. And then they all said, okay, what happened? A pretzel. Use the pretzel. pretzel gag. We're going to go with the pretzel. Yeah, and then Bush right. went to the mirror and started looking at his temples and going, it's white. Yes. I swear this was just brown hair. Oh, that's a great way to look at him. <laughs> All right, we got audio of uh, Al Gore. Uh, He's just uh, terrific. Oh. Just reminding us that maybe, maybe they did the right thing back in the day. Yeah, maybe. Not that Bush is much better. No, but, but thank God he stole it from that <laughs> womanly, weird-looking freak. <laughs> yeah, we, we were thinking that... Uh, He's starting to look a little, a little too comfortable, like he might wear a dress behind closed doors with a little lipstick, just for the hell of it. <laughs> oh, totally. Now, are you sure, are you positive that all this hard work hasn't inspired you to make any other kind of major, major... Oh, oh here's Al oh, Gore, uh, with a little gag with Leo there. Oh, yeah. Leo. So they do what they have uh, to do, and then he's like, are you sure you have no other big announcement? Because you're, cause you're in front of about a billion people uh, right Are you going to uh, run for president? Well, there's rumors that he's going to uh, jump in the race. Announcement to the world here tonight. Well, I do appreciate that, Leo, and... Leo. I'm Leo. kind of surprised at the feeling. I do so appreciate well that, Leo. Yeah, Leo. Leo. That's what I mean. It just sounds like he's just... <laughs> uh, He's worse than gay. It's not that he's gay. Like, if he was just gay, he'd be like, all right, you know, whoever, he's gay. But he's gay. just, whoa, Leo. He's starting to sound like he should be an extra Why would in, in he bird be? cage yeah. or something. If he was president, he <laughs> would just... be like, well, I'm really warning Iran. You better stop it. <laughs> Seriously. That look right into the camera. Not okay. Let me tell you something, Mr. Premier. <laughs> <That's> <laughs> not guy's looking at what is he saying? <laughs> this is gay. Is this gay. is all. I'm getting the douche chills <laughs> from this man. Yeah, there's something going on here. <laughs> no, no. If you put a wig on him, he's totally. It's it works. It's a totally tranny. works. Totally works. Like one of those bad like old tranny, tranny guys. Yes. Hi, daddy. An old tranny, like the old guy from the Princess of the Desert, whatever that movie was. Oh. Like you put, oh. you to put, take a when I, you see a tranny without the wig, you go, oh, yeah, nothing it's a tranny more. Tranny that that just has done the ho the hormone treatment so yes, far. Yes, exactly. That's exactly. It. That's exactly. It. Pre op. And now he's gonna start with he's the wig a and the dress. Tranny. He's gonna start with the wig and the dress in another yes. month. Or two. Oh, he's waiting earrings. for the hormones to kind of take hold. He's like, mm -hmm. he's in that in between stage. Exactly, right his skin is weird. I'm so glad I realized. Saw. I'm looking at him like this. Was, this guy was almost president. I oh. was the woman trapped in a man's body. All right, here we go, Leo. 
Here's Leo. That would have been the announcement. That Leo. Make. Well, as long as you're giving me a platform. I hate that inside thing, too. That whole Leo. Everyone else, it's Leonardo DiCaprio. Yeah. Everyone else, it's Charlton Heston. Mm. But then it's, you know, oh, well, Chuck it was me. Leo. It was Chuck Heston. We were out at the uh, Sands. Marty. Oh, was about, Marty Scorsese. Uh, congrats to Marty Scorsese. You know, he earned this. The best one ever is Bob. Bob De Niro. Uh, hey, well, oh, yeah, movies with Bob. Bobby De Niro. Uh, fantastic. Oh. Even his even his mom calls him Robert. Robert. Yeah. I don't care. You know, obviously, friends are friends or whatever, but in public, could you no. just... No, no that's, that's, that's that makes people go, Bobby... No. Oh, De Niro. Bobby De Niro? No, is that's, that, is that, he related to Robert De Niro? No, that's just, the actor? A, that's just a way to make you feel like you know the guy just a little more mm -hmm. than everybody. I think it's time. a celebrity version of the name drop. You can't yeah. name drop it because you are a name that is dropped. Yes. So it's their way of dropping a name. Yes. Like, we can't possibly say... Do you tell someone, when I saw Bobby De Niro up on the screen, they would turn to you and go, Hey, D hey Dick. Yes. Did you just call Robert De Niro Bobby De Niro? But yes, you're friends. a carpenter. He's yeah, Robert he's to you. Robert De Niro. <clears throat> All right, let's get into Al Gore here. Uh, oh, yes, please. Uh, Leo. Leo. Imagine he just throws everyone off and goes, all right, I'm gay. Yeah. <laughs> Here's the announcement. Been I've been amazing. living as a gay man. <laughs> I'm a post-op tranny. <laughs> oh, no, he pulls I'm getting in. a vagina put in next <laughs> week. <laughs> and he pulls him a greeny. No, and Tipper is kind of headed into guy land, too. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah of, she's always been a little manly. They're right there. They're, they're crisscrossing as yes. we speak. Yes. I've been living as a gay American. Our stories come out of truck stops, and <laughs> All right. only it's at the airport, like Air Force Two had to land, yeah, and he had to go to the airport bathroom. He would have gotten away with it, though. Like, he, land, he lands the Air Force Two. This is while he was vice president. <laughs> yeah. I'm telling you this happened. And he would go to a truck stop and blow a guy. <laughs> <laughs> and then, oh, I'm sorry. I forgot I'm on the radio. That's He'd right. go to a truck stop and just uh, and, and he and would do, do what you got do yeah. something he he oughtn't to do with a fella. Right. And then he'd say to the guy, "Go ahead and tell them the vice president just did that." Like, just <laughs> see, like see who's gonna buy it. Could you imagine a trucker saying, "You know, the damnedest thing just happened. <laughs> yeah. I, I pulled my Kenworth in. I was in the I ten, and I'm in. I'm just going to you know do my business, and I hear, psst, psst. hey fella." <laughs> And I look, and it's it's Vice President Al Gore. I like that the trucker can do a good Al Gore impression. <laughs> well, yeah. Yeah, that's all he does. Yeah. He won an Oscar for it, I hear. All right, here's Al talking to Leo. I do appreciate that, Leo, and I'm kind of surprised that the feelings uh, welling up here are actually have been very convincing. And even though I honestly had not planned on doing this, I, I guess with a billion people watching, it says good a time as any so my fellow Americans I'm going to take this opportunity right here and now to formally announce my intention <laughs> I get it hey we're funny <laughs> the cut off music we're funny right before the big announcement what we're do you say Al who saw that coming <laughs> the cut off music you've been talking too long get off the stage wow that's really funny <laughs> That's not set up. What do you say, Al? I was only joking. I was only uh, joking. There you go. You notice also they didn't they didn't cut off that Italian guy because it, it's the conductor's job to cut the dude off. Right. He and decides. He's a fellow musician, so he let him talk. Let like him like yap. Italian. Is that the old, guy he was speaking in Italian. Morricone, yeah. In front of a billion people. That's terrific. Italian. I hope he just said horrific things. <laughs> like yeah. cursing. Oh, just yeah. horrific <laughs> things. The, the Canada, what is he saying? I don't know. Just let him talk. Do you know they were probably freaking out? Like in the booth, the people well, that they, dump, the they know is, how much trouble they get into these days. What is he saying? Find yeah. someone that speaks Italian, yes. for Christ's sake. Exactly. This might be a little, uh, uh, we might be reaching for the, on this one, but uh, there's always been rumors about uh, good old Ryan Seacrest. Uh -huh. Good old Ryan. His sexuality. Right. They've, uh, they, there's been rumors around there. So we pay very close attention when he does the red carpet stuff. Yeah. And uh, he always has to kind of talk about girls. Yeah. He's, he's and it's not really convincing. No. So, th like I said, we might be reaching here, but we got a couple examples of Ryan Seacrest mm -hmm. talking to girls on the uh -huh. red carpet here. It's awkward. It's uh, the. I, let he me know what last, you think. Last, all right. I saw American Idol. He was he kept bringing up Christina Aguilera's name because he just wants people to think 
that he's into her. And it's such an easy out, yeah. Christina Aguilera, because yeah. she is universally hot. Yeah, who's yeah. going to say it's she's like, not hot? That's one, like, you could go back a few years and uh, it was, you know, Raquel Welsh. Yeah, exactly. Raquel right, Welsh yeah. was like, you know, Gina hey, Lola that Raquel Welsh. Gina Lola Bridgina. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Boy, is she hot. All right, Rock Hudson, we get it. She's hot. He really wants to say that <laughs> yeah. Morris Etheridge is hot. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. All right, here it is. Okay, bye bye. Oh man, I mean, it's like hottie after hottie. The guys, the guys don't oh, say no. hottie after no. hottie. Hottie no. after hottie. hottie but after Brad hottie. Pitt just walked by. It's just real oh, guys. Are we on? Real guys don't say uh, hottie after hottie. Hottie just after hottie. hottie. Have you ever used hottie. the word hottie? Not Boy, hottie. She's a hottie. She is a hottie. Once you say like, piece no. of piece of a, uh, you know, I really likes her boobies. Uh, yeah, oh yeah, guys like hottie those, right? Yeah. Yeah. Hottie uh, after hottie. Hottie like I said, we might hottie. be reaching, but I don't know. So what? Okay, bye bye. So let's oh, accuse man. him. I mean, it's like yeah. hottie after hottie. Good. The guys, Tom and Seth, and the guys here on the E stands under the camera are salivating. Oh, here comes Jessica Biel now. Salivating. That's like that's what we salivating. salivating. Sal that's what we say when we see a really hot chick. We go, aren't you salivating? They're <laughs> fabulous. Oh All these girls are fabulous. I'm just salivating. <laughs> She, and then he mentions all the people that um, were salivating, but he didn't mention himself. And no. then he and then he ends with, "Ooh, here comes Jessica Biel." Jessica Biel, like, another okay, well, complete obviously, hottie. Obviously, he's not gay because uh, every guy, even gay guys, think Jessica Biel's yeah. hot. I mean, come on. Jesus. Jessica Biel could be like the hottest chick in Hollywood right now. Right. She's a, too manly. You're thinking, Than? Yeah. You don't like her? In that goddamn Blade Three. She looked real good in that. Yeah, not in general. Just last night, she kind of looked like a lumberjack. Did she? Didn't see. Okay. Because she looked really good in that uh, stupid uh, Chainsaw Massacre movie. It's that neck-to-shoulder muscle that's just... Is, you have a problem with the neck-to-shoulder muscle. Oh, uh, okay. uh, it's a little too built up. Yeah. But it, here it is. Uh, it. Here, here it is again. <laughs> at the end here. At the end here. Salivating. Oh, here comes Jessica Biel now. Okay. Oh, oh, here comes oh. Jessica Biel now. Oh, who else can I... All right, here. Oh. We got I another... Another example here. Mm -hmm. And Hathaway, Devil Wears Prada. It's so good to see you. Good to see you too. Okay, I, I shouldn't. This is I shouldn't admit this, but I I saw the movie and I cried enough. You cried. <laughs> you cried. You All cried. right. <laughs> the actress you cried. Yeah, the actress like you. Yeah. You, you cried? cried. It's a dopey movie. I mean, Ugh. I'm ashamed of that movie. You <laughs> cried. <laughs> you, she goes. Jesus. She can't Did even help cry? herself. You cried? Did you cry semen into somebody else's <laughs> face? Oh, yeah. Wow, that neck-to-shoulder muscle thing is just bothering me. Yeah, you know what, oh, Dan? Yeah. I'm That's with you awful. on that one. Dan, look at a nude I'm picture of Jessica looking Biel. Looking at a naked picture of her just barely All covering right, I'm up. I'm with you now, Dan. It's amazing that E-Rock got naked pictures from last night, because I was talking about last night. Uh oh, oh, hey. hey. Oh. Is, you mean she's been working on our traps since these pictures? Yeah, maybe taken. she's uh, working the wrong muscles in the gym. All right, let's, yeah. let's listen to Ryan. I saw the movie, and I cried in it. You uh. cried? Oh, she's laughing at me. I, I actually did. You know, when you when you come and you stand up to yeah. uh, Meryl Streep? Oh, well, it's, you know, it's good to know that you're in touch with your inner emotions. I just, I, re I know. I, I thought, I I, job well done, I guess that's what I should say. <laughs> maybe I should have just said, you really nailed it. Thank you very, very much. Oh boy! Somebody should throw him in the garbage. And she didn't even say you came in touch with your inner woman or inner femininity yeah. or something. Yeah. Your inner self. What did she say? It was like she said it wrong. Yeah, yeah. It's supposed to be your inner, you know, wussy. Yeah, your inner, else. your inner fag. <laughs> let's go to it is. let's go to Michigan. Eric, what's up? Hey, what's up, boys? Hey, hey uh, do you guys catch uh, Ryan Seacrest's Freudian slip last night? He was on the red carpet, and he's asking all these actresses, oh, who are you wearing, who are you wearing? Nobody kept saying Vera Wang. And then all of a sudden, out of nowhere, he goes, man, there's all kinds of Wang here. It's just a big Wang party. I did hear that. A maybe Wang can, party. Maybe Sam mm. can get that clip as well. All right, thank you, sir. We got Louis C.K. in today. We got to take a quick break. We got a few more examples of Ryan trying to... Trying to sound, uh, in my opinion, yeah. that he likes girls. Yeah. Well, you're not, re you're not reaching. It's a, well, it's a rumor that he's gay like there's a rumor that he exists. <laughs> I mean. <laughs> Is that a picture from last night? Yeah. All right, I got to go with uh, Than on this. Now you're with Than? I got to go with Than. That is a weird looking. I think it's the cut of the j dress, yeah. if I could be. Uh, <laughs> no, no, what happens? These girls. They, they, she lost too much weight. No, these girls, they get trainers and it's like. Girls like lifting weights a little bit is all right, but then when they get cut like that, that dress is an awful look. There's too much exposed there. 
Like from the shoulder down, she looks like a Terminator arm. And she, I would still. She looks a little thin. Course, too. To stop it. Yeah, and a little too thin. The, the bone, a little bony up top there. And her boobies are set. And her neck. Bit, so you know what? And she's she, just. Oh, still, all right, she's, she's out just, of the loop now. She's a mess. Let's find a new hottie. And I gotta go back to uh, what's her name? She had her day. Uh, I was from still the be island. Very happy to see her. Um, Scarlett Johansson. Yeah. I'm not trading her in for Scarlett Johansson. Know who looked unbelievable? Reese Witherspoon. Really? She was looking dumpy and stuff. Had a couple kids. She, the the husband who you know what? There's rumors right. about him. Mm -hmm. So they're they're getting a divorce. They're separated. Next thing you know, she got her body back in yeah, shape. Yeah, he looks pretty good. Show a picture of Reese. Uh, yeah, had that dark. Night. She had that dark <clears throat> eye makeup, and so she looked kind of like '80s uh, Coke Hori. Oh, doing that whole number. In a good way, yeah. There yeah, was look. a. Uh, you hear there was a, a. Hey, look, look. Here's look at what she's looking See? like these days. That's all right. She yeah. hasn't looked this good in years. No. Did you hear there was a, a stabbing? At one of the parties, really last night, and it was uh, Reese. Uh, really, yeah. Reese. Reese's husband. No, Reese's husband. No, right there. With Reese, Reese Witherspoon. With his... No, with a knife. <laughs> oh, my. oh my God! Are you still oh playing? My God. It's one of oh one of the worst God. jokes I've ever heard. Oh, oh that you heard it is one of the Who told worst. You that one, uh, Joe. Oh, oh my! I tell you something. <laughs> I was only joking. Oh, That's an awful wow. joke. But wow. but use it. <laughs> Feel free. Oh, <laughs> oh, we have to punch a girl now. You made us punch a girl. Size <laughs> fourteen. Yes, that deserves a tasering. All right, let's get out of here for a little bit. We got lots to do today. We got to get into uh, uh, the the nudie pics of uh, that uh, fine contestant on American Idol. Our next American Idol, by the way, I'm predicting she goes all the way. She already did go all the way. <laughs> <laughs> I was really joking. Dan's disgusted with me this morning. I say you and do. Well, he should. I be. say you do bad jokes for the rest of the morning. Bad pun jokes all day. Oh, yeah. I have, they a bad, I have a bad joke. Okay. Yeah. Where do you put a hair pie to cool it off? <laughs> Where? On the vagisil. <laughs> <laughs> okay. I was only joking. <laughs> <laughs> My God. <laughs> If American Isle kicks this broad off, they're the, they are the stupidest TV show yeah. on TV. Yeah. <laughs> Watch their ratings if they don't kick this girl off. We'll get into the whole controversy in a little bit. We got to get. Uh, there's so much to do. Let's step aside for a bit. Opie and Anthony. It's the Opie and Anthony show. The Opie and Anthony virus. It's pest radio for the pests, by the pests, and like the pests. And mostly stupid. Coming in 2007. Details on opianthony.com. Ah, uh, good morning. You're checking out the Opie and Anthony show. In a little while, we're going to be talking uh, very dirty, dirty, dirty. Uh, talking about, uh, we're going to talk about the American Idol contestant that's uh, nude all over the place on the internet, doing things, doing things that I don't think American Idol are going to be uh, happy about. No, they probably won't be, but. Then we'll tell you where to show. find the pictures and the videos and all that stuff. So. Good egg. What are you guys looking at, by the way? We were uh, looking at Pal Talk. Uh, apparently, uh, your girls asleep. They're just laying in bed. And then uh, Lisa Ann gave a little, you know, little flash. It's always nice. Thank you. Great way to start the morning. Yeah, why not? Uh, we got the Wang clip from Ryan Seacrest. So we're going to finish up on this and we'll move on to other things. But uh, I don't know. No, 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 no. We like to listen very closely to what Ryan says yeah. and does on the red carpet. Oh, yes. Because we've been hearing things. We've been hearing things over the years. This is him talking about Wangs. Who made your dress? Vera Wang. Oh, okay. Lots of Wang. Uh, lots of Vera Wang. There's been lots of Wang going well, I was going to say, it's, quite a, it's a Wang party. There's a lot of Wang here. How many Wangs have been by? Uh, a couple of Wangs so far. Oh, really? Maybe the second Wang. Oh, okay. Yeah. Oh, boy. Uh, just yeah. die. <laughs> Get, you know. yeah. I can't do no wrong though. He's like, uh, all, he's everywhere. I, uh, guy is everywhere. I seriously think the cure for AIDS was him dying of it. Because <laughs> once AIDS gets him, it'll be like my work is done. <laughs> my work here is done. Yes. All right, now I'll allow you to figure out how to cure this dumb thing. <laughs> what? Uh, yeah. What the hell is that? 
We that get it, the Wang, Wang joke. <laughs> All right, well, here he is, uh, some more audio from the red carpet last night. Just getting started here on the red carpet, Juliana. Now you're up on the other end. If I look this way, yes, I see the back of you. Do you see the back of me? I see how, the back how's of you. How's it look, Ryan? Uh, your back is fantastic. I love the shoulder blades. Thank you. Those are great blades. <laughs> great blades. I think you... She probably meant like my ass. Yeah, how's yeah. the ass look? Well, and uh, oh, that's right. That's where fellows like to put it. Guys like to look at the blades or put use the blade. How is that done wow. with a girl? They really do. When it comes to a girl, There's where no hair on it. Ew. When it <laughs> when it comes when it comes to a girl though, where do the blades rate? Like, oh, as far as breast man, leg man, ass man. Uh, uh, some guys are blade, blade men. Guys. Some guys are into the boobies. You, mm. you, then you got your ass man. And then uh, maybe uh, maybe some nice abs, some nice legs, nice I think face. Blades. Where's blades? That's not really part of this. No, it's part of the whole picture. You want a girl to have them. Yeah. You don't want a bladeless girl. <laughs> no, she would look pretty. That <laughs> yeah, would look a little sick. All slumped. Back. All like yeah, nose blades. It's you, a, you also don't want a girl so fat. That you don't notice her blades. I think yeah. blades are as important as elbows. Elbows. You don't want a girl who <laughs> doesn't have them. You want to have the, the elbows, but you're not going right. to look and go, wow, nice elbows. I like my car to have lug nuts. Ah, sure. But it's something you don't go, I'm nice not going to buy that nuts. car because its lug nuts aren't very attractive. No. But you, you kind of want them. But she's trying to show off her body and he's like, nice blades. Yeah. Blades. Yeah. Ugh. <laughs> He's trying so hard now, too, right. and failing miserably. He should have just shut up about it. Like, everyone's speculating, uh, is he gay? And uh, the more he talks, the more he's just burying himself. This piece of garbage. Well, <laughs> well, the only girl he talked, girl, geez, dame he talked hot to was Helen Mirren. Well, that's that whole mother thing. Can we gossip about Helen Mother? For a second? I mean, this woman, she plays such prim and proper roles in her films, but I think there's a darker side to her. I think that there's a little bit of... Is there a dirty side to Helen? <laughs> I mean, dare I say that? <laughs> a dirty side? Yeah, I think that there may be a little bit of a dirty side well, to Helen. Who are we talking to? A dirty side? A fellow homosexual. <laughs> <laughs> uh, di so he's, he's wondering if there's a dirty side to the old broad. Yeah. Yet he's just talking about shoulder blades and yeah. And finally, before we move on, I think she's uh, she's been a very attractive lady for some time, and I think she attracts a lot of men. Uh -huh. uh, and uh, she certainly attracted me. It was a very odd feeling playing scenes opposite the Queen when you kind of go in. She's sexy. She's a bit naughty. Yeah, yeah. She's and she's got a wicked sense of humor, and she's really mischievous, you know. And that's, uh, that's another word that uh, guys don't really naughty. use that much is naughty. <laughs> yeah, naughty. Naughty, naughty. Yeah. Unless you're into maybe a little role playing or oh, something. Yeah. Right? Naughty, naughty. Yes, She's naughty. A little naughty. Boy. <laughs> you dirty old suka. <laughs> 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 you Who's been a naughty boy? <laughs> Help me, brothers. <laughs> uh, there you go. That's our uh, Oscar coverage. Uh, pretty much. No just... screw. The, the, the two hours I watched, I I tried to stay up. Uh, they just showed Ellen DeGeneres on TV. I guess she was vacuuming. Was in, that a bit? In between yeah, awards. Yeah, very clever. That's uh, As if the stuff. host would vacuum. <laughs> Why would the host have to vacuum? And was she making big, huge celebrities move their feet? Like, yes. did you move? Uh, was yeah. she? Was that the bit? Oh, yeah. Of course I didn't that's say the it. bit. But Penelope I... moved that dress. And Penelope Cruz had just not won. Yeah, I'm and now sure she wanted to be a, part of this yeah. a bit. Now you're just some person in my way as I vacuum the yeah. carpet. Yeah. All right, let's uh, let's. Uh, uh, yeah, well, Ellen is used to munching it. She might as well vacuum it. <laughs> 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 Sorry, carpet joke. Uh, she was very disappointing. I thought she would do a really good job. Yeah. I, 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 I was very happy when they said Billy Crystal wasn't going to do it for the 80th time. Mm -hmm. But uh, I don't know. I don't think. Well, I would I have loved. It off. I would have loved to have just seen Billy Crystal do his. Can you dig it? I knew that you could. Black character. Oh God, that from was the a worst Katrina thing. victim thing. That's the worst thing anybody ever did. It is so awful. I'd rather he just go up in blackface and do uh, an old Jolson song Jesus. than do that old black guy character uh, that he does. I'm going to do a one-man play, and I'm thinking of, you know, I'm going to do the black guy. Yeah. I personally like when he does the sideways run across the stage and sings about all the movies oh, around. Oh, it's <laughs> genius. It's unbelievable it's how he works all the movies into that song. Here, here he goes. Here he is. Imagine this, if you would. Can you dig that? I knew that you could. 
I can't look at you. I know. He did it on I Comic can't. Relief when I yep. did it, when I, I was on the show. Yes, he did. Yes. And I'm wait I'm waiting to go on the show, and it's a live show. And he's up there forever, forever burning down the audience. <laughs> just I'm just watching going burning stop the because it's destroying my whole night. I'm like, of I'm course waiting. it is. I've been like running during the day training to get ready. To, I want this to be a great set. And yeah, he's just he's every minute he's halving the audience yep. watching. Yeah, uh, Jimmy. Uh. Jimmy said backstage was just people staring at the monitors uh. and kind of looking at each other like. What what is he doing? Please and please, uh, uh, why is it going on? Let's this explain long? for the people that might not have watched uh, the show. He was doing an old blues guy. He does this from, character from that he's done forever. It's the old blues guy, and whether it's the jazz artist or the yeah. old boxer character, or, it's an old black he stereotype. Just, he makes his lips big. Yeah, yeah. Like, Squints his a, eyes, yeah. and he says, "I'm black," and I'm <laughs> yeah, and then talks about hardship and how <laughs> it's just made me a better person. Oh, God. Oh, and it's awful. Uh, and, and he's done this over the years. And he, he did it at Comic Relief because it was for Katrina and talked about how he was a, a horn player and and just went and they on and washed on. the old club away where yeah. we had had so the many bourbons club. and so many memories. Uh. Yeah, but you know, we'll we'll bring it back because this city knows how to bring it all back together. Can you dig that? I knew that you could. And, and when he said, can you dig that? No one said anything. No. And it should have been hoping there would be like a woo. So he goes, I knew that you could. So he just said, I knew that you could to nothing. It should have been a five minute bid uh, and went on for at most five 20 minutes. to 30 minutes easy, right? Oh, uh, boo. And you're sitting backstage boo. And, that, and, now you, and now you got to follow that. As yeah, a that's, comedian, the thing. that's a, that's a that's tough thing, thing, huh? And the audience is going, die, Jew. To the, you know. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> They're like literally turning anti Semitic because of the performance. <laughs> Heil Hitler, you There's suck. There's all kinds of re Holocaust revision going <laughs> yeah, exactly. on in the audience. I don't even think that you think really he's at the happens. point in his career where he just feels like he doesn't have to work hard he anymore. He just thinks just showing up and being on stage yep. is a privilege for everybody. Yep. yep. Being Billy Crystal is enough. Yep. Bill Crystal. Where he could, no, I'm sure that he, he showed just... up at the show and said, I'm going to do this. And everybody, that, all the younger folks that work there like, oh, God, how do we tell him that this is awful? We can't. And he rehearsed it every day. And yeah, they all had to get up the there. And go, how do we tell him not to do this? Look, look at, let's all just try today. We'll all look at our watch a lot. Oh, and maybe uh, he'll catch on. Oh. No, he didn't catch on. We got Bill in New York. Bill, go ahead. You're on the Opie and Anthony show. Bill. What's up, Bill? Hey, buddies. Hey. Uh, uh, I, w I called in under false pretenses. I've been up all Hang up right now. Hang up right now. Bill. Come on. No, No, please. because you've Come called on. in under false pretenses, and, and it's never as good and as what you call in on. I don't care. Don't want to hear it. It says, how can you all say right, Billy what? Crystal isn't funny? Oh. What? It's the, what? the reason you didn't tell the screener. No, listen. Exactly. If it was funny or entertaining, you could have told the screener any to put you through. I will promise I will be entertaining. Liar, liar, <laughs> pants ablaze. Go ahead, Bill. The next ten minutes, I will be entertaining or three car kids. Ten oh, minutes. Ten minutes. What's ten minutes. What's he gonna do? Hi, I'm on the radio. <laughs> What's up, Bill? Me, I don't care about Billy Crystal. He's a douchebag. Let me be fourth mic for ten minutes. Oh, you gotta be kidding me! You waste of life. <sighs> Let me be fourth mic for ten minutes. Oh. To do what? <sighs> God, I hate that guy. Who's screening? Ah, uh, boy. One demerit. <laughs> you get one demerit. You only get two before they have to fire you. So. Shut up. Good luck to you. <laughs> uh, American Idol. We got a dirty, dirty girl. I uh, love a little sexual scandal. Oh, and, of course, so this great. show is yep. so important. If they find out anything about your past, they got to get rid of you. For God forbid reason. they find out you were a human being. You're. A th God forbid you're That's a 20-year-old girl. Of ha ha being a woman. Yeah. Is to... Do what we're do looking at with, this morning. Do things with penises. <laughs> now, everyone that is going to judge this woman. You either have a penis or you do things with one. That's the rules. So why are we supposed to <laughs> Well, it's pretty much it. Well, it's coming out that uh, Antonella Barba, she's the one from New Jersey. If you're Very hot. If you remember the audition, she auditioned with her best friend. 
and her best yeah. friend got kicked out, and she made it all the way. Mm-hmm. She's the yep. she's all the, the way, right? With the, yeah. And my girlfriend, couple, she's one of those. Couple. She's like, yeah. Oh my god, I yeah. love her, and she loves me. She's fantastic. We uh, put topless together. Nah, she's a brunette with I'm brown just eyes. Tired of like fat people winning this thing. <laughs> because, like, <laughs> woo! <laughs> it's like a girl's gone wild chick. Yeah, there she is. Right there now. she is. So she's the brunette with the the brown eyes, and she's 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 Big an awful eyes. awful singer. She should have got kicked off last week. Her hotness has been uh, keeping her in. But her hotness is keeping her in. And now I say these pictures should keep her in. Yeah. Uh, they're going to get rid well, of her. Well, that's because that's the so, point. Her hotness keeps her in because everybody uh, has themselves a time but, while they watch. You know something? So why, not, why does let, this make it better? It's the whole reason she's in it. Let her stay. Because you want her to blow your baboon. Here's the reason. I hate this. Why everybody is a hypocrite involved in this stupid show. Everyone uh, thinks this chick is hot. Um, what she's doing in these photographs, it's everyone really, thinks is really hot. It's really hot. But they're going to judge, make this judgment that she's got to be kicked out because yeah. of what she's doing? Yeah. Well, they and, kicked and, out. And they all think it's hot. Do, just don't even. They kicked out could... somebody for getting caught for uh, smoking pot. So Yeah. So this, this girl has no, no shot of continuing. She's acting like... But she's not doing it. anything illegal. No. No. It's Where's the... Illegal. What do we know about oh, these God. pictures? It's great. And there are even like. Isn't it amazing that that's not illegal when you think about it? <laughs> it should be. It should be illegal. They're studying her birthmarks. <laughs> Smoking pot and saying curses on the radio is illegal. It should yeah. be illegal to do that to a that's, guy. Wow. <laughs> and really and let him do that on your face. It <laughs> should so be illegal. <laughs> it's amazing that that's perfectly within the letter of the law. Do but, it as as you must. <laughs> By the way, they're trying to claim that the girl in these uh, pictures is not the girl, but now they're studying her birthmarks. It is so her. She's it's got so like her. she's got a small little like mark above her eyebrow and another one on her jawbone, and they show her smiling in one of the American Idol type pictures, I guess. See, and then they show her uh, performing, uh, not on stage at American Idol, performing <laughs> in a bedroom, and she, they circled the same marks that she has on that left side of her face. She's so. singing into a flesh microphone. <laughs> yes, she is. Yes. This should be part of the competition. <laughs> yeah, there you go. Look at that yeah. shot. Oh, hey, wow. With There's... those big doe eyes. Look at her. There's something you should see every day. <laughs> That's a fine how do you do. So, Steve, what Look do we know? hand on the back of her head. <laughs> Some disgusting guy. Look at that belly. Oh, I know. What a mess. God, the guys that women do that to. <laughs> What, so what do, we, what do we know about these pictures, Steve? Well, we got drunk Steve. at spring break or something. Yeah. They surfaced a few days ago. Uh, you know, the, again, like Ann said, there's some debate as to whether or not the girl in the photo that E-Rock is it's her. It's, it's so her. Somebody could have added those molds yeah. to her face they, on the uh, dirty pictures. That's and and that's the debate. So they're looking yeah. at other features that you know that might mm. be, be there's no able debate to be able to Why wouldn't it be? Like, there's more evidence that it, yeah, I know. That, it's that, like, that it would be. What are be. the odds that yeah. some woman trying to get on American Idol ever did that to a fella? <laughs> Always got to be a conspiracy yeah. theory to everything. Yeah. Someone's putting the the birthmarks on her uh, with Photoshop and then leaking that picture out. No, <laughs> no, there's only one thing leaking, and she seems to be taking care of it. <laughs> yes. One of the rumors is that it's a friend of hers who she, she auditioned with, who's angry that she made it and the friend didn't, so yeah. the friend leaked but, the pictures. But this girl is a dirty girl, obviously. I thought it was one or two pictures that maybe a boyfriend snuck in the middle of this thing, but there's, there's a ton of nude pictures on no, that got people a, could check out. She's got I, some modeling type yeah, pictures. Yeah, she's got some modeling pictures. I found a, a profile online where he's actually, she's actually interested in doing some nude modeling. So, And then she's yeah. got some pictures with her and her friends. That's really a hot picture, a little recreation of... Um what was that American? American Beauty. Yeah, American that Beauty was, the by Rose the way, Pebble. the most. That was another. That was like your Ryan Seacrest. This movie was written by a gay guy. Yeah, yeah, and that's and what they want to see. That's what he thinks guys fantasize about when they see a blonde cheerleader. Oh yeah, when I'm <laughs> getting off to a blonde cheerleader, I picture rose petals falling <laughs> yeah. on her breath. Rose yeah. petals yeah, covering all, all the, the dirty place. parts. Yeah. Get rid of the goddamn rose petals. <laughs> yeah. I want to see her uh, uh, without any rose petals on her. That's what I picture. <laughs> That's my dirty thought. It's just to cover up the smell. Ugh. Uh, ugh. This awful girly. You need some potpourri so, there, girl. Yeah, friend. potpourri. They <laughs> poured potpourri on it. So where can we see these uh, pictures for the people out there, Steve? Uh, where, where, what convenient location can people go to? Ooh, in, in today's links on opianthony.com and foundrymusic.com. Ah. All very easy to find. Till the C&D comes. Thank you. Exactly. And, and uh, the X-rated pictures, where do they come from? Were they up on a website for a while? They're up on a few websites, actually. I'm sure yeah. they'll get yanked down. 
Yeah. Imagine there was a moment in her life where she was doing that to that fella drunkenly that yeah. she would have never thought people all over the world were going to be blowing up the side of her face and like anal and circling moles, circling moles, and <laughs> yeah, questioning the authenticity of these. So what do you think happens to her? They kick her off. Uh, they got it. They got to get rid of her. They got to get rid now, of her. But she's not. It's. I don't understand it. It's too. Um, is it, she's allowed to do that. Yeah, but not an American Idol. There's some kind of thing. I think you know the contracts they sign for that. And I'm sure there's some kind of morality clause where that's you know. Right. Oh my God, that's horrible. Oh, what is she doing? It's America's TV show. You can't. That's an American Idol right there. <laughs> yeah. That's a good girl. <laughs> wow. It's probably uh, that's probably how she got on American Idol. That's probably. God, Louie, I didn't even notice the hand on the back of her head. Yeah, yeah. That's Push a classic shot right there. Look at this slob. Go, go ahead. That is a classic shot. Oh, Good God. one. All right. We'll uh, we'll find out more, I'm sure. I think um, the day goes on Now, here. what happens? I'm not even sure when the goddamn show is on anymore. It's, it'll be on, uh, I don't know, tomorrow. Now, she was really bad. Oh, are they going to wait terrible. until she the America throws her a hope like they throw no, her no, off? No, 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 no. They are... Well, they already vo voted people off. They w already voted off two girls, two guys. She was she was the worst by far, but because she's so hot, they're, uh, she's getting well, votes. Yeah, all the girls that stayed were bad. Yeah. I mean, they were all just cute white girls. It's mm -hmm. just this sorority thing. Yeah. Yeah. Sorority chicks are winning Here's, with awful voices. Here's a taste of what Ante uh, Antonella Barbara did uh, last week on American Idol. That's interesting. Just picture nude pictures, topless pictures, panty shots, rose petals covering nice. the naughty parts. <laughs> her uh, doing what she does well, much better than her singing. Let's hear if she's any good. See, that would feel good if she was doing that. <laughs> yeah. That warble with some Altoids mixed in. <laughs> Oh, uh, it sounds like she's got that hand on her back of her head right now. <laughs> uh, wait a minute. Too fast. It's like a country version. Uh, Done badly. She's getting lost in the song. And she's like losing the notes. The worst part is whenever anybody sings rock and roll, they they make up a fake accent. Like, I don't want no mitts, yeah. babe. Yeah, they gotta be all affected. Don't talk like that. I, I just, just wanna. wanna oh. Nobody says I. They say ah. I ah. just wanna. I just wanna. What? <laughs> you don't talk like that. You <laughs> smelly whore. Uh, people are saying these are private photos that leaked onto the net. So it wasn't like these were up and she was like exploiting herself right. in this yeah, way. So that's why it was some okay. douchebag old boyfriend, Either an old or, boyfriend, or, or a friend, or one of her friends, whatever. So somebody can ruin your life by proving you ever did that. Yeah, that's, yeah. That's that's why they sh they they shouldn't be. Uh, she should be able to sue them for throwing her off if they do. You know what though? I'm but sure she, she didn't make. But money they that. keep her on the show. She wins hands down. So oh come they, on! <laughs> hands down on the back of her head. <laughs> hands down, she wins the whole thing if they keep her on. I'm telling you. They should yeah. absolutely keep her on because now every week she would be up there and you would just. I'd have her up there and then my computer. With those pictures yeah, right next to it. Yeah, that's the whole point, is legitimate people that you know have done something wrong with their mouths. Yeah. Fantastic. That's that's the formula. And here's a statement. It said, isn't it that your best friends or the ones that come forward with information that uh, are the ones that come forward with information that will go to Smoking Gun or put your photographs on the web? The show's executive producer, Nigel uh, Lithgow, told Entertainment Weekly magazine. Oh. So, so they have a little sympathy toward her, but we'll see what happens. What do you want? A girl that, like, you know, can cook? Yeah. Is that what you want? Yeah. It's like, wow, we found out this girl's hobby is cooking. <laughs> Look at her. Right. I mean, here's some pictures on a website of her actually baking. Wow. Mm. That's uh, what you want a 20-year-old girl doing. Right there, that picture. Yeah. <laughs> That's it. That's every 20-year-old 20 year girl's duty in America. Right. That's what you want her do doing. That. That's America. That's an American girl right there. Hi. Just Hi. do that until your face becomes uh, undesirable. Until your cheeks cave in like you just saw the Ark of the yeah. Covenant open. <laughs>
And then take cooking <laughs> lessons at 30. <laughs> yeah. yeah. There's plenty of time for all that crap. Exactly. Right. <laughs> You've only got a few years after you become legal where that's fun to do to your face. Yeah. Not right. Where you look up and guys want to snap photos of it. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Who's taking the pictures if this guy is uh, using one hand to I think he's got that. Head. He's doing that uh, that uh, digital camera. Hold yeah. It a little hold further. it out a little far. Arm you thing. know how people take pictures of you yeah. and them and they don't have a friend. I think so. By, like, yeah, hold still. Yeah. By the bounce of that flash, I'm saying it's the guy taking him. He's yeah. got one hand on her head and the other hand on the, with the camera. I forgot we have a photo expert. He held us. it pretty yeah. steady. It's pretty nice. It's, well, it's with a flash. Uh, <laughs> yeah, not it's not that hard. <laughs> it's not that hard. Uh, Louis C.K. helping us out today. Louis, you you promoting anything? Uh, well, I'm in Philly this weekend, but it's sold out. So uh, where? Uh, uh, at the Helium. Yeah, that's, that's a great show. All, all sold out. Uh, in Philly, bah, nah, don't I'm bother. At the Improv in Tempe, uh, set third week of this month. Very cool. And oh. then Boston. Last week of the month. Boston. Boston, where? Yeah, Boston at the Connection. At uh, Bill's Daniel place? Hall. Yeah. Bill Blumenreich. That's right. All right, it's the Opie and Anthony Louis. Show. Oh, it's the Opie and Anthony Show. The virus is spreading. Opie and Anthony. We're back with the Opie and Anthony Show. The ONA virus spreading across America. Our phone number, 1-866-313-FREE. This, uh, I just found out some good news, Anthony. Yes. We're getting the ONA Travel and Virus uh, comedy tour together. Yep. We got, a, we got a wish list of comedians we want on the show. And uh, and Louis C.K. is joining us for nice. a bunch of the dates. A bunch of dates, yep. That is very, very cool. Shaping up to be a, a fine tour this summer. Not only for on stage, but for off stage antics, I think that'll be fun. There will be antics. Yeah. yeah. Antics will abound. <laughs> You'll be divorced by the end of the tour. <laughs> <laughs> yep. <laughs> Maybe I should say that. <laughs> Go ahead, man. All right. Go ahead. Hey. Hey, we got some audio in front of us uh, of Big A and Twitchells. Yeah. Now, this side of the radio show, they're just starting to understand who Big A and Twitchells are. Mm -hmm. They came in on Friday and they did the news for us. Twitchells has really, really bad Tourette's. Yeah, real bad. He's twitching all the time, and uh, he, he can't talk without going... <laughs> yeah. yeah he's some, of his, some of his uh, sound effects he makes. Right. And uh, Big A has a, uh, uh, you can't even say it's a stuttering problem. It's like more of a stammering. It's not. It's a speech impediment. Yeah. Car, uh, yeah. 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 That's people. him. No, he, yeah. he, he comes to the comedy cellar a lot. And you made it sound like it's a nice thing. He drives a mm. cab in the Bronx. Yeah. <laughs> with no cab, with right? no protection between yeah. him and the yeah. uh, savages yeah. he's driving around. He just goes, he, his, his thing is like going, <laughs> yeah. and then he can't say ST words. Yeah. Uh, no, he, he comes tries. to the comedy cellar and sits at the comedian booth sometimes, which oh, is, you know, he's a big great. fella, and he sort of takes up a lot of space. Yeah. And he sits there, there and he says, uh, uh, you, it's good to see you, know, it's good to see you. Like, he just keeps saying nice, you, polite things. You, you saw your special is <laughs> really <laughs> good. <laughs> and you go, thank you. Thank you. Thanks. Thanks, man. Yeah, Thanks, well, man. You welcome. <laughs> Making people Good. wait for your welcome. Oh, yeah. Stop. Okay, we get it. Well, they'll be in. Uh, your thanks. welcome is already too deep into the conversation. Yeah. yeah all right. Even right. without the stammer. Hey, thanks, man. Yeah. I think I, they're going to be in on you, Thursday you, to you, do the news. Wait, don't go away yet, because you, you, you woke. <laughs> yeah, okay. Yeah, it's a good yeah. thing I sort of kept my face pointed I, towards you for one more second. Because I didn't think I was welcome. Yeah. It just gets uncomfortable because <laughs> yeah. you, you got something to do. It's supposed yes. to be a quick, hey, I saw it. It was great. Yeah. All right. Well, go downstairs now and do your to, set. Yes. Yeah. I have to pretend to read this. Yeah. But uh, uh, they'll be back here. What's up, Ed? I don't know. They were showing a casino, and they are showing, like, cards coming out of a shoe. And I, I'm just... As far as I'm concerned, they're talking about diseases. Yeah. I don't know what they're talking about, but this is, this is it would be news, coincidental the news and if so they, it. yeah, Spreading. if they started talking about the uh, the disease that is spreading because oh, we this started story the show with that. that. Strom Thurmond's parents own own the Reverend Sharpton. Al Sharpton's uh, grandparents. <laughs> oh, is that and a fantastic says, story? He's shocked. Well, why? Why are you shocked? First of all, if there's Somebody anyone... Somebody owned them. And, and if there's anyone that I thought their family owned slaves, it's Strom Thurmond. <laughs> yeah. Right up till the 60s, I yeah. think. 
Yeah. And, and you know. They just sold their last guy like a couple of years yeah. ago. <laughs> yeah. And what, do you, what does the Reverend Al think? His family came over here like uh, Eddie Murphy and living in America? Or whatever <laughs> yeah. that was? Yeah. It, <laughs> it's well, how no. did, how coming they to America. That was a, no. How are they figuring this out? Figuring this out. Uh, they're going through. Well, now that Strom Thurmond's dead, first yeah. of all, I guess he freed Al Sharpton in his will. Ain't that and, something? Uh, Finally. Nice of him. <laughs> Finally. Al was uh, having to go over there every day and just yeah. dust and vacuum. Yes. By the way. It's really humiliating, <laughs> but. By the way, you ADD uh, twins, we'll get into the big A and Twitchell's yeah. thing a little All later. All right. Oh, yes. We're sorry. We took 10 minutes to set some up and like, ah, F it. Oh, damn. We'll maybe, get back to that. Uh, maybe we should bit. just go to go to that then, and we'll talk about Reverend yeah. Al later. I don't, I don't care. I'm just, <laughs> we were yeah. just setting something else we'll, up. We'll do the Reverend Al stuff later. we got to get to it, I'm though. just trying to keep you focused, because I know you saw the two-legged dog, too, and you <laughs> yeah. might have a comment was, about that. Uh, yeah, disgusting is all I have to say. Yeah. Put, it, put it to sleep, for God's well, sake. Well, there's, there's a video of a two-legged dog at an airport. Now, it's the two back legs, so the dog has to walk like a human. Yeah. For his whole life. Well, that's all he has. If he only had the two front legs, they would have put him to sleep. I've seen that, though. Really? Yeah. I've seen yeah. Dogs you ever where seen they... when they put the wheels on the back? Yeah, yeah they put wheels why, on the back. That's yeah. why it works better that way. Than th I guess so, this yeah. dog was standing straight up, and it's got to be tiring. Just just put the dog out of its uh, misery. Dogs don't want to do that. They don't want to no. do that. Naturally, they don't want to do that. They'll only do it for doggy treats. <laughs> all right. But back to this. So, focus. <laughs> Big A and Twitchells are coming in right. Thursday to do yeah. the news. Uh, they were in Friday. And uh, they're, they've been regulars on our show for a while now. And now we're hearing things. We're hearing things. Yeah. And we don't mind if you do another radio show. We, we give you total freedom That's to right. go on whatever show you want. There may be a consequence or two to these actions, but uh, you have total freedom. I mean, uh, Big A has been going on the Ron and Fez show. Ron and Fez can be heard uh, here in New York on this very station. Yep. 6, 6 p.m. Also on XM. Yeah, and on XM. And, uh, you know, sometimes Big A... Uh, he used to, I guess, hang out after our show, and then he's kind of an intriguing character, so it's kind of like almost impossible to not want to bring him on and say yeah. something. But then we notice Big A's like showing up after our show and going to exclusively and on the Ron and Fed. Not only is he going on another radio show, he's yeah. changing his whole character, his whole character. to be cool. Uh -huh. As like cool guy. Like, now yeah. we have him for what he is. He's a stammering ass, a big <laughs> fat stammering ass. And uh, all of a sudden, uh, Ron Bennington uh, turns him into uh, Fonzie. Hey, do we have the audio where we broke him down, where we made him say Big A how it's supposed to be said? Yeah, we did some kind of a Kunta Kinte Toby thing with him. We <laughs> we decided to go that roots route and uh, beat him into submission. So on Friday's show, we beat the hell out of Big A. We had to beat him back down to reality because on Ron and Fez, they've made him this cool, like, Fonzie-type character where his name is even cool. It's like, Big A! Yeah. They go, hey, look who it is. It's Big A! Hey, and like, they emphasize the A. Like he walks in and everyone's like, hey! Big the audience here. applause. He has yeah. to he has to stop to deliver his line, but he does it anyway because he's a stammering idiot. And on thank thank thank, and thank on, you. And on our show, he's Big A. Right. He's just Big A. Where he yeah. says his name and he has to look down at the floor as he's saying it. It's like all right, Big A's coming in, not Big A. Not Big A. <laughs> so we had to kind of describe that that we made that him, there are two different schools here. And we made him a radio star. He was yeah. just a listener on the sidewalk one day, checking yeah. out one of our things we were doing that day, and he just so happened to be uh, put on the phone by Danny, and we're like, whoa, he's this, a mess. this kid's got something, and we made him a radio star, but now he's trying to change his character and be the cool guy in Ron and Fez. No, that ain't so right. we noticed it's kind of like school. And uh, in in this Opie and Anthony school, he's the guy we throw stuff at, sure, and make fun of, and he sits yeah. at the table with the rest of the dorks. Mm -hmm. And then at the Ron and Fez school, he's like the table where everyone wants to hang out with him, yeah. and they're all like, "Hey, can I sit next to you, Big A?" And he's like, mm -hmm. "Yeah, sit down too." Hey, cause he went from seat. he went from <laughs> sitting at the front of the bus to the back of the bus. Yeah, back right. of the bus with the cool kids happen? smoking. You know, he was at the front of the bus so he could rat out people that were throwing things at the back of his head to the driver. Or try to, but you don't know, really but why know did he come, doing it. The only question is why did he come back here? Because if he went from a place where people abuse him and belittle him right. to a why place where people back? like him, that's fine. See, I, I actually think thought, that that makes sense. But to come back, he thought he could I transfer think he, the coolness. Right. He thought, he I'm thought cool. You guys, you guys would say, like, we've been hearing you on Ron and Fez. And we you're cool. You all wrong. You're so cool. Just come on in and be big A. But no. 
No. He's back again, and uh, we we had to beat him because he kept we kept asking him, "What's your name?" Yeah. And he'd be like, you know, Big A. And I was like, No, it's not. And the clip <laughs> I got that we're gonna replay here is brutal, but it's not the clip where we finally broke him back down. No. They're getting that hopefully uh, for later on today. Is this where we were whipping him? Well, this is the one where we got uh, close to ten guys. To pick up paddles, sticks, and whips. Yeah, they were using those uh, martial <laughs> martial arts. Seriously, <laughs> yes. martial arts bamboo sticks. Oh my god! And then there was this big bastard sword. It's called that was made of wood uh -huh. that you practice like sword fighting with. Oh my god! For some reason, and then one of those other uh, like bamboo sticks, or big long ones that y'all whack each other with if you're a martial artist. Jesus. Yeah, and. Uh, we had about ten guys, I guess, just wailing on him, beating him right. back into the show. Yeah. So, eh, but you can do whatever radio show you want. Oh, we never said you can. That's right. Of course. <laughs> Feel free. Here's the audio in case you missed it. Big A getting beat by paddles, sticks, and whips. All right, here we go. Big A, you say go. <laughs> go. Oh, oh, Jesus. Oh, oh, wow, and they're beating him. Oh, he's, oh, he's down. down he's down on the floor. Right, keep beating they're him. Still, keep still beating him. Oh, want. my yeah, God, is he down? Oh, God, they're beating the crap out of him. Holy <laughs> Oh, God. Oh, Jesus Christ. Oh, He's, still oh, oh. He's on the ground. He's in so much pain. I'm Big A. They're poking his belly. I'm Big A. What's your name? I'm Big A. <laughs> All right. I think he's had enough. I think he's had quite enough. Oh, they, they won't stop. Wow. Oh, now they're throwing things at his face. Big A. Big A. He got beat back into the Opie and Anthony show. Right, very good. It was <laughs> so reminding me of Private Pile getting yeah, hit yeah. with uh, the bars of soap. Yeah. It's just to go oh, to yeah. sleep. It's oh, just a bad dream, oh. fat boy. He had whip marks on his back. <laughs> Ow. Ow. <laughs> Oh, oh, oh. And the best part, he fell down. And we're like, we got him where we need him now. Yeah, we was there anybody that everybody said you hit him too? Like in that movie, like, yeah, yeah, do yeah. it, come on, do it, do it. No, everyone wanted to hit him. Yeah, no, there was not one person nobody. who even had a second thought. No. As a matter of fact, we had a ground rule where um, the, his kind of tap out was going to be to hit the ground and roll up into the fetal position. Yeah. And then the people would have five seconds left More. to keep beating him. Oh, sure. So it was, because it was kind of like, you want to beat a fetal. It was kind of funny to yeah. say, all right, when he falls down, you think when he falls down, stop. When he falls down, that's your five second mark. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> and they took that to about 15 seconds. <laughs> yeah, they had a lot Because Big A fell down immediately. <laughs> All right. And then uh, Twitchells wasn't safe um, either on Friday there. We learned some things about him. He did yeah. uh, he did a comedy uh, tour for for Howard's show. Yeah, uh, yeah. He's just uh, a, a comedy uh, uh, tour. Hewitt. And he's, uh, Hewitt. he's doing radio shows all over the place. Yeah. Not telling us about it. Being sneaky. Being sneaky. And, you know, we got spies, and they called, uh, called Twitchells out as well. So, uh... We decided he needed to be mm -hmm. uh, uh, beat. Beat him. And his punishment was a bare bottom spanking. <laughs> it, was, it was so homoerotic. A bare bottom spanking. He was to um, hold on to the console, uh, which put him in a slightly bent over position, sure. uh, pull down his uh, pants, and a big fraternity like hazing paddle, oh, awesome. which we got from the fine folks at Rockstar Games for the game Bully that mm -hmm. came out. Uh, big, heavy, a uh, bit of wood. Cricket bat. Yeah, uh, cricket, cricket bat. bat. Yeah, yeah, sure. And um, that was used, uh, and, and one really big whack was delivered by Danny. And man, did But you can do whatever you want. Clean. You can do whatever oh, radio show we you want. We got no problem. Sure. We never said we had a problem, sure. and we don't. People do shows all the time. We have no problem. That's right. <laughs> this is how uh, I went down with Twitchells to beat him back into the show. Okay. Listen one. to the noise okay. he makes. Two. So. Is that his anticipation? Huh? Is that him anticipating that? Oh, yeah. Oh yeah. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. He's scared? freaking out. He's scared. Uh, for about five minutes before this, he wouldn't like shut up, and he's breathing heavy. He's like, oh, I can't believe it. Come on, get it over with. And we're oh. stretching it out. And Danny's <laughs> uh, behind him, like doing like we said. Well, you know how um, Evil Knievel used to go up the ramp sure. and then back down. Look, look it Danny, over you got to do a couple of those. <laughs> like wind up and swing like you're gonna hit him, and he, he flinched every time, even beyond his normal. Tourette's twitching. Sure. Oh, here, here we, we go. go. Quiet, everyone. Quiet. Here it comes. Ready? One. Okay. Two. Oh. 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 
<laughs> oh my god. <laughs> oh my god. He's down. <laughs> Mitchell is down. <laughs> now. That was like an Iraqi beheading thing. <laughs> That's what that sounded like. <laughs> well, the video is up on opianthony.com. The big A getting uh, beat by a bunch of sticks and paddles oh, and whips. And, and then you got uh, the Twitchells uh, getting uh, one really, really hard paddle. The Twitchells beating. And he um, he wound up uh, breaking skin. Yeah. It was a really? big the blood. Yeah. Watch. Oh, that's pretty hard. <laughs> yeah, he whacked him. There was a big blood blister. Oh my god! On his God, cheek. That's awful. <laughs> He's on the floor rolling and that's holding. That's how bad his... he wants to be on the radio. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Jesus, man. I would retire from that's... comedy if they told me I had to do that. I've have 22 years invested in this business. Yeah. If somebody told me that I'm gonna hit you like that, I'd be like, no, I can teach. I'm leaving. I got stuff I'll I could do. Maybe something. I'm a mechanic. Yeah. Other guys exactly. get to be on our show because they're funny. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Other guys see because the they're willing to take that. <laughs> right. Yeah. There's right. no real in between. No, that's his value. Yeah, that's what value be he funny. has. That's yep. right. Is that he's willing to do that. That's about it. While parading his condition <laughs> yeah, to America. While exploiting his yeah. condition. Hey, we got some uh, hot new news on Britney Spears after the break. Can't oh. be. Really hot stuff was going on with her. Mm. You know the guy she was In married rehab? to for like two hours or whatever it was? Jason Alexander. <laughs> yeah. They're, they're, I'm sure they're, Jason they're, Alexander, the actor, just loved hearing that when they yeah. first. Britney Spears was married to Jason Alexander. Oh, no. Oh, she went right back to that guy? Here's the here's the big A beating. Oh, yeah, we got video of <laughs> it. We got the video of the big A beating, which is not helping oh it. They're God. poking him with sticks and just beating him. Some into it a little more than others. Yeah, I'm, I'm noticing that. Like, some people didn't want to hurt him. Others poking, really wanted just, him hurt. Some were keeping it radio fun, and others were getting some aggression out. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. There you Poor go. big A. He's being poked with a sword. <laughs> With a little, little hobbit sword. Oh God! And he's still, you know, talking into the mic and yeah. He's at no uh, point, you know. Well, yeah. Hopefully, we got the audio of him just getting beat until he says Big A the right way. Oh. Uh Brandon from Cleveland, what's up? Yeah. Uh, before Twitchell's got hit, you remember the the riveting radio that was uh, forty five minutes of Jenga. No, sir. It was not forty five minutes of Jenga. It was an hour. It was an hour of Jenga. We wanted. We figured Tourette's Jenga would be great. Yeah. We'd have Danny, who uh, just has the shakes because he drinks too much, mm -hmm. and then we have uh, Twitchells who can't stay still. He's got Tourette's. He's always wah wah twitching, and we'll set up the Jenga mm -hmm. and have him play Jenga. How long could it? I honestly last? thought it couldn't go more than five minutes. There's no sure. way. It was an hour, Be was and then we got pot committed. You're pot committed. You gotta yeah. stay in and yep. see how it ends. Yeah. And uh, finally, that twitching ass tipped it over, but it was, you know. Oh yeah, because we were giving him an out. Uh, I forgot, Louis C.K. If he won Jenga, yeah. we weren't gonna hit him. Oh, okay. So we were gonna give him an out, and he lost the Jenga game. That that video's up on OpianAnthony.com as well. So. Yeah. Yeah. All right. I I forgot about that, Brandon. Thank you. Punching out. All right. We gotta take a break. Okay. Uh, there was something wow. I wanted to mention, but now I can't remember. Hmm. 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 Was it a hmm. tease? Were you going to be a tease? Something cool. Well, we talked about the Britney, but something else. Ah, we'll figure it out. It's the Opie and Anthony Show with Louis C.K. today. Hear what everyone else is talking about. ONA Uncut and Live continuing the show on XM Satellite Radio starting at 9 a.m. Eastern. Visit XMRadio.com to subscribe. It's the Opie and Anthony Show. The Opie and Anthony we're back with the Opie and Anthony show. The ONA virus spreading across America. A lot of girls flashing on the Pal Talk uh, cameras this morning, huh, Anthony? Oh, yeah. Loving it. Yep, we got a uh, few girls flashing. Mapa Hawaii's on, of course. She was supposed to um, do the uh, sexy estate. Uh, for us over there on the other side, over at XM, uh, where her and her boyfriend have a sex right there on the camera. What happened? I don't know. I don't. I don't know. No one knows anything. No one. I'm not hearing things. They said they were. But, gonna do but, it. What happened, Steve? You know. But everything's fine because she's flashing and she's 
She's completely she's fine. A very excellent. Woman. There's no problem there. I think the no. day she was supposed to do it, she got sick, and they just haven't rescheduled yet. <laughs> she had a call in sick. That one? Really? <laughs> called in sick to getting screwed? <laughs> they called yeah. in sick. Happened. Weird. How does that happen? I should have called in sick today. <laughs> oh, man. Oh, it wasn't that type of sick. I'm reading now. Um, uh, she had her friend. Oh. Her friend. What were you, 1955? <laughs> Tell you something. How did that not go in? Yeah. <laughs> well, well, that's exactly how. Well, uh, I, I, who has a problem still, with that? Still, what she had who cares blood coming out of her vagina, so therefore, <laughs> well, goes, well, Louis, that's gonna make the really. Pain well, you've thank been doing you. so but that's well. what happened. Thanks, XM people. Yeah, but just that's because what you've been doing so because, well too, Louis. Jesus. Just because it's something that happens doesn't mean we can say it. <laughs> what are you crazy? That would be reasonable. <laughs> God. Of course we can't say it just really? because it happened. And I've been sitting here all morning going, but man, he's, non- been, he's been under control today. Louis. But that's a non-sexual uh, occurrence uh, in a woman's not. body. Why don't, you go down to, graphic. why don't you go down to Washington and tell the FCC that? <laughs> Louis, tell you differently. if you want, could you yeah. please just graphically describe someone being killed in a horrific way? Because that's yeah, allowed. That totally. But the second you uh, mention a real basic biological function of woman That happens kind, to every woman. That happens every to every woman. woman every quite month. innocent. Yeah. In, oh. in the overall scheme of things. Yeah, but. that then, you yeah. know. I mean, oh. she's unclean. She's a, you know. Unclean one. <laughs> hey, uh. There's we, no problem with that, though. Uh, she should have, she sorry. still should have done it. I like when it looks like maybe CSI should visit that, afterwards. Yeah, <laughs> that's the thing. <laughs> <laughs> Natural lubrication. Everything's, oh everything's my fine. God, are you nuts? <laughs> that too? Do you think they got dumped? Oh, yeah, yeah. Um, no probably. doubt about it. All right, um, before we move on, we got the audio Big A uh, where we made him say Big A the right way. And you want to give the 30 second setup because some douche out there is like, I didn't hear the show Friday, well, actually, so this doesn't make sense to me. Big A went on. It uh, makes sense if we explain it to I didn't hear today. either, and it made yeah. sense to Thank me. you. It Thank says, you, Louis. Yeah. Big A went on uh, Ron and Fez, uh, which is fine. We allow everybody to go on any show they want. But uh, he became a cool character. He was trying to change his character. Yeah. And uh, he's Big A over there, yeah, like we in- Fonzie. We invented him. Yeah. He had no life before He's just us. Big A. <laughs> right. A muttering mess of a man. Considering suicide before every night at oh, that yeah. time. You know it. You yeah. know he just looks at that shotgun yeah. and his big toe and wonders if it could fit in the trigger guard. <laughs> maybe I should... Maybe yeah. I should... Sh- do it maybe, I should, sh- sh- <laughs> maybe I should. Maybe sh- I sh- should. Sh- 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 oh, I'll wait for tomorrow. <laughs> Can't even say it. <laughs> the only thing that has prevented him from doing it, I guess. Yeah. So uh, he went uh, over there, and uh, that's fine, but he became a new guy. And then he thought he was the cool Big A, which is what they call him over there. Yeah. Big A. So we had to kind of teach him Kunta Kinte Toby style. Yeah. Uh, what his real name was, and Big A. So what you're about to hear is Big A getting whipped. You He's can, being whipped. You could barely hear the whip, but you could hear the reactions. Yeah. Uh, as the clip goes on, you could you, you start hearing the whip because we gotta we gotta beat it out of. Had to step it up a little on him. Yep. Here's Big A from Friday. Who are you? Big A. Oh. Who, are, Who you? are you? Big A. Oh. What's oh. your name? The gay. Oh. A little harder. Yeah. What's your name? What's your name? The gay. Oh. Oh. You say it like that again, you're just going to keep getting beat. What's your name? The gay. Oh. That's adorable, isn't he? What's your name? Big A. God, is he, look oh, at the pride no. he's got. The pride. We're going to have to hobble him. He's running out of steam. We're going <laughs> to hobble him. Hobble him. So we can't run off to other shows. Who are you on the Opie and Anthony show? <laughs> we ask you again. On Indiana on Jones, that mother... Your big A. With your leather jacket. On yeah. Opie and Anthony, you are... Uh, uh, big A. Yeah. All right. <laughs> yeah, yeah, there you go. Big A. We, he's been he's broken. broken. He's been broken. <laughs> Good boy. <laughs> <laughs> Got the sound of the whip hitting the back of his members only like leather jacket. Oh, no, no, we made him take that off. Oh, yeah. yeah, very thin. I think the I'm layer sure. of hair might have helped. Uh, Probably. Yeah, he had. A, it looked like he was wearing a sweater when his shirt was out. 
Hey, we got uh, Marge checking in from the little shelter. Oh, Marge checks in from time to time. She runs uh, the little shelter over there in Suffolk County and always has some kind of problem with an animal and looks to us for, for some kind of support. Shelter? Yeah, she's yeah. trying to save every dog and yeah, cat out there. Yeah, she's trying to save. We just say, you know, blue well, liquid. Hey, Marge. Sleep. Good morning, gentlemen. Hi. How are you? Hi, Marge. What's the problem today? The snow collapse your roof? What's up, you old bag? Don't don't laugh. The cattery, the whole roof is leaking. But, but, I knew it. There's always a problem. There's always a problem this at the shelter, shelter. The shelter itself should be put to sleep. Yeah. You have the worst shelter ever. It's, it's the Auschwitz of, of shelters for animals. Can I tell you something? We are the best shelter in the whole world. We take animals that no other shelter will. But I've called you because I would like to Malamute. invite you to be my guest. Oh. At on Wednesday, that's next Wednesday night, uh, I'm busy. 7th of March at Ohika Castle. We are having our uh, yearly gala to raise money gala. for the animals. Mm. It's Monte Carlo night. Mm. And, you can, <laughs> oh. and you can play poker and oh. you can play 21. And, mm. and there's just dog hair all over everything. <laughs> what do you another say, guys? I, I want yeah, to say you. Spread more diseases. Yeah. I'm going to be Cross, there. It would uh, mean so much. Diseases. How did I get distemper? <laughs> Come on, from this what do you poker say? ship. Uh, Marge, I hate dogs. I'm allergic to animals. You know but that by now. Uh, that's not the point. Think about it what you're doing. It certainly is the point. Think you'll be what you'll be doing to help the animals. Marge, all you have to do is stay. But if he for doesn't like hour. animals, that's the whole point: is that he doesn't. Yeah, oh, yeah, he doesn't care. On, you have to care. Less animals, less sneezing for the opster. Uh, do you know the that opster. animals Dark. play such an important role in, in what? In what? Lives? Really? In what? Oh. All I know is the bee has to pollinate stuff or else we all die. The Any other animals can animals, be put to death. Like, I have a dog and I love my dog, but anim the point of animals is that we eat them. That's, no, the whole, that's pretty much the point. But I do that's love not, my dog. Uh, we have a program called Healing Hearts, mm. and it tells and how a leaking roof. people are to... <laughs> Your oh, roof is leaking. The roof yeah, is I can't leaking. donate my money to a shelter that can't even keep their roof from leaking. Yes, leaky we, roof. You would think they would take care of that. In the cattery, cats hate water. No, no, no. In no. the cattery? Cattery. cattery. Oh, the cattery. Cattery. It's the cattery. It's the cat on, room. Yes. Give these little guys a chance. No. I got a Marge, chance to no. live in a leaky roof Please, building. I'm begging, I'm begging you. Marge, don't beg. You know what I did? You know what I did recently? What? I now own a, a cat. Oh, God bless you. You know what I did, though? What? I bought him for a lot of money. Oh, come on. <laughs> I didn't adopt. I didn't adopt one of those yeah. mangy messes that come from a shelter. Mm -hmm. Why would you want to adopt someone else's problem? I don't want that mess. I wanted a cute little problem. kitten, too. I didn't want a full-grown mess. I want a brand new one just made. I want a cute little big far-headed kitten. I don't want some dog with a problem because the, the past owner was beating the hell out of it right. with the newspaper. Do you, do you have any idea how many of your listeners love animals? People go, the FedEx driver, UPS driver, come to Little Shelter to make a delivery and say, right. is Marge yeah. here because right. she's doing something? Hopefully it's a gas delivery. I think all, I think all <laughs> dogs. <laughs> I hopefully, chamber. hopefully it's a vat of blue liquid. Like, I've got your Zyklon B here. Oh, my God. Uh, would you like to sign for us? Oh yeah, that's, that's what we're, oh, Weiser is here with <laughs> some. Oh, oh. Do you know what it would be? screws right into the roof of the cattery. How, how would you feel if I called you and said to yeah. you both, Opie and Anthony, you are responsible for helping us raise money <gasps> to keep and care for animals that uh, would have been put to sleep in shelters all across the New York area? Here's, here's what, okay, I think that all dogs and cats, first of all, that exist should be neutered. Oh, we, we are should. very much... Oh, yeah, listen, all right, listen, yes. I think Mark yes. should be neutered. I think... We are. We I don't are think that we. I think we should let neutered. all those species die, so there's no more dogs and cats. So and spay and neuter to the point where they can't even. Where they can't, I think every single one of them should be sprayed and neutered, and they should die out. Die oh, out. Yes, because that's not going to be when the breeders are breeding design. I know, and the, the breeders time. also. The it breeders, their ridiculous. dogs should should also be all pets should be annihilated mm -hmm. because Back to wild animals. Well, because they like as a species, we're not taking care of them. Like most dogs mm -hmm. and cats. Not True. Are living in, in crappy uh, and squalor <laughs> and squalor with a leaky roof. So we we are like God's tell me, tell me kid. Well, let me finish what I'm saying. Wait, We're like wait. God's kid, and we didn't take care of our pets, so yeah. they should be taken away from us. We're failing. Yeah. 
Dog what? is God spelt backwards. Yeah. So they're the opposite of God, yeah. is what you're saying. <laughs> so instead of worshiping them, we should me, cook them and eat them. you come home after you've, after you've been on the air yeah. and you've had all kinds of problems, and you come I'm home in the afternoon or in the night, yeah. what one thing is there to greet you at the door and try to make you feel better about uh, my beautiful you. girlfriend? No, that's not the same thing. And eventually some lovely lot kids. better. <laughs> no, because a, an animal will be there you, with you through thick and thin. They won't care if you have a penny to your name. They won't care if you're not feeling And well you're again. right, Marge, because I don't know how many times I've had to hit my girlfriend for clawing up my, the side of my couch. And, and Marge, don't, don't make us say it again. In the end, the animals don't care about you because when when you Marge die and there's no family around for about a week you. or two, they're gonna be, they're gonna eat your they're body. They're gonna be eating your 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 ankles until someone discovers your dead rotting body. They find you half eaten. We have, had, we they, have the, had instances of animals that have stayed on guard when their when their owners have fallen or done something. Where are they gonna go? Get to drive the car to the hospital. Yeah, Marge, that's, where are the keys? Marge, that's the nice story. We've also heard the other one. Uh, that happened out in your area of the yep. old lady where the dog was right. eating the old lady because she died and and the dog got hungry. Dogs well, get hungry. You can't you can't even think about those ridiculous things. I ridiculous? Mean, How ridiculous so is the that? The woman's family didn't think it was ridiculous. They couldn't have an open casket because Fido ate her face. Right. Dogs <laughs> gotta eat. Dog gotta eat. Dog gotta eat. Now. You, what you're saying is totally ridiculous. Okay. Please think about it this way: a dog, a cat, is a person's best friend. They don't care sure. if you have morning mm -hmm. breath. Never lent me they money. Don't, they don't care never. about anything best except. Friend. My ass never drove me to the airport. 100% yeah. unconditional. The crazy thing is, she's been on the air for five minutes. Hasn't given a phone number. Hasn't given anybody any. Nothing. Just talking about some gala she wants us <laughs> well, to attend. Wait, but so, there's no way for all all this exposure and yeah. no actual. All right, so we got I, way. If I could, if right, hold on, Marge. So it's Monte Carlo night next Wednesday. W W. <laughs> well, you can probably just tell from the W W W that uh, it's a website. Sure. <laughs> HTTP colon slash slash www.dogeatsowner.com What you're saying is ridiculous. <laughs> no, it, it happens. Mm. Yeah, That's, it bothers uh, me when people like say you should like are grossed out by Koreans eating dogs. Yeah. So what? It's just a different an colored cow. I mean, Maybe, who yeah. Cares? It's a smaller version yeah. of a cow. It's meat. Yeah. It is the same molecular makeup. There's no reason not to eat it. Yeah, why? Uh, we, no. we, we decided patting them on the head and rubbing them under the chin totally. is better than eating them. Yeah. And so be it. If I was on an airplane crash situation in oh. the Andes, I would eat my best friend. I wouldn't care. Who's He's going dead. first? Let's say you got your, your dog. Your best friend yeah. is your dog. Uh, the plane goes down. You're, free, you're freezing. You're starving. Mm -hmm. do you, what do you do? Forage around? Or no. do you look at that dog and go, that is absolutely where I'm going? Yeah. I'm going to cut I'm him eating. open, put my hands in his belly for warmth. Warm up a little. Well, yeah. Ugh. Well, Han Solo style. Yeah. You know that would be rough to, you know that would be rough to keep down though. I've always thought about that, but when. That's all how you prepare it. Yeah. Exactly. You should make it with a nice you gravy. Gotta yeah, marinate, great. You got to marinate a dog. Yeah. You know you're sitting, sitting at the crash site, just going, no, it yeah. has to marinate, guys. Yeah, I know yeah. you're hungry. You know uh, you're sitting there eating, swallowing, puking, mm -hmm. eating, swallowing, puking. How many days go by? Just hoping you can keep some of it down so you have energy to survive. How many? Dog? Day, how many know. days go by? Or a you, person? The Even plane person. crash. Person, dog. I don't yeah. care. Plane crash. You're not. You're not cooking it up. What do you do? Do, like right when it crashes, you just realize you're you're amazed you're alive. Everyone gets together, you get the supplies, you see what you got. How long, how much time has to go by before you go? We're eating your dog. We're right. eating your dog. Is right. it is it a couple of days? Does one guy start eyeballing it before well, another? Think, you yeah, you go at least three like, or four days. Three or four days, and Easily. that's it. Easily. Yeah. I'm thinking longer before you I start think thinking you, of the dog. you start eating the dog before you run out of the actual airplane food. <laughs> <laughs> it's like, I'd there rather eat the dog than yeah. that chicken. There's me. still a chicken and one of those <laughs> salads with chicken on it. I'm still I'm buying I'm, eating the dog. I'm having the dog. Cook up the dog. <laughs> hey, uh, let's go to Dave in Pennsylvania. Excuse me, only first class passengers are <laughs> yes, eating the dog. Right. Yeah. Dave, what's up? Hey, my dad's a police officer, and uh, he's been called several times to, like, old granny's house or whatever, and she's dead. And uh, got dogs or cats, and when you're alive, they're loyal. But when you're dead, you're lunch. Yeah, your food. After yeah, a while. yeah, look, I love, I, yeah, I love my dog. I think if you have a dog, it's great. But you do have to be realistic, though. 
It's an animal that actually is pretending to care about you. <laughs> yeah, it's an animal because through all kind of yeah food. years and years. It's been kind of taught, yeah. and now it's got this kind of inbred instinct that yeah. you will feed them. Yeah, that's it. And they fear you. That's the only. Yeah, they yeah. fear you. You're the alpha, and yeah. uh, and and that's a whole thing of feeding them, mm -hmm. rubbing them. And then disciplining them yeah. is the, the same thing they used to do in wild packs, yeah. only differently. It was the licking no, and I the bringing of the food, the eating first. I still like to get on top of my dog and bite her ear. <laughs> and that's that I do. Shows who's boss. Yeah. <laughs> hey, let's say hi to Dennis in Philly, <laughs> listening on hey. WYSP. What's up, Dennis? Ooh. What's going on, guys? Hey, man. Happy birthday, Louis. Hey. hey. Did you say you bought a little kitten? A kitten. kitten. With two Ds, apparently. What? What? What did you name this poor little thing? Yeah, this guy's convinced that you named it something gay. It's uh, Adolf. <laughs> Are you <laughs> really? serious? Teasing, of course. <laughs> what I call. Huh. I named it Jean Benet. What, what's the name of your cat? My little cat's yep. name is Jack Jack. Jack Jack? He's little oh. Jack Jack. Why Jack Jack? Because that's what my girlfriend named him. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Jack Jack. Little Jack Jack. Aww. And he runs around the house and plays with his little cat toys. He's got little catnip cat toys. He's got more toys than a child. <laughs> because, again, my girlfriend decided to just load up on cat yep. toys. So now as we uh, are, are trying to go to sleep, the cat will jump up with that crazed cat face mm -hmm. and this catnip mouse in its mouth looking to play at, like, 12:30, one in the morning, mm -hmm. and I, you know, I gotta get up pretty early for this show, yep. so the foot just goes under the belly, and I go, foosh, and just watch the <laughs> flying cat show. <laughs> <laughs> Little Jack Shack. All right, hey, uh, you guys started with the Sharpton thing. Here's the story uh, a lot of people are talking about oh, today. Yeah. I think it's on the front page of the paper today here in New York. I think it's important, way beyond uh, the Sharpton family or the Thurman family. I think it's important for America. Working with newly obtained records from Ancestry.com, Daily News writer Austin Fenner found evidence that Reverend Sharpton's great-grandfather, Coleman so Sharpton Sr., was a slave owned by <laughs> Alexander Sharpton, who in the practice at that time gave his slave his last name. Oh, so wait a minute. So some guy, this this, this is some, where this came from. Some, some Newsday guy. Some Newsday guy was thinking about Al Sharpton. And thinking, oh, that dude, somebody owned that. Someone dude's owned parents. his, yeah. I want to find out who owned them. Who like, owned them? Some guy. That's right. Went, <laughs> went down that line of thinking. So who, see, now th is this going to open up like, so who owned uh, Denzel Washington? Exactly. Uh, you watch yeah. now. That's what's going to happen. That's the and new thing. there's going to be reparation lawsuits, I bet. I bet right? they will absolutely now. Reverend Al sure. is going to sue. Uh, uh, Thurman, uh, Strom Thurman's for, family. Shouldn't he? I mean, shouldn't he? For yeah. ownership or, yeah, yeah. whatever. Uh, for, for some kind so of still psychological believe, though, damage. If they want to get reparations, then they should have to be slaves again. Again, I right. Still think if, yeah. you're gonna, if we're going to pay them. It's an awful lot of money slavery, they're asking for. <laughs> yeah, for the slavery. Well, something in return. Then we should what still we get be getting return. the slavery. Right. The point is, we're paying them. The point of reparations is to pay them to be slaves. Right. So they should go back to being, being <laughs> slaves, and yes. then you get paid. Yeah. It's almost like a real job, yeah. only it's called something horrific. <laughs> This next, this next clip, Sharpton is shocked is at he, the news. Is he? Coleman worked to pay off the debts of four children. Their mother, Julia Thurman Sharpton, was Strom Thurman's first cousin twice removed. I oh, couldn't geez. describe the emotions that I've had over the last two or three days uh, <laughs> thinking uh, about this. A niece of Strom Thurman said she'd speak with Sharpton at his request. She also said if you trace back many native South Carolinians today, you'd find that most owned slaves back then. Yeah. Reverend Sharpton says he's not sure if he'll be contacting Strom Thurmond's relatives. He says this is all so new for him, he's taking it one day at a time. Oh, man. This, you know, this is yeah. opening up a, a new thing. Big can of worms. If uh, if Reverend Al was so into this, though, mm -hmm. like, I, I think every black person should probably have done this research himself. Don't you think? Like, don't you think Reverend yeah. Al... Being so into uh, civil me. rights, yeah. would have looked, look, wanted to look back into his own history yep. when Roots came out. <clears throat> yep. Every, it was a big thing for black people to look in, into their lineage and see how far back they could trace it. Yep. You think Reverend Al would have known this already if he was well, owned by someone so famous? By I mean the the uh, the families that owned these people. Couldn't they <laughs> sue to still own them on some level? Yeah, like, wait a minute. Now it's like Roe v. Wade apparently could get overturned any day. Like it's right. just by so just couldn't the Emancipation Proclamation? Right. Couldn't, exactly. couldn't there be like a landmark case that overturns emancipation? It's like, look, we freedom. Yeah. But 
I can't find the paperwork. Or actually, yeah, we didn't free them. It was some uh, guy yeah. came over. I we we actually wanted to keep. Yeah. Him. And now he, he better stay out. Of, he better stay out of South Carolina. I gotta keep low. <laughs> <laughs> I gotta keep low. I'm outraged that I can't go to can't North go to Carolina, South, South Carolina. I am outraged to find out I was a slave, <laughs> which is ridiculous. Cause I look in the mirror every day and I'm still black. Well, everybody, this whole everybody in this country is forgetting the slavery. Like every people always say, "Yeah, oh come on, it was 400 years ago. It was like a hundred years ago. Yeah, it was not long ago. The last ones that were let go, it was not that long ago. No, it was speaking. Fun. Oh, oops. Sorry. <laughs> that's right. You didn't use Mouth. the K, which is the worst letter in that word. <laughs> yes, it is. He's all warmed up now. Oh, Al, get oh, ready. Al, you ready? Lucky what Louis. Say, Al. Lucky Louis. Uh, Louis C.K. is all warmed up now. Yeah, Reverend Al, though, is outraged. He should have done the research himself, and now it opens up. Yeah, it, what, he's going to sue. No, but that's what everybody thinks that slavery was something that happened 500. People you literally use those numbers. Like, yeah, it was five, 400 years ago. Six, like, yeah. And they were Martians that landed and took and owned slaves and then left. Yeah. No, it's everybody <laughs> now. It's the same people. But that that was just like... Business as usual, too. And it was like I. Uh, yeah, but see, I don't buy that. Like people that say, like when when people try to defend Thomas Jefferson and all those guys that own slaves, yeah, and say, well, that's just what people did. People I don't did. know if you were alive during slavery and you weren't actually putting your life into trying to stop it, you were a piece of garbage human being. I mean, yeah. it was, <laughs> like just because other, well, I own people and hit them. I think there was and, a uh, point. Force I my, own people and, and hit them. I own them, hit them, and rape them. <laughs> but uh, hey, my. My neighbors did it. No, it's an awful thing, and the rest of the world wasn't doing it. And there was something Jim Norton didn't quite understand. We had a discussion yeah. about slavery um, a few days ago, mm -hmm. and I think there was a point in human existence where the first Europeans, or maybe not even Europeans, I'm, I don't know, just first peoples went over to a very primitive part of Africa, yeah. saw some type of animals or creatures that resembled human beings yeah. but in no way acted like them and thought hey i see they can work they can probably be trained like the ox or yeah, this I or that or the I other thing. That that's true. I don't. I don't either. No, I'm not speculating. True. You don't it's think not. so long ago no, when they were Africa, that they weren't considered people? No, uh, because Africa was civilized long before Europe was. I, I, the, I, 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 the, I, the whites I, of Europe came. They came late to the game. I don't buy that either. I've heard uh, Farrakhan yeah. talk about how there were. You know, yeah. that where 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 are any of these artifacts? Of well, this he's a great uh, African he, he, civilization. Where are the big and I'm buildings? I'm not talking North yeah. Africa. Where are the big buildings? I'm not talking North Africa. I'm talking South African, yeah. the jungles of South Africa. We got a live one. And Middle Africa. Uh, Amanda, what's up? Ooh. Okay, you guys tell your little jokes. Sometimes it's funny. Yeah. This isn't funny. Is she, are you yes, the one that is. called uh, a few months ago? Maybe. Yeah, you Maybe. are. Maybe. Why are you? Wait a minute. Why What's are you the matter? We're just having a discussion. Hold on. She yeah, hold on. Hold on. Just to set everyone, uh, get everyone on board here. Amanda called up a few on months board. ago. You're not using those words. Absolutely, absolutely <laughs> hated us. Why are you still listening to the show, Amanda? Thank you, Dan. <laughs> You know what? You guys aren't funny. You guys are racist. But why do you continue What's to racist? listen? What's racist about what we're saying? You're saying that maybe black people should be owned again, like it's a joke? <laughs> well, that was like a joke. It's a joke. <laughs> like it's a you joke. You just explained it. Yeah. We're saying black people should be owned again, like, like it's a like joke. Like it's a joke. You guys are racist. You guys hide behind your laughter. <laughs> oh, no. <laughs> no, please, no. Okay, keep laughing. Oh, stop. <laughs> Look, I'm hiding. She can't see me. Right, hold on. I gotta hide a little more. <laughs> <laughs> I'm wearing my last camouflage. <laughs> oh my god, the whole audience is hiding. Oh my god, oh, we're all racist. Oh! <laughs> Amanda, Amanda, what did we say? What did we say that is so bad? Say you're racist. What? You think it's funny? Yeah, we think it's funny. It is funny. I think it's funny that... Uh, it's very funny. Yeah, Reverend Al uh, didn't do a little research beforehand. No, that's not what you were joking about. What? What is Everything we were joking about was funny. No, you were saying yeah. that black people should be slaves again. Yes, we were. If, they get, if they get reparations. I'm sure Louis C.K. is going to run for some type of office on the <laughs> yeah. platform of bringing back slavery. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Here I am again hiding behind my laughter. Yeah. Uh, if you did some research, you'd find 
out that you had some great 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 grandmother that was a slave. Listen, I would still you still find that. But I would still find that joke funny. Wiggle. I would still find that joke funny. Yeah, would you? Yes, I would, even though you said it with a uh, side yeah. tone. I, I, I'm It'd just, be funny. And I'm just amazed that you're still listening to the show. Yeah. yeah. You no, you like I, us, Amanda. I listen to it because I'm amazed that you're allowed to you're, speak this bull. You're a self-hating I'm black woman. Oh, of course I am. She's one of these crazy yeah. yeah. Who has to listen to us and get outraged. I used to do the same thing with a station in here in New York. It was called WLIB. It was a, a black-owned station. They would get on every day and just talk about uh, how wh white people were the devil mm -hmm. and uh, how we should. And other, they'd have guests on that would just freely speak about how white mm -hmm. people should be exterminated and from the face of the earth. You were amazed that this was and happening I listened, in America. I listened every day, and I, it used to outrage me. Mm -hmm. And Amanda, you know, it used to outrage me, but I couldn't stop listening. This is a comedy-based entertainment show. Also. Yeah, yeah, yeah. This yeah. is comedy. That was serious, and I was, yeah. I, but I was compelled to listen every day. We're, Amanda, we're just a bunch of dopes trying to make people laugh on their way to work. That's it. How many black people do you guys know? Uh, uh, Patricia 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 does our show on a regular basis. That. That's got nothing to do with anything, you nitwit. What? what? Yeah. Y you use, <laughs> nice you use the N word, nitwit. <laughs> nitwit. Shut up. No, you shut up. You guys. You oh, shut up. Let's get into that argument now. No, you should not. Na 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 na. It's clearly you that should shut up. Just admit it. You're racist. Who owned you, Amanda? Do you know what family owned you? Um, excuse me. Did you do any research and figure out what family owned you? I don't need to know what family. I'm not from America. It doesn't matter. Don't worry about it. Don't worry about it. Where are you from? Own you. Where are you from? Where are you from? Where are you from? Where are you from? Then why are you so where angry? You You're not even an African American. Yeah, where are you from? Oh, so only African Americans can be. Yes! <laughs> only they can be pissed off at slavery here in America, you dummy! You really? Yes! You dummy. If you actually believe that, you're the biggest. So you're saying every black person can be mad at this? Every black person. Oh, every stop it. One. It's not. Why don't you get mad at the black people that are hacking each other apart and defer or, or, or other, some other uncivilized crap hole in Africa? Why aren't you mad? at that how do you know what i do uh, well because you call up and you lambast us for having fun leave us alone we gave you an oscar last night what else do you want gave you a couple we gave you a couple we gave you best last actor. night what else do you want from us whitey gave you best actor we gave you best actor and best supporting actress what else do you want from us amanda that's thing you're racist live with it okay even if we were racist who cares you're racist there, I showed her. Oh, she hung up. Damn it. That's the same chick, man. She called yeah. us two, three months ago. I'm, I'm thinking I like was, her. She I, got spunk. I was thinking that was the last day she would uh, ever listen to the show, but she's still there. I got a little jungle fever with Amanda. Oh, yeah. I like that. She's you know still, she's got she's the wild afro. And Amanda wow. showing her blackness. Yeah. Angela Davis afro. Yeah. She's all mad. Black power yeah. and all over the place. Ugh, oh, so is she boring. angry? Right. So boring. Enough. People think you can't talk about something. Yeah. That if you mention something, you must be defiling it or saying something Just about talking about it. About it. All right, Just listen, shut up, you know, boring. What would they? What kind of radio show would she listen to? Somebody just going, well, apparently this one. But uh, <laughs> yeah, yeah, does this she one. want us to sit here and go, isn't it good that all people are, you know, what What do people yes. want to listen to? Right. Apparently, yeah, this show. Uh, all right, listen, we got to take a break. Take when we get back, right. dump in your own face. When we get back, <laughs> we're going to do a little vacuuming, and we're going to mop up a little bit. Uh, we'll talk about uh, the latest <laughs> of Britney Spears, and we'll yes. do a little, uh, what did we learn on the Opie and Anthony show today? It's the Opie and Anthony Show. Go! Go! You're listening to the Opie and Anthony Show. Uh, Amanda got the phones just rocking. Our phone number, 1-866-313-FREE. That's 1-866-313-FREE. Let's say hi to James in Texas. What do you think James in Texas is going to say? Um, <laughs> hmm. I sympathize with Amanda. Yeah. Uh, James, what do you got? James! What's up? Oh, my God. I did the big setup, and you're supposed to be there. Like, bam, bam, bam. This is what I got to say. Oh. James. Oh, my God. He doesn't even understand he's on the air. He's asleep. James, are you retarded? Hey, hey. Is that Amanda chick? That chick's a bitch. Oh, you really, man. You guys see uh, Riley really brought something new to the table there, buddy. She just, <laughs> she's a waste of person. Did you see the big setup, the big energy? I, yeah. I, I threw a lot of energy at that this guy. That was really badly yeah. by him. Holy crap. Guy, it was a sucky caller. 
Uh, let's go to Kevin. Kevin, you're on the Opie and Anthony show. Yo, what's going on, guys? What's there you go. On? Listen, yeah, Kevin's right in. Look at that. Yep. This is what we need. I was from Texas. It takes them a little longer to register. But, uh, hey, I'm right with you guys. Listen, hey, keep doing what you're doing. Amanda's upset. Okay, because, and the thing is, is what you guys are talking about, black people joke about it all the time. And that's the thing, as long as it's funny, you know, it's, it's all good. And as far as the reparations, let me tell you how, who that's going to affect. The biz, people that made a lot of money off slavery, when people find out that they were once owned by them, they oh. cash in. You think it's that's true. when someone's going to cash in? The thing is that America has to face the past that they got. We owned each other. <laughs> <laughs> and women only been voting for 80 years or right. something. It's like, you know... We're still a young country. Like, when you look at a black guy, yeah. if you see a black guy with white hair on his temples, that guy actually lived in America when it was legal to not let him drink at a water fountain. Like, that's what people don't understand. <laughs> like, people are like, hey, that's in the past. Uh, there's every, still people walking around. Every black guy above, like, 40... Remembers that, like, there was that Congress made it legal to, like, make him feel like a piece of garbage. <laughs> it'll, <laughs> it'll, and this just happened. And if it wasn't, if he's not, if you're not old enough to remember that as a black guy, you were raised by people exactly. that remember that. Yeah. So we expect black people to be so sweet. It'll to us. start to be in the past when the last one dies off. Yes. The last black guy. The last black, black guy who's ever hurt by so a woman. The killing of the old black people. Yeah, because otherwise <laughs> yes, no, we'll, we'll never forget. <laughs> well, yeah, because yeah. we got to move on. Yeah, we got to move on. Yeah, exactly. Are you but saying her, that like a I, joke? The thing I <laughs> yeah. hate about that woman, though, is that it's you pointed out something important that she's identifying with people that she's got nothing to do, nothing with. To do with. No, just right. like I don't. I'm not. I'm Mexican Irish, and our, my family's only been here. So nobody in my family owns slaves. White right. white people band together in a horse crap way too. It's not and, and, yeah. White doesn't mean anything. I don't even think Amanda's black. I think she's like probably like some liberal white chick who's like, you guys are wrong because you're talking about slavery. No, and, we're experts. We know she's black by her voice. We can uh, tell. Yeah, <laughs> we're really good at that. I don't We've been doing this long enough to know. Better qualifications than me. I don't know. Louis brought up a great point, though, that uh, you know we're, we're kind of like like uh, white people lump all black people in one category. Yeah. Oh, all criminals are all this. Blah, 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 blah. Yeah. Yeah, but some black people, apparently, like Amanda, will lump every white person into yep. the category of that's how all white people think. Exactly. Yeah. And that's yeah. how all white people act. And and no, there's only a few of us. Yeah. All right. Yeah. Thank it's you, Kevin. Pig, this is doing, guys. All right, right on. Let's go to Derek in uh, Jersey. Derek, what's up? Hey, what's up, guys? Hey. Okay, first of all, uh, uh, you know, I'm a shwoogie. Uh, <laughs> shwoogie! <laughs> Do you play the shwoogie game? And Amanda, I first of all, I know, because I know she's still listening. Yeah. Um, if you're going to call up and represent the black race, change your name to, like, Tanika Shabazz. Amanda is such the whitest name. I know. She needs yeah. a, a black militant name. Yeah, yeah you know, if you're going to go that route, please. Yeah, yeah, change your name, Amanda. But, Amanda, yeah, stop, you, it, stop being so uptight. I love you guys. I've been listening to you guys since WNEW days, man. You're the funniest things out there. Keep doing what you're doing. Thank All you, right. Derek. Thanks, yeah, no, Derek. The, the minute that you're judging somebody who's being funny for what they're saying, yeah. you just should just die in a hole. <laughs> <laughs> That's nice. A subtle is that no warnings or anything? No, Just right off the bat. It's like, why am I dying in this hole? I, oh, that's right. I kind of got a little serious. I think I was laughter and hey, uh, someone's got a theory on Amanda Nasir. Nas Nasser. Yeah, what Nasser. Nasser. What, what, what? What? What's up, man? What's your name? Hey, Nasir. Y'all can call me Nas. We had the same issue last time with y'all. Nas. Oh, what's up, Nas? What's going on, boys? Hey, man. I remember this guy. You're from Newark. Yes, sir. Right on. What's up? No, oh, loving the show like always, fellas. Listen, that girl, I guarantee you, she's half white and half black. She's Aww. a mongrel, mulatto. <laughs> Maybe she's uh, half and half, can't deal yeah, with it, like something like that. Oh, yeah, well, that would be speculating, yes, indeed. Uh -huh. Why do you think she's half white? Because I think that's her way. That's her way. I saw it, her guilt. Like, that's her guilt coming through. Like, she, like, she feels like she got to represent her black side more. Yeah, yeah, yeah. She's got to really theory. pump out the black. It's a theory. We interrupt this yeah, program. Ah, totally oh, 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 oh. uh, we'd love to stay on this uh, subject, but there's a midget sighting. What? Who saw this coming? Not me. Ah, uh, Chris of West Palm Beach. What's up? Hello. Oh boy. Uh, there he is. What's, what's up? up? What's, what's up, up, Chris? 
Can you hear us? Yes. Yeah. I just flew in to West Palm International from from uh, visiting my dad. Saw a midget. You know how the the suitcases have rollers on it? Yes. And this is the like the medium sized suitcase, not even the big one. <clears throat> and this guy was holding the uh, and they have the the handles that telescope up. Yes. He was holding the actual handle sewed to the to the suitcase. <laughs> and all I could think of was the only name, man. <laughs> so, you know, yeah, you usually have to telescope the handle, yeah. and then you pull it behind you. He was just no, holding was the regular, the like, strap <laughs> handle that's yeah. on every suitcase and rolling yeah. it. That uh, that uh, telescoping handle, completely unnecessary no, for him. When are we going to be able to, uh, to buy midgets as pets? Yeah. When are we going to be able to do uh, that? Well, it is 2007, after all. <laughs> You're a racist as far as midgets are concerned. <laughs> yeah. What is that, a joke? Uh, what else was... Uh, You're really advocating buying midgets. Yeah, absolutely. Oh, okay. I think it could be kind of I just want to make sure it's known that you're not joking. No, I'm not I, joking. Okay. I ran not into going a... to laugh there whatsoever. <laughs> not hiding. I Lord ran... knows I barely get a laugh on this show. <laughs> I thought that might get a chuckle. Uh, Chris, what else was the little fella doing at the airport? Oh, no. He, he was a Chinese midget, though. Oh, oh a little Asian He's midget. midget, though. That's oh, nice. Hey, okay. though, yeah. though. It's a, uh, All right, Chris. Asterisk midget. <laughs> Chinese. <laughs> Anything else? Uh, no, but on that racist part, uh, what uh, about all the white slaves in uh, other countries? Yeah, it was nah, so it doesn't white. matter. They just they want to stay there. Overall, as a race, we're doing a lot better. And all the right. white slaves, we know they were called Jews. <laughs> yeah. Uh, it was always just the Jewish people yeah. that were enslaved. Badger Wolf from Wisconsin. What's up? Not much. We're forgetting the biggest point. Amanda's marrying a white dude. Well, well you think that Amanda maybe is marrying a white guy. That's a little speculation. And yeah, well, how, do you, do you, how do you know that? She said that the last time she called. Okay, that's what I was wondering if she did. And yeah, and uh, you were saying, well, why is she listening? Because it was on the XM part. And she's saying she's marrying a white guy, and he listens to it. So He listens. To. Oh, that's right. I do why would she be that marrying now. a white guy? Maybe he's, but boy, he must be beaten down so bad by her. Mm. Just everything. Yes, honey, I know, you're right. The whitey, we mm. we stink so bad. Oh, this is I horrible. I think they have a lot of laughs in that house. Yeah. I'm, Humorless. I'm wondering, what, I'm wondering what all he's putting up with. I picture him just walking around a house that's filled with nothing but, like, African masks on the walls <laughs> and, like, African oh, you furniture. Know what? And when we did Lucky Louie and we had to design, there's a black couple that lived yeah, across yeah, the hall from us. Or, yeah, so the, the hall. set designers sit, built their apartment for, for us and I went down to approve it, and it had all this African art. And I said, why do you have to, every show that every has black show, people man. has to have African art? And I got mad, and I said, take it out, because it, it, it's just stereotypical. Just a guy. Like, but it's a black family. So what? Take it out. He's yes. just a guy from Newark. So they took it out, and then it kept getting back in. Like, every new oh wave God. of design would bring in, and I fought really hard to get it out of there. And then when Jerry Miner and, and uh, uh, Kim Hawthorne, who played the couple, walked into the apartment for the first time, they looked around and said, where's all the African stuff? <laughs> <laughs> How come there's no African uh, stuff? I just picture... <laughs> I thought I was doing this really great liberal thing. Yeah. Oh, and my God. So apparently you're wrong. You're no, like totally off, wrong. Totally off the mark. The Every, white people like, got to have African stuff. We're a black couple. This just goes to show you, uh, it's a bit of honesty moment. Yeah. When was the last time... You were in a black person's house. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> Deafening. I'm not even Deafening kidding. silence. That is a great question. I That's will give really you an answer. Yeah. It was an apartment in Central Islip when I lived there in 1972. Jeez, that's a long time ago. And I went up into uh, this, this kid's, it was a friend of mine that lived in the apartment complex over there in Central Islip, and uh, went into his house. And that was the last time I was in. I, so I have no idea what there uh, is in right. black people. How about this? Black... When was the last time a black person was in your apartment or house? Well, I've had black people in my house much more recently. But last black. Yeah, but you're person... Mexican. That's all. Yeah, that's you know, right. You're Apparently, right now, category. the alarm company's calling me. Holy <laughs> shit. <laughs> Jeez, I gotta go. I, I see it's a robbery <laughs> joke. I, I, it's a I, robbery. I, that's what we I encountered jokes. some really interesting racism because it was from very liberal people. I was in L.A. There's this place called Amoeba Records. And it's like the cool fun. Amoeba Records is very cool. Yeah, they're like, like the really, cool. really, you know, grunge and they're cool. A lot of LP. Yeah, you know, so. That's still cool. I go in there and I'm in the video section and, uh, you know, like, just like I'll Google myself every time I touch a computer, I go yeah, look, yeah. For, look for my stuff. And I made Pootie Tang, so I go look for it. And uh, it's in the black film section. And I'm looking through the black film section and it's every movie with a black person in it. 
It's not like movies about Afrocentric right, right. subjects. It's just anyone who's black is in that section, and they're not in the other sections. So it's like this ghetto of black movie. Just anybody who's black has to be sure. in that section. And so I went up wow. and asked the girl who, who works there who who does the curating mm -hmm. and she's this chick with nose rings and punky hair and i go you know that's really kind of racist you have like a ghetto you have like a black section in your video <laughs> and she's like and she turned red because the idea that she could be racist all that yeah, she's like oh really... no you, no look at me i'm look a at punk. me stop look, i'm in l.a stop. i'm a liberal chick here and i'm like you know if you're a black filmmaker and you make a drama you hope people will look through the dramas and just pick you know have the opportunity to pick you out of any drama why do you have to right be in the it's you know yeah and uh, she was like, well, I'm gay, and oh, no. oh, we have a gay section, and I'm glad. <laughs> like, so that what? Out. Like, what does that have to do with like, anything? And, like, black people have to be, like, gay people, yeah. but they need gay cinema and black cinema. Wow. That is anyway, real so liberal can thinking, be yeah. totally uh, racist. Let's go to respects. Brooklyn. Brooklyn, what's up? Hey, hello. Yeah, what's Janelle, up, Brooklyn? Hi. Let me say, first of all, your show is hilarious, and this is the very first time that I'm listening. Mm -hmm. I, I'm actually from the Caribbean, so um, I wanted to know, do you, um, I can't remember who said it, but you said that you could tell if I'm black yeah. or not. So I don't know, what do you think I am? <laughs> you're, you're kidding, right? You, you already this. said you're from the Caribbean. Yeah. But I would say um, you're... Uh, uh, you're light-skinned. Lighter-skinned, more, more Hispanic-looking. Hmm, Wow. I don't think so. I think she's very dark. Very dark? You yeah. think she's uh, very dark? No, no. Who said that? Who said that I'm light-skinned Hispanic? I, I said you're lighter skin and you look Hispanic. That's Anthony. Because I could tell by the way you talk, you hang out with a lot of Hispanic people. Oh, I do look Hispanic. I kind of have Hispanic well, friends, see? but I'm not Hispanic. I'm mixed. I'm... Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, wow. Well, but you got the black in, yeah? That's yeah, very obvious. Do. Yeah, baby. White people aren't calling their kids Janelle. <laughs> <laughs> That's another thing, yeah. Yeah, I think you have a thing. Just, just cut that L part off. Jan. Jan, right. <laughs> be Jan. Jane. You know, boring crap like that. <laughs> Wow, you guys are so stupid. It isn't funny. I was laughing. I was like, wow. I we was we like good stupid. We like being stupid. That's the good stupid. <laughs> yeah. we, we really don't want anyone to take us seriously. That's that, that's Amanda's problem. She thinks we're well, we're actually trying doctor, to get her, perhaps. She oh, yeah. She, 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 she really she, she really thinks we're trying to get attention. things done here on our yeah. show. We're yeah. just trying to make people laugh as they're stuck in traffic somewhere. All right, yeah. Janelle. All right, cool. It was fun. God damn it! Took Hi, Janelle. Three, it took three and a half hours to get the phones beyond lit. And now we got to go. Yeah. Well, guys. That's great. Yeah, I, I apologize for the Amoeba record story. I think it was pretty boring. No, I like <laughs> it. No, not at all. I was going to talk about Black Stars. You ever turn on Black Stars? It's Stars, Stars Network. It's one of those cable channels. And it's, and all, black. it's all black. But they kind of ran out of movies, so they push it. Yeah. They're like Pulp Fiction is there on Black, black Stars. Because oh it's like, God. yeah. The Samuel you remember Jackson's those McDonald's it. commercials for black people where oh, yeah. everybody's black, even like a mailman in the background who's out yeah. of focus? It's like, like what do you weird say? world. Mickey D's? Mickey D's! <laughs> where like every person is black. Is black. <laughs> <laughs> in like in the 70s, they did that. Yeah, remember? yeah. yeah. Uh, oh, God, we'll do, that's we'll, funny. You'd absolutely like notice. the white so. Maybelline commercial, then the black Maybelline commercial, and then yeah. the white Everyone's Coke, black, black Coke. Coke. Let's let uh, Pittsburgh say hi. Pittsburgh, what's up? What do you got for the show? I just want to say that what I learned on the open answer in the show today is you guys are terrible racist bigots, and I'm going to start waking up with Whoopi. Uh, all right, whatever. He ruined... Oh, I don't have my car crash. Yeah. I think the music is on. Louis C.K., thank you so thank much. Thank you. Uh, Lucky Louie on DVD, obviously. That's right. Please buy a Lucky Louie on DVD. It's doing well, right? Yeah, it is. You coming over to the um, F word uh, sure. portion of the show? Yeah, sure. All right, we're gonna Another go one. curse. So you we guys do the have same a great show. Day. We yeah. just use the F word a lot. Yeah. See you guys tomorrow. It's the Opie and Anthony Show. They are the most vile, despicable human beings in the country. Creeps, ankle biter. Uh, obviously, the strength is their ability to turn uh, mistruth into something people would believe. Wow, how long is this guy going to continue to babble and say nothing? All day long. Shut up. All right, here we go.
Welcome to the Opie and Anthony Show. It's worse than I imagined. That's terrible. I'm sorry. We are a bunch of dopes. I think we're lewd. And we're probably pushing 20 arrests because of this radio show. Out of touch, corn balls, three retards. We have the effect of town all PM. <laughs> Opie. Oh, I could have been a model. Anthony. I'm gay. James Norton. I like yogurt. Robert Reed. <laughs> but enough of this palaver. Let's get the show on the road. <laughs> All right, we're here at XM Satellite Radio with Louis C.K. Yep. We'll say it again, very excited. Louis C.K. is going to be doing the ONA Traveling Virus this summer. We should have the dates uh, soon, I guess. Soon. I think we're doing 8 yeah. to 10 uh, dates this year. There goes our summer. But yeah, Louis C.K. is right. definitely going to be with us. That's very, very good news. We found that out this morning. Mm -hmm. Going to be a pisser. And, you, and your wife wasn't impressed, you were saying? Yeah, I came home and I showed her all these offers, and it's mm -hmm. good. You guys are paying really good money. Like it's, I don't Take have a care of the comics. Uh, yeah, I don't have a TV job right now, so that's that's my income. Yeah. And I showed it to her, and she's like, yeah, great. So you're going out of town, leaving me with the kids. Yeah. I'm like, fuck you. you well, how much money do you make? <laughs> What are you pulling in uh, this week? Yeah. Would you rather <laughs> starve to death and fucking let the kids get skinny? You fucking <laughs> ungrateful cunt. <laughs> now, the only way who I know... Does, who doesn't listen she, to XM? She doesn't quite get the point that, you know, this is your job. You don't yeah, go uh, on... Yeah, and I'm remembering on, the phrase I was trying to remember. The separation of labor. Is that what it is? The division of labor contract right. has been thrown away mm, in marriage. Because I know where you're going to go with this, but i got to ask Louis C.K. Yeah, yeah. Like, uh, when you married your wife, you were already mm. in comedy, right? Yes, I was. So it's not like you were... Uh, I didn't spring it on her. No. <laughs> it wasn't like you were working for NASA, you had yeah. a nine to five job, uh -huh. you were coming home and she knew what she was getting into that you'd be there to raise yep. the kids. You, when you guys met, she knew you were a road comic. Yes. Yes. But so, the way it's not even that I go on the road. The point is that I enjoy my job. Right. So she thinks of it that because uh, it's not like I'm going out and slack. She wishes I was doing a miserable job, and then she would be proud of me you'd come home for go, debasing oh. myself oh, yeah. in order to put a roof over the head. But the fact that I do something that I'm proud of that I love doing, and I, but it still puts a roof over the head, but because women's liberation... That because there are women that have careers, we're yep. not allowed to say that we are providers anymore. If you're yeah. a man, but the fact is, my wife lives off of my fucking work and doesn't do shit. <laughs> so if she had a career, then she could go, yeah, fuck you with your open Anthony tour. I don't care. I'm I'm working too. Yeah, I got my but money. But the fact is, she just eats food that I buy for her. But I'm not allowed to point that out, or else I'm a male chauvinist. Like I'm, I'm being a like backwards pig by pointing out uh, the fact, which is that if I stop doing these fun tours where I might get blown by a whore or two, <laughs> that that she can't eat, that she can't eat anything because if she tried to start making a, she's worthless. She has no oh sense of. God. She she couldn't. She could never support our house. She There's couldn't no, do it. If no, we switched places, it would like some dumb sitcom. You're right. Uh, the kids would be very happy with me because I'm good at taking care of the kids. You'd and be the fun guy hanging around. And the my house. wife would be unable to fucking yeah hold she, down the job. She's never done it. Really. She worked at a Chinese restaurant for one week. And the wait, the the woman who owned it, this Chinese woman, said to her, uh, "How come you so slow?" Oh And she no. said, "Cause I'm busy." How many tables do you have? And she said, "I have three tables." And she said, "I think you may be no be waitress." And she oh, fired her. Wow. That's how you get fired in Asian. Yeah. By the way, I think you no be. I think you may be no be waitress. You may be no be waitress. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> I had uh, I I came from you know the working world where I actually worked for a living, mm -hmm. and uh, I can assure you, it sucks ass. Yeah, no, me, it I, is I, the I worst. I, I fix cars thing. for a living. Yeah. it's very All hard. Right. It's real work. It's yeah. hard work. It's you're, you're you're scrutinized in what you do by your boss, and it's not like we're scrutinized here. We were scrutinized, but for some reason. As long as we're doing okay, we have the ability to kind of turn around and say, go fuck yourself to our own yeah. boss. Yeah. What fucking job 
offers that perk. No, except it's amazing. stupid entertainment. Yeah, exactly. Like even you know television and radio, it's the same thing. It's like well, as it's long you as you're doing leverage. all right, yeah, you got the leverage. It's because you have the leverage. It's not for nothing. It's because without you, there's nothing to sub- nothing on the air. Because he because yeah. your boss can't do. Here's the thing. I worked as a mechanic. And if I, I got fired because I sucked at it. He just does, he just does your job yeah, until so, he finds someone so else. So my right. boss does my job. You can step in and do it. That's it. But your bosses, if they nah. put it, um, hello? Uh, Hi, the, hello. You normally would hear the Opie and Anthony show and their <laughs> hijinks at this time. <laughs> yes. Now you listening to me until I could find a <laughs> yes. proper uh, replacement. Yeah. That's why you get to say fuck you to your boss. That's yeah. why baseball God, players can great. be assholes. Because right. they, they, I, I can't play baseball. Yeah, what? Joe, yeah. Torrey's George, all, yeah. Joe Torrey's all of a sudden going to go out and, uh, you know, play shortstop yeah <laughs> but so it, it, it is odd because i don't even know if those guys are saying you know go fuck yourself to mm-hmm. you know steinbrenner well they're saying something like that asking for stupid amounts of yes. money or yeah. they get amounts of money yeah. that's the well version of go fuck yourself and cheating and not admitting me. it and, yeah, it, it might only be radio because if you do that in sports they sit you they find you they do all sorts mm-hmm. of disciplinary yeah. actions yeah but we've never had to sit out a day because we told our bosses no tell the boss themselves no. and it's just the fuck holes. up like you don't know what you're talking about. Shut up. Yeah. That's Imagine right. like you're you're in the even if you're just a regular you're in the cubicle and you mm-hmm. know you just signed the big Peterson deal. Mm-hmm. You know, and you 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 know, the boss is happy as mm-hmm. and he walks up and says, hey, that's great. You know, you did a good job. And you go, you know something? I'm sick of your shit. Go fuck yourself. <laughs> You think he's going to go, well, at least you signed the deal. Yeah, he's going to go, yeah, exactly. Ex- excuse me? Yeah. What did you say to yeah. me? But in in radio, television, yeah, as long as you're up, the, but but th- that turns on a dime too. See, yes. in the cubicle, if you lost the Peterson account yeah. and you're working on another one, you're not going to get your ass thrown out the door that day. Yeah, you were uh, trained. You know? They spent time. Putting yeah, you in they, the they job. Put, you, they'll just make sure you know you as long as you're coming in and working and doing a good job, you're okay. Yeah. TV and radio, the next day is like, <laughs> oh, by the way, you're fucking out of here. <laughs> yeah, Bye. Yeah. Uh, do I get two weeks? Do I get no? No. No. no as no. a matter of fact, we're not even going to acknowledge you existed. Yeah. Yeah. It's Stalinism <laughs> here. You didn't exist. No. You're expunged from any record of ever existing. Oh, just one. Get very, the fuck out. Very, and we, and we yeah. can't get enough of this business. Yeah, what the fuck? Let's go to Doug in Minnesota. Doug, Doug what's ours? Morning, boys. Good morning, I Doug. If, uh, I wonder if uh, Louis C.K. has heard uh, about the sparkling wiggles. Oh, have you heard the sparkling wiggles no, yet? What's that? The oh, video? my God. I saw the video like 18 times over the weekend. I, I couldn't stop watching it. We, we can't play it on the first half of the show. We tried. but It's uh, a young child. And uh, she's a girl. She's about, uh, how old would you say, two, maybe? Yeah, tops. Tops. Oh, my God. And adorable. Just adorable. Mm -hmm. And she's sitting in a little chair. And she can't say sparkling wiggles. It comes out different than it's supposed to. So the parents kind of coax her by saying, um, hey, uh, boy, there's too many sparkling wiggles at this party. And the kid will repeat it. Getting the words kind of mixed up, and it's just. Why don't you just play it? All right. I don't know what this would be. Oh yeah. Okay, that's enough. Okay, say it now. We don't have foggy niggles. Say too many sparkling wiggles at the party. It's too so many foggy niggles at the party. <laughs> say no, no sparkling wiggles here. No foggy niggles here. Say get a job, sparkling wiggle. Get a job, foggy niggles. <laughs> I fucking oh my God. I, I can't get enough of that. Uh, oh my oh, God. The kid is just adorable. The kid's as cute as a button. Oh and my the God. mother should be shot. The way she sounds. Oh my God, that's terrible. The little kid is just, and she's so enthusiastic. The parents are interacting and playing with her and and talking to her. And the kid couldn't be any whiter. I mean, look at this. Oh, now, a little Aryan. Little Aryan with her ponytail. Just uh, doesn't know what Uh, she's saying. And look at that fat white hand that holds the thing up to her. You you know what? You know Uh. what? The most disgusting part of that whole thing is, is the mother. Because the kid's the kid. The kid's just trying to say sparkling yeah. wiggles and has a problem. Doesn't mm-hmm. know anything. Mm-hmm. The kid is innocent and blameless. The mother, the, you could hear this fucking disdain uh, in her voice. She's yeah. like, get a job. <laughs> she might as well just say, get a job, fucking nigger. Yeah. Just say it. Just say what you're fucking just saying. Say Don't get your kid to say it because she can't talk right because she's a kid. But she's just like, get a oh, job, man. Sparkling wiggles. Oh uh, don't want sparkling wiggles in my house. Oh my I almost God. ran into a sparkling fucking wiggle today. They're, like, she gets way too into it. Oh, my God. Way too into it. As do I, because I can't get enough of it. One more time, please. All right. One more <laughs> I time. Gotta hear Play it, it again. Play it again. 
Uh, Louie, does your kid say, you know, cute little things? <laughs> she just comes out and says, nigger. She hates black people. There you go. My kid hates black people. Okay, that's not. Okay, say it now. We don't hate foggy niggers. See, too many sparkly wiggles at the party. It's so many foggy niggers at the party. Say, no, no sparkling wiggles here. No foggy niggles here. Say, get a job, sparkling wiggle. Get a job, foggy niggles. Yeah, you can hear it on her. Yeah, she hits the, the mom with voice. her with her Yeah, she's ring. like, mmm, it was her engagement. <laughs> get a job. Get a sparkling, job. Get a wiggle. job. Sparkling. Yeah. But what else can we say about them people? I wonder how mm-hmm. Amanda's enjoying this part of the program. <laughs> yeah, she must be loving this. Yeah. Ah, it's just jokes, making people laugh. You know, That's if it was a joke or Sparkling something. wiggles. Hey, um, well... Uh, at this point, people oh. know that XM and Sirius are uh, attempting a merger. I guess uh, Mel Carmen, who's going to be the new boss of the new company, right? They don't know if they're going to change the name or, or. He would be the CEO. The CEO, sure. Yes, the, the guy CEO. that pretty much runs the new company. They don't know if they're going to keep uh, the little doggy name or or keep the Thank XM you. name or, ju- or, or just, just come up with a new name. Up. But the fact is, Mel will be. Uh, now, how running. come him and not the XM guy? Because uh, well, Mel's the so. money guy. See, over the years uh, at Viacom and uh, building Infinity Broadcasting years ago and CBS Radio Division, and he was always the guy that the, was uh, Wall Street sweetheart. Uh-huh. He was the guy that when Mel spoke, people uh, listened. Um, uh, he hit his numbers. Uh, really motivated his um, salespeople and his general managers through tyranny, mind you. But, mm-hmm. you know, they were fucking motivated. Sure. And uh, so he would be the logical choice to put in that money position. And Wall Street loves the guy. Yeah, Wall Street loves All him. that stuff. Uh, the thing is, he uh, his personality is a bit caustic. Mm-hmm. And I say it's that. It's all business. Because I might no, have to work for him. There's no how you do's. Yeah. None whatsoever. Haven't reached the point where we can tell this boss to fuck off yet. <laughs> Wait, so wait, is he your boss? Not yet, not no, yeah. well, and, and, to be. Well, 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 he used to be our boss. He, yeah. he was the guy. Or infinity or wherever. He, he the, fired us. We spent years trying to figure out who exactly fired us for the Sex with Sam thing, mm-hmm. and uh, I've heard on many occasions that it was Mel Carmes and himself that fired us. Right. And so we don't know where we stand with this guy, and uh, we mm-hmm. haven't talked to him in four or five years. Right. No reason to. Um... There is a famous quote where he, <laughs> the conference room, another time when he was supposed to fire us but decided not to. Yeah, and he asked you these weird questions mm-hmm. that no human that no could answer? possibly answer. It's like the troll that stands by the bridge yeah. or something, and or the guy that demands money to get across the bridge. Or, and, but you got to you got to answer a question properly, and there's mm-hmm. no right answer. Uh, he asked us once. And now realize he's the the top of the top. This is kind of the boss you can't tell to go fuck himself. Yeah, and he. He asked us, what time of the morning do you wake up and decide, I'm going to fuck Mel Carmison? <laughs> so you, you, you go, wait, there's, there's no answer to no, that. No, there's no, Cause I it's don't. Not, it's not an, a question of do you or don't you say, I'm going to fuck Mel Carmison. He wants to know the time of day. That's the answer. 10 o'clock, 12 o'clock. It's a time of day question. And, but I know he, you're fucking me. And then you can't even say, Why look. is he asking that? It, what does he do with that information? Because like, he's going to call you. If you say 10, does he say, well, yeah. then you know what? I'm going to call you at 945. Right. <laughs> and ask no. you not to fuck me. Please don't fuck me today. Because I know what time you fuck me. <laughs> and you can't even say, look, we didn't mean to fuck you. And yeah, I don't fuck you. Oh, really? Oh, really? that way. No, because then that insults his question. Right, right. Yeah. Because he, why would I ask what time? Because I already know you're fucking me. So don't try to say you're not fucking me. The guy wow. is like, you can't answer. And I've heard this from general managers and That's stuff. That's like a pickup line. Right. Yeah. Like, hey, what's like time saying that to a girl at a bar? What, what time not? did you wake up and decide you're going to suck my dick tonight? <laughs> well... He wants a time. He doesn't, <laughs> he wants a I guess time. I have to do it, Jeez. but I, guess, I could put it off for 24 hours. Oh, fuck but, this guy. By the way, uh, this OCD people out there, they can't handle uh, any more of the show until we do this. Meanwhile, back at the show. So oh, no wow. Guy. <laughs> wow, that was the longest midget sighting ever. <laughs> we never did the out cue. Oh, these guys got the OCD <laughs> bad. Bastards. Oh. Like, I can't. It's something doesn't seem right. <laughs> you never ended the midget sighting earlier. So, so yeah, Mel's uh, the CEO uh, no. over there. Could yeah. be the CEO of both companies if the deal goes through, which, I don't know. I'm hearing a lot of things. It's, it's Federal gonna regulation easy. is going to be a real fucking nightmare to try to get through. It's because it's too big of a company? Is that the thing? Yeah, they don't want a monopoly, but yeah. uh, the, the new entity's point of view would be 
It's not a monopoly because we're competing with iPods, regular yeah. radio, all kinds of new internet, internet technology radio. that's coming out now. So it's not a monopoly. But in the contract that yeah, was but written... That, that doesn't make sense because that means that regular radio mm -hmm. could be one company and say, well, right. we're competing Everything with... Everything could be one company. Yeah. You're competing with everything. We're competing with it the food. Yeah. <laughs> you know, people we're could eat it. or listen to... <laughs> eat, listen, put their food in their ears. Yeah. There's always a, an option here. Yeah. <laughs> and, it, and it's a known fact that Mel very, very tight with Howard. Yeah. If he does have a friend in this world, it would be Howard Stern. Mm -hmm. But um, the FCC, ha it's written in the contract before satellite radio even came about, when they were talking about launching the satellite. Mm -hmm. They said there has to be two companies. And it was written in there that these two companies cannot merge. They are not allowed to merge. Yeah. Uh, so so they have to change all that around, which means Mel has to sit now in front of a commission um, mm -hmm. that is uh, run by the FCC. Last time he did that, which was not that long ago, he was pretty much calling the FCC a bunch of assholes. Yeah. <laughs> uh, now the same people have to sit there, and he's going to go, hey, by the way, assholes, could I put these companies <laughs> together? You know the rule thing? Could we change that? And a lot of people are now worrying that the FCC might say, okay. We'll allow you to do that. Well, Here's gonna, our side. We're going to change some rules. We yeah, want to regulate. We're going to want to regulate. regulate it. Yep. Now, what do you do? Do you merge the companies, take it, and then put it back now where radio is? Because you know you can make money selling commercials. Do you yeah. do? You know, it's it's, it's a be, weird situation. I think that's what will happen. It's going to yeah, be an interesting week in... Uh, it's gonna because be an interesting, they'll make money that way. It's going to be an interesting week in Washington. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and then after that, it's going to take months and months for them to even decide if they can do it. And then I don't get though. Like do, I have, I have XM in exactly. my car. Logistics. What the fuck do now, I do now that you've got a fucking problem? It's just stupid. Logistically, I mean, it's tough. Even if everyone says yes, there's G GM. Let's say GM Ford, the two big ones. Yeah. GM has XM. Ford's got Sirius. Yeah. What do you do now? Uh, I don't have... It's not like the early days where I had a little unit Velcroed to a dashboard yeah. stuck into the cigarette lighter. This fucking thing is built into my navigation system. I can't be ripping things out no. you know, and putting them in. W are they starting over again at, with all new units? The whole thing they is stupid because... They can't make each one adaptable. It's like I can take the radio I had as a kid, the radio I listened to uh, Steely Dan on, right. and plug it in and I'm going to hear it on. whatever the fuck I want. That's it. on now. It's going to work. But this is well, they, stupid. I now. mean, in the end, they got a lot to work out. It's going to take a really long time to really get this new company mm -hmm. up and running in, in, in the way that, uh, that they're going to be happy with. Yep. Uh, but Mel was on Howard's show today, and uh, I don't know. I don't know. I, he has a real confidence boost in our position. Yeah, th th there's a reason we love being on, on XM and away from Howard. Because we don't have to deal with these two fucking m motherfuckers. Wow. That's why. Wow. Yeah, I'll say it. See, Fan and Opie. In Mel's world, <laughs> in Mel's world, there's Howard and then, and there's everybody else. There's yeah. no room for anybody to even come close to what he's doing. Nope. He, he doesn't know how to work a farm system and really, you know, show respect with other, with other radio shows out there. So, in a way, it's been great to be at XM because we've been the top dogs and, and shown respect and they build a studio for us and really treat us nice. You know, mm -hmm. a lot of advertising in the end. Everyone else is second fiddle over there. Yeah. Everyone else is second fiddle. And to see, you know, shows that used to beat the shit out of each other, like fucking Bubba is over there with Howard, and there's a love fest. They're all kissing each other's ass. And he gets zero respect. Not that he should get right. any. But, uh, you know, you think Mel fucking gives him the time of day? Mel, Mel owes Howard, and Howard owes Mel each of their careers. Yeah, God bless them. They 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 did a lot together. Howard was doing uh, his thing at NBC. He got fired. He was pretty much persona non grata at a lot of companies. They didn't want to mm -hmm. touch him. Mel had this young upstart, Infinity Broadcasting, decides to put Howard on. They both made a fucking fortune with each other over the years. Yep. So they do owe each other a certain amount of loyalty. Uh, the thing is, no one else fits in that picture. No one. No one. Uh, on the talent side... No one fits in Howard's picture because his ego is so fucking big, he won't allow it. And on the business end, no one fits in Mel's picture because he's got Howard. Yeah. Uh, it's all he really needs. 
uh, to, uh, to and, make and he, him some money. And he wants to make sure he keeps Howard happy. We, yeah, by we keeping worked, Howard happy is making everyone else second fiddle. We worked for the same company company for many years, and it, the stuff that went on was just beyond Yeah, this isn't speculation. Let me make that clear. I'm not speculating. We fucking lived this nightmare. We, this is exactly what happened to us. It's they silly, get, though, because the point of merging companies is to get twice the value. Right, so at half why, the cost. Why, yeah. Well, Louis, yep. what, what would be the... There was, there was a time we went, uh, they threw us a bone, they gave us uh, uh, VIP passes to the Video Music Awards, mm -hmm. MTV, and we were had our own special position on the red carpet so we could mm -hmm. get all these guys. This was when we were deciding if we were going to re-up with them or something, or we yeah, just, just before, or we just re-upped with them, so they were throwing us a bone, like, no, you guys are very important to the company. Mm -hmm. So then we did our show, and we, uh, we weren't in the pit with the rest of the press. We had our own section, so we got um, just about everyone while everyone else had a fight for a quick little 10-second mm -hmm. interview. And then uh, our show's over. We're going inside to enjoy the festivities. And our company had a private booth to watch the, the award. At the, at the time, Viacom owned um, MTV. the radio division. This is when they you were on MTV. Uh, before yeah. Yeah. Yep. here. And yeah. they, the Viacom owned CBS uh, yeah. radio division. It was right. Infinity Broadcasting at the time. And it, Viacom owned MTV. Right. Uh, so it's all the same boss. This is a yeah. great example, though. So we're like, hey, why don't we go up into the Viacom booth? The Viacom had a party wars, going on. Huge party with champagne and shrimp as big as your fist mm -hmm. and oysters mm -hmm. and what drinks on us, everything. It was just like they went all out. So we had nice, stupid us. We're assuming we work for the same company, and we just did a nice broadcast outside. We go upstairs, and, and we're like, why don't we go check that out for and, for a minute or two? Have a drink, say hi, because we know a lot of the people, obviously. We get to the door, and we tell them who we are. They're like, ah, oh, yeah, you're not on the list. You can't, you can't come, come in. <laughs> and then we found out why, though, too. We found when, out. Uh, what's his name from BCN came out? Oh, uh, yeah. Yeah, I won't rat him. I don't want to blow up his spot. But he came, but, he came out. But and we're said like, that. what do you mean? And then we're thinking this guy just is stupid. Like, yeah. s stop. So we were able to uh, send. Uh, I think it was Ben at the time. Uh, <laughs> ben went in. We're like, could this guy go in and get one of the bosses? And and so Ben goes in and brings out this guy from the Boston uh, radio stations. Mm -hmm. And we're like, what's going on? He goes, dude, you guys are not allowed. In not there allowed in there because Howard's, Howard's in, in there. there. Oh, Jesus. Yeah, we couldn't even fucking and, go into a party. And Mel was in there, and of mm. course he oversees this whole thing, and he thought it was uh, perfectly fine to treat us like second-class yeah. citizens. Yeah. So that's kind of that's, what we're expecting. And, and that's, one yeah. of just, that's one of many examples. That's stupid, we were never, you, make, yeah. you make the money. You have. Dude, we were, yeah. we were never business. treated right under him. You know, yeah. he 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 uh, he hired us and then rehired us to keep no. us away from competing with Howard. That was it. That was his game plan for us as a business guy. Mm -hmm. But as far as, like, treating us and making us feel good about where we we were it never really happened yeah. not that we need our egos stroked but you, <clears throat> but you definitely want to at least uh, feel like you could walk into a a big vip event at the sure. mtv music Awards. yeah when you're making the money I yeah mean, we're definitely making money for them yeah. and we make money for xm they uh they definitely enjoy us being here but mel was on howard uh talked a little bit and obviously <clears throat> Well, Our situation came up. Yeah, and this is what's scary. The merger talk has started. It's been about a week now, I guess. Mm -hmm. I think it was a week ago today. And uh, mm -hmm. Mel hasn't even acknowledged us yet. But he hasn't has, acknowledged but us. He, but he's acknowledged everything else that is uh, that's going well for XM. Right. And this is this is what's really interesting and really telling. Mm -hmm. uh, you ask anybody down in Washington, 202 is one of the most listened to channels on XM. Mm -hmm. Brings in uh, the most money for XM. Mm -hmm. But when um, you know Mel talked about XM and the programming and sent out a massive email to the staff over there. Not even a hint no, of a, a mention, mention of us. Yeah. And then he goes on Howard's show and um, pretty much describes our situation. Yeah. He's talking about us. Uh, and, and Howard's already starting his uh, bullying tactics. Yeah. Of, uh, you know, uh, you, you know uh, should these guys have a job, pretty much, is what's being said. I don't care, quite frankly. No. And by the I don't care, meaning I don't care. You know, we say when you say I don't care, it means you really care. Look, we're I so really don't care. <laughs> <laughs> we're at a point in our careers. What what are we gonna do? Worry yeah. about this crap? I mean, we yeah. you know we speak our minds, and if the, if he, if he wants us uh, part of the new company, so be it. Uh, Slim in Jersey City, what's up? 
Guys, please don't talk like that, man. I don't want you guys off the radio for this jerk, man. I'm, I'm thinking like they might be in cahoots. Howard has enough money, I'm thinking. Now, I'm, I'm, you know, I don't know what you guys know, but I'm thinking Howard has enough money that he's so envious of are you guys' success that, that he's like, you know what, even if it costs me the money I made, I'm not going to let these guys get ahead of me, which you already are. I, I want an answer, though, because it's been a week. He avoids our names at every cost. I want someone to ask him. You know what? What does the future hold for the Opie and Anthony show if these two companies yeah, merge? There you go. And if I and if there's no future for us, then let's uh, negotiate an exit strategy now. I ain't gonna sit around for a year and then get you know uh, uh, fired after that. I need a golden parachute, goddammit. it! Uh, one of those businessmen things where they let you go and then give you a shitload of money. <laughs> That's all I care about, <laughs> money. Well, this is. Uh, this is uh, Howard and the gang having a lot of a little bit of fun. I mean, it's a little very, fun. It's very, very telling, though. I like how they're trying to be vague as to who they're talking about. Yeah, they don't mention us by name, but it's very obvious uh -huh. that it's us. Uh, the, the different, the more different our content is, the better it is. I agree. And I just never saw any advantage of sharing uh, terrestrial radio. Well, then content. there are some people on the up. See, sharing terrestrial. <laughs> Sharing terrestrial radio, they're, they're talking about us. Because we're, we're the only ones doing it, by the way. We're the only ones that are on uh, satellite and, and regular radio. Yeah. Yeah. So this thing that's running rampant, uh, Mel, this terrestrial and XM uh, radio crossover. That, uh, oh, you mean the one show that's doing it? <laughs> yeah. Why be so vague? <laughs> Just fucking say who you're talking about. God. And I'm, uh, I'm, I'm and it's weird that they're not saying it because he, they, mm. he, they talk about you guys. Yeah, I'm, yeah. I mean, on I've, on Howard, they oh, say Mel, your name. You know why? Because Mel's in the fucking room. Right. So there's something. They clam up. There's, yeah. there's an issue with Mel. So I don't have the energy, unfortunately, to go after these guys today. I'm sick. <laughs> but this this clip kind of uh, <clears throat> rages me. The bullshit. It's annoying. All right, let's let's get it through it. It doesn't make sense because it's apples and oranges with you guys to me. Yeah, it's two, two very completely different well, shows. Well, guess what, Louis? Back two in the day, values. that's stupid. Us, we thought the same thing. Yeah. We weren't even competing against Howard. We I were in afternoons. To me, like you, we were in yeah. afternoons, and he was in mornings. We just, yep. You know, what? everyone asks, how did this whole thing start? Where you guys hated him? It was really simple. We came to New York and started goofing on him like we goofed on Imus and everybody else, well, like every other, like, every other New York mm -hmm. person. Personality, whether it's radio, the mayor, we goofed on Mayor Giuliani, we just goofed on everybody. Dude, we didn't, it's our mo. We didn't come into New York doing that though. We when we first came in, we even said uh, well, it would be stupid props. to go after Howard. You don't come right into New York with both barrels blazing right, on right, the Howard right. Stern show. You don't do it because people, Howard's fans, will turn around and go, "Fuck you! Who are these assholes?" Delete your life. Make make a name for yourself first. Give the people content that they find funny or interesting, and then slowly start pointing out some of his hypocrisies and uh, make him a caricature of himself, kind right. of you know, with the impression thing. But that's what point I mean. Out. That's and the then first slowly, thing. even his fans will go like, "Holy shit, he does do that. That's funny." That's what I'm trying to say, though. We were, yeah, it was all just goofing. We, it was we, goofing. There was nothing even serious about it. We were just yeah. having fun with. I would know, listen fun with to his... the, who didn't listen to the guy's show. I grew up on Long Island. I'm gonna lie and say I never heard of him. I'd listen to his show. I found it yeah. very funny. Uh, Billy West, those years that Billy West was on, with a golden fucking era of that broad yeah. of that that mm -hmm. show, it was amazing. I was on his fucking show. Are you on a Christmas show? Are you vying for a job? Uh, yeah. <laughs> so please, if you're listening. <laughs> I'm just saying, but that's how bad but, it had to get. But for me to tell it to be like, hold on, fucking hey, this guy turned. But where it did turn was the fact that he couldn't handle that we were goofing on him. Right. And then we said, you know what? Now, now it's like uh, we're taking the gloves off. Now we're gonna have some fun. Because he didn't goof back on the air. He went mm -hmm. to the bosses and told the bosses, "Hey, shut these motherfuckers up. Yeah. I don't want them goofing on me." It's like, wait, this is the guy that like. But you always say on the air that you just take on all comers mm -hmm. and and you beat up this show and this show and. The, but now, you know, we're supposed to shut up because you told the boss. Right. And that was like one of those, oh, boy. Yeah. So this this is what the business and, is like. Yeah. <laughs> and it was kind of scary because Mel just never understood our position on that. I'm like, you know, he's going to destroy us. Yeah. Our listeners are going to see right through it. You know, we're not going to talk about him because we're not allowed to? Yeah. Are you I kidding watched, me? I watched him destroy shows, you know, or listened to him on the air destroy shows. Oh, we discussed because that. The, because the other jocks that he was talking about were told... You know what the best strategy is? You know, just don't say a word. Don't mention them. Don't talk back. Oh, 
everyone's listening to him, <laughs> and you're cl he's calling me an asshole, and I'm supposed to just sit here and you know fucking toot a wacky horn and make like nothing's happening. Right. No, you fight fucking back. You throw back fucking howitzer rounds at the guy. Mm -hmm. And when we did that, that's when we got into trouble. Yum. And Mel never ex understood that, unfortunately. But well, that's where we got in a lot of trouble. And that's where the fuck so, Mel Karmazin came into play because he, us goofing on Howard, was his fucking, number one guy, yeah, was him over. directly fucking him over. But mm -hmm. our, our logic was if you're that great of a radio personality, this should be nothing. It's nothing. This yeah. should be like swatting at a fly. Like it's just kind of a nuisance. But you get rid of You, you know, either you don't rid of talk it. about us at all or, or you just call us fucking douchebags, mm -hmm. point out our own hypocrisies, whatever you want to do. There are plenty of solutions. But, but Howard finally admitted that it was hurting him. And, yeah. his, and his uh, and his uh, what well, position I guess. Yes, yeah, so he went to Mel. So, but now uh, Mel is talking to Howard. Uh, this merger thing. Uh, so I I don't know. Uh, they don't mention our name, but they allude to allude. They directly talk uh, talk about us without mentioning our names. And uh, Mel's got some ideas. And I it's guess. been a week, and they've uh, discussed this merger at length. All sorts mm -hmm. of people. People have mentioned us in a lot of the articles, but Mel is just like not even acknowledging that we're doing a show over here. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so uh, you know, we don't feel too good about it right now. We'd like uh, we'd like to see what the plans are. You know, something he, like you said, he's mentioned every other uh, thing that's on this platform, except uh, us. Yeah. Well, Mel. What are your intentions? I want to know right now. Yeah. So that uh, me and Opie can, yeah, get the fuck out. Because if we're going to have to work under a guy that's going to either boot our ass out the door or treat us like se second-class citizens, we don't want to do that. Well, if they I want out. If they merge, then you, it's all bets are off with all the contracts, right? You get to... I think the contracts... Yeah, the contracts are still good. Yeah. But... Uh, and Mel, I, I'll, I, I'll give him this much. Mel is always... Uh, uh, Honored contracts over the years. Yeah, yeah. He's not one to, you know, to rip up a contract or try to legally get out of it or wrangle some way like that. But, uh, you know, because, you know, you know, when we did the Sex for Sam thing, they could probably <laughs> figure out some way out of our contract. But mm -hmm. he just, he acknowledged the contract. He but did, I don't want to sit and uh, sit out a, a fucking contract no, no. if we're going to be treated like shit. Right, well, I want to know what the fuck's going on. Well, Mike from Friday Morning Quarterback, he listens every day. Let's start there, Mike. You could, you could quote us from today's show. We yeah. want to know... What our position is. He was new company. He's talking on the Howard Stern show this morning. We came up. It's obvious they were talking about us. There's no other show doing both. And from Mel's answer, doesn't quite make me feel welcome. No. And yeah. I want to know what the deal is so we can either, you know, move on uh, and be excited about this and do a show or get the fuck out and start, uh, you know, working on getting the fuck out of this. Right. That's it. All right. Well, here's... Uh it's only a minute, but this is the little conversation they it's a have. a minute with a 20-minute fucking and the Howie <laughs> whip by us <laughs> for a minute of audio. And the, God damn it. And the Howie kiss ass just uh, just laughing and laughing yeah. and having fun with this. Oh, Howard. You know, someone that has done absolutely nothing in radio. Uh, the, the different, the more different our content is, the better it is. I agree. And I just never saw any advantage of sharing uh, terrestrial radio. Well, then content. there are some people on the other Open service Anthony, Anthony. who are, you know, Open they're Anthony. available Open everywhere. And, and by the way, you know, Robin, if you take a look at um, the way we work, um, alongside of your um, satellite radio, so you have an, if, if you have a factory installed one, you have an AM button, an mm -hmm. FM button, and a satellite button. Uh, you don't need to duplicate right. what's right. on AM and FM radio. But what would you right. do with those contracts then, of all the the, the things that are duplicated? Well, if, if the merger, he uh, would uh, uh, get rid of them. Howard would know because huh? that's wishful thinking on Howard's part. Yeah, they would uh, get rid of them. Well, oh boy, see right there goes to show you how welcome we'll fucking be. Yes, there's right. the welcome wagon right there. There you go. And about the whole point that uh, Mel makes about uh, there's an AM button, FM button, and a satellite button. Yeah. And so you don't need duplicates. One is advertising the other on the other. Like the the reason we really jumped up with satellite is because we went to terrestrial. Right. And vice versa. The reason people listen to us on terrestrial is because their friends told them about us on satellite. Like, we, made, we made an amazing deal with regular radio. They yeah. needed us that bad because David Lee Roth fucked up. Yeah. They were desperate. 
But each Every company... Every day we're turning on new people to XM because we're allowed to do a commercial for our show. Like, wow, these guys are funny and they actually do more after they leave here? I get Isn't emails all the time from people going, I, I now have XM because, uh, mm -hmm. you know, what I've heard on the regular radio station. Yeah. Isn't it the same thing, too, that Howard's on E... And then also on radio, and yeah, what about that? Do, and he'll also do pay per view. He's also got on and there's yeah, on, on demand, demand thing, pay per view. There's some kind of computer thing. There's so, you know, there's so other everybody's things. got different. Pro that that would that would be like saying that he shouldn't be on demand because he's on E on regular broadcast television. Yeah, I mean it doesn't. Whatever, whoever there, will have you exactly. be on there. Right. There's, there's also <laughs> no. It's no secret that there's uh, no love lost between CBS, Howard, and Mel. You know. They're not going to want to have to work with us if we are also if we have a relationship, which they w means they'll have to have a relationship with CBS Radio. This right. is this is a company that sued Howard uh, right. for for you know I don't I don't know how much money, but the original was a lot of fucking money, three hundred yeah. million dollars or something, for talking so much about Sirius before he went over there. Right. Uh, now Mel is going to have to sit and hammer deals out. Between uh, CBS because of us, yeah. he's not going to want to do that. Something, yeah. something's going to give. Obviously, well, something's going to yeah, give. It's not going to just stay the same. No, I don't know what no, it is. No, we might get kicked off regular radio. We might get kicked off satellite radio. <laughs> but something, something significant we'll is going to change. We will see. By the way, yes, Ron and Fez do what we're doing. Yes, relax. You're not acknowledging that Ron and Fez are also on regular radio. All right, here's the rest. Oh my God! Will you just would stop? you wait? Wait, 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 wait. I, I, I gotta <laughs> tell you to shut the fuck up, you dumbass fuck. Ron and Fez do both. Do they do it at the same time? Is their XM show on uh, regular radio? Is it? Is their uh, regular radio show also simulcast on XM? Is it? Is it? No. Is it? Anyone? Anyone? No. 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 Thank you. That's the answer. Who was that dumb fuck? Well, what was his name? Uh, there's some feedbacks flying by. I don't know. Well, you are now banned. I will hunt you down and ban uh, you. Of course I won't. I don't even have that no, power. No. I'll just say that. No. Makes Why would you spend uh, hunting him? I wouldn't even hunt him down. No. Why do I care? No. J I'm Josh, hungry. Josh. Hunt down food. <laughs> Josh from North Carolina, a dude from Philly. I, it came in a lot. We understand. It's, it's not the same thing, you dummy. You dummy. All right, let's get past We the... do three hours. That's fucking simulcast. Well, here's how. That's the fucking thing. Here's Howard's yeah. wishful thinking again. Hey, right. what's right. on AM and FM radio? But what would you right. do with those contracts, then, of all the, the, the things that are duplicated? Well, if, if the merger... He would uh, uh, approve, get rid of them. Uh, <laughs> nice. <laughs> Howard would know, because we've had some experience with other broadcasters who decide they want to change contracts. <laughs> Okay. Uh, in my experience has been that uh, you honor contracts, mm -hmm. and obviously well, any course. deals that were done, you would just continue to uh, honor. And then as you went forward, you'd make a decision as to whether or not it made sense or not. Great. So he's saying that he's going to honor it then. So honor the contract, and, and then, then as we go forward, we'll see if it makes sense or not. Well, here's what is that when the contract expires? Here's see the if problem. You th get thrown out the door. Mm -hmm. I believe when the merger uh, goes through officially, we'll have way less than a year left on our contract. So yeah, yeah, I don't think that's, that's an issue. That's scary. It's going right. to gonna take so long anyway. That you know, the other thing to consider is that at the same time as they're acting a certain way because Mel's in the room, he's yeah. acting a certain way because he's in Howard's room because he's on the air. He's on the air, so he's got to talk. Because so yeah, the not thing is, you guys, it's just money. It's all just money. Absolutely. So you guys make the money. You're going to stay, or it's somebody, or somebody oh, else. Will have you know it. what? I mean, who gives a but, shit? But we're also going to have the opportunity to stay or leave too. Is what I'm yeah. getting at. And I, I don't want to sit there if what, we're going to be shit on no. all the time. I'm not going to fight. In the same fucking situation where we're at any W, where no one nice acknowledges us. You see how yeah. nice this is? And really, it's like. There's no one fucks with us. Yep. This is fucking golden, this place. Right. We come in here, we're able to do our show without being fucking pecked at and told what we can or can't do on a daily basis. We run, we have our run-ins every so often. We come up with a bit and we're told we can't do it and it aggravates us and stuff. But we move on and we do something else. If on a daily basis we got to be told, don't talk about this guy, don't talk about this, yeah. uh, you, we have a problem with it, you know, and constantly being fucked with, uh -huh. then there's going to be a problem. Yes, sure. the second fiddle thing that you know we notice we're not getting any resources because a hundred percent of them are being pumped over to his show. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's going to annoy us. Yeah, uh, I, I, I'm not going to fucking sit on his channel.
I don't want to fucking have to do a Howard Stern Fuck commercial no. every two seconds by mentioning uh, Howard 100 or 300, whatever the fuck, channel 200. Let Bubba suck his dick. Yeah, Please I'm not going to do a commercial dick. for his show every fucking time we have to take a break. Mm -hmm. Or every time we talk about what channel we're on, we got to mention his name. Fuck like, that shit no. ain't going to be done. It's got to be the way it is right now. We have the virus. Channel 202 is our channel here on XM. Whatever the channel number is doesn't concern me, but that this is what it is. It's our own entity. Right. Well, I don't it would only, share it would with, only you know, make sense. I mean, he's got to be smart enough to know it only makes sense to have both on. It, I think it would be great if you guys were on the same service and you had your own full strength channel it, and it, he has his. It would absolutely be just, uh, a good thing for both companies. Would, shit on each other yeah, and have your shit own. On each other. You have your audience. Have your audience. Oh, a perfect world. It, it, it's a, it punch, is. Yeah. It'll be really smart. Yeah. Well, here's the problem. Howard is fucking nuts. Even a half billion bucks yeah. doesn't make you to get you to the point where you go, I really don't care what they're saying He's about He's fucking right. nuts when it comes to us. Yeah. Well, I mean, it's the leverage is, again, you like know, we were talking about, you can yeah. say fuck you to your boss. Yeah. If you're making the money, they can't. That's People what we can't uh, ignore that. You know, that's what we do here. Uh, whether you know Mel sees it, whether he takes Howard's influence, uh, there are a lot of questions here. We'll see. We'll see. Yeah, whether we want to sit there and be second fiddle right. to anybody. Let's we'll say see. hi to uh, Ron in Virginia. Ron, what's up? You know, I I, I understand where you guys are coming from. Let's talk a little bit more, but. Stern is back to you guys as far as wanting you to go swing over and over on his program in Sirius, okay? But I, I, I listening to you further. What fucking show from, do you listen? Are you listening to Howard K. Stern's radio show? Shit, dude, he wants to. You, what, what, how did you get the message that he wants us to come over there and do well? Way, way back when, before he even moved. Over. He had a big stent on uh, on you guys being on XM. He put you guys down. He slammed you. But then he came back later on. and He said, "You guys do so well. You've been you've been the most compatible of all the stations that he's taking control of. Wow. That that you guys would do well with him. You got to get your with ears him. checked, man." You know what? You know what the problem is. Also, there's only so many fucking shows out there that are good, that are entertaining enough to even be put on a channel. Why do you think? It's only Howard and Bubba over there. Bubba deci decided he was going to sell his soul to Howard. Howard needed a show. Bubba was fresh fired and blackballed from regular radio like we were for uh, for quite a while. And it was the perfect match. The only reason Howard would find us a perfect match is he, he needs another show. He needs more programming. You can't just pull shows out of your ass and put them on the radio. It doesn't work. Nope. And they're having a very hard time finding um, radio shows. But that's 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 why I say the people that are going to get slammed, you guys may get taken for a ride, but those of us who pay for this, who enjoy listening to you, who enjoy listening to other shows, we're going to, we're going to be the ones to get tagged with this crap because it'll it'll become like a cable network. We'll have to pay for your show to get a piece of the pie. Well, that might be too, and that's what the FCC's got a problem with. If it's one company, they can do whatever the fuck they want. They can raise the rates to whatever yeah. price they want. They can make it an, an a la carte kind of a deal where you have to pay for certain programming. It's going to get really interesting. It, there's there's so many things up in the air right now. Starting that it's this really, week, I think he talks in front of. Uh, yeah, he, he talks in front of that commission. Uh, Wednesday, I believe. Yeah, right. this week, and then it's just going to be. It's going to be at least a year before anything really. Okay. You know, the thing is, really if you happens. go, if they merge and you go over there, you're going to be. I mean, Howard's a, like you said, five hundred billion dollars, whatever he has. Yeah. He's clearly going to be the fat gorilla. No oh, yeah, who's yeah, over yeah, there. yeah. But that's not a bad thing for you it guys. Does, that's fine. You know, I never, ever underestimated what he's done and how right. much money he's earned for, for I mean, companies and things. I mean, if you end up living in, in a world where he's the big guy and you guys But you don't want to be the... So what? You still I, have your own That's your own fine, thing, but right? the, the you part, the being yeah. us part, yeah. doesn't want to be the being shit and pissed on in the corner no, guy. No, we no. Want, Which this seems is what to we be want. what happens. No, but well, you, well, you this, have the leverage to not let that happen because you have a loyal audience. But this is what so we want. You have, yeah. an, arm, you have an army. We want our own channel to continue. Simple as that. Yeah, no, I think as long as you get that, who gives a shit what he's saying on his channel? All right, listen... Definitely. Uh, 
Thanks for asking about the uh, merger, Louis. Sure. <laughs> <laughs> oh, boy. Jesus Christ. That was an hour ago. <laughs> hour. Uh, fuck. For one minute of audio. Mm-hmm. What a bunch of pompous assholes. Opie and Anthony shows cares about You us. know, the other thing is just sorry is that, uh, that you guys would be in a great, you know, it's like, uh, this is a, kind of a stretch of an analogy. But Ted, Teddy Roosevelt, shot. I read his uh, oh. his biography. Bully. And bully. And uh, every time he took, oh. he got offered a job, he would ask for the job blower. Number. Like, really? he was asked to take over the Navy, and he was the number two Navy guy. <laughs> because he was know. able to do everything from there, and the asshole on top just got took he all took the, the claim. Crap. Wow, he, that's He did good. that in every position he was in, all the way to vice president. And then he be, only became president because somebody shot the president. <laughs> yeah. Fucker. So, yeah. <laughs> wow. That's a good analogy. You know like what? the president. So you go over to the news, this new company and everyone's going to rain shit on its head and you guys are just going to be sitting there quietly racking up. All right. We start lizards. Teddy. Hold on. We yeah. start. So Mike is, uh, Mike from Friday morning quarterback's going to call in. All right. Mike, I'm sending the number right now. Inside number. Oh. Uh, by the way, uh, as we wait for Mike to call, um, the show's been very, very gay. Very, very gay. Has it? So we've come. Oh, up. well, uh, just this morning, again, I got the fucking Travis poster of uh, a little Harry Potter naked. With his Jesus fat cock. With his fucking fat beer can cock. Turtle cock. <laughs> <laughs> beer can. So, uh, <laughs> we got a new bit. Dink. <laughs> we, got a, we got a new bit to try to get the gay out of the show. Yeah. All right. The Opie and Anthony Show proudly presents Today's Boner. A new way to put some spring in your step and a bulge in your shorts. Today's Boner is brought to you by Assault That Ass number 10. Oh, my God. Oh, yeah. Oh, my God. Oh, shit. Stay tuned for another edition of today's boner. Only <laughs> wow. on the Opie and Anthony there show. You go. We're getting the gay out. I got the gay out. We're, we're yeah. forcing the gay to go home. God damn. I'm still a little gay. She <laughs> sounded yeah, just a tad. Just a little she creepy. sounded like she was having fun. The boner or being of the killed. Day. Let's go to Mike. Uh, Mike. Good morning, fellas. Mike, how you doing, man? Good. How are you? Good. Hey, so why do you think Mel uh, didn't tell Howard that uh, he would fire you like he told Bubba's producer? Yeah, yeah. Apparently, um, well, Bubba uh, is producer. We got some um, uh, info on that one. Said that uh, he he had heard from Mel that um, we're gone. We're done. We're yeah, just yeah. gone. A producer. And now this is Mel who had, they just announced that they wanted to merge. And instead of going to the press, and, and you pretty much can't talk about anything yet, he goes to the producer yeah. of Howard's you know second-rate show <laughs> and, tells, and him. tells him what personnel is staying yeah. or going or anything yeah. like that. Unbelievable. But uh, now he goes on Howard's show, and uh, obviously, Mike, you heard they, they were uh, talking about us. I mean, yeah, I was listening to that. That's point, obviously definitely. us they're talking about. And, you know, we just we want an answer here. We want to know what this means. And this isn't out of, you know, oh, uh, do are we going to have a job? Uh, oh, uh, uh, could, could we work there, please? This is just two guys. Uh, well, actually, a few more mm. to include our shitty staff. <laughs> but uh, a, a couple of guys uh, that just want to know where we stand with this. If we're going to be shit on... And uh, be a, a second fiddle, um, then maybe we don't want part of this. You know, we don't want to be part of this. Well, I mean, that was going to be my question. I mean, can you guys work for Mel again? Absolutely, it, we can absolutely work for him if we're not put in a position where we're being shit on every two seconds, or where we have to uh, every ten minutes of our show has to be a Howard Stern commercial. That ain't going to happen. Well, what if he tries to put those restrictions on you again about you can't mention Howard on the air? Well, then we got a that ain't gonna work. Then we got a big problem. We got a big problem. That uh, that can't work. It's just not the way uh, we work. It's not the way uh, I think the satellite the audience wants things to work either. What are we gonna sit there and, and clam up? And 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 Mel knows, obviously be hogtied. Mel knows that uh, if Howard leaves us alone, we leave Howard alone. Mel has always known that. But the problem was. 
when Mel gave us the gag order, Howard was still able to do whatever the fuck he want, wanted and, and, and say whatever the hell he wanted about us. And that's where the real issue was. We're like, wait, so this guy is going to trash us and call us the, the, uh, what are you, the, the, the two clones. Oh, it's the, always the, the same the, act, the, the clones. Uh, the tribute the... show over at uh, NEW and this and that, but we weren't allowed to fight back. Fuck that. Yeah, so we just want to know, like, uh, what, what's the deal? First of all, the guy hasn't mentioned us once, um, and it's, it's more blatantly obvious that it's an effort to not mention us instead of just an oversight. Like, now they're doing it on purpose, especially on that clip you heard from uh, Stern's show this morning. Obviously, they're talking about the Opie and Anthony show. Uh, we're the only ones that simulcast uh, like we do on uh, from uh, satellite to terrestrial like that. Um, so, obviously, they were talking about us. But, you know, he mentions everything else, the baseball, Oprah, things like that. We don't get mentioned. Um <clears throat> saying about honoring contracts, but then we'll take a look and see later, leaves it very mysterious. Are we supposed to now, you know, go through the rest of our careers wondering if uh, one day Howard gets a bug up his ass, he goes over to Mel and gets us thrown out? I'm not going to sit like that. I don't need that kind of shit in my life. So uh, we, we want an answer. Okay, so, so let's assume that happens and he doesn't renew your contract when it's up. What do you guys do? Can you do a show on regular radio? We're doing I mean, a I show on regular now, radio. But but you still have this outlet on XM where you get some of these other well, urges in your, your show out of your system. Look, we Can certainly you have the regular radio. Yeah, we certainly have the best of both worlds right now, but if we had to, we'd go back to regular radio full full time. Maybe we'd do some dumb internet thing too to yeah. get some of that uh, some of the cursing out. If we had no if we had no option, if there's only one satellite company and the CEO decides, you know, uh, he doesn't want us over there. Uh, then we don't have a choice in the matter. We uh, we would a absolutely go full time with uh, regular radio, but you know we kind of like uh, having uh, both of the mediums to to so, so play you, with. You utilize some of those competing technologies that Mel's been talking about. Yes, the competing technologies. I want to broadcast on iPod. That's right, alone. I want to do a podcast. How was that? Ten, twenty people. CB, <laughs> CB channel, 7. CB radio, going to be making a big comeback. I thought it was very interesting that the question was asked this morning. They couldn't even do you the respect to bringing up your name. No, not, not, no it isn't even a respect thing. It's like it's an anti-respect thing. <laughs> they don't. It, it's it's so obvious now that Mel has not mentioned our names that it just shows us how unwelcome we will be in yeah. that situation. See, see, there have, been, there have been memos going back and forth since this merger started, and XM has acknowledged Howard and other the fine programming they got over at uh, their company, and vice versa. Mel put out a huge memo to his staff and mentioned all this really good programming over here at XM, but uh, that made sure that he didn't mention us. When they had the uh, the conference, um, Gary Parsons mentioned got up and mentioned us. Uh, he's going to be one of the. Uh, he's going to be a chairman of the board, I guess, if the merger goes through. And um, for now, uh, yeah, for now, we'll see what happens. Uh, but he mentioned us as one of the programs that the, you know they'd be happy to have uh, on both platforms. Blah blah blah. And Mel never a word uh, mentioned other programs that are here on XM, but uh, never a word. And it just it's it's not so much the lack of respect or we're insulted or anything. It's just an indicator of the environment we would have to do our show from. And we've never been comfortable uh, in that type of environment. And that's when we usually do something incredibly stupid and uh, get ourselves thrown off the air and probably get the company fined or maybe even get the satellites blasted out of orbit. <laughs> that's what I'm hoping. We do something so bad that the United States military Star has Wars. to actually use their Star Wars technology yeah. and blow up the or satellites. the Chinese with their The Chinese satellite are shooting them off like crazy. Satellite anyway. yeah. bashing... They, or that place on ground life fuse get away <laughs> or that farmer dude who's uh yeah the that's a movie the oh, that's, that's a movie, movie. Oh, yeah. Oh, okay. yeah where sling blade gets in a rocket the chinese ship. are, yeah. are they're, yeah. they're 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 ramming other satellites now. yeah and leaving that's debris awesome. apparently in <laughs> orbit awesome. of of other vessels that are trying to <laughs> I love that do something that. fun we just hit it hard yeah good one 
But I think you've got to liken this right now to a, to a sports analogy where you know a player is going to be a free agent at the end of the year. Somebody from a different team wants him but can't talk about him until he's actually a free agent. So maybe Mel's just not willing to discuss what he would do with you guys well, out the, in the open. Well, he's discussed well, other he's programming. He's discussing all the other programs. Uh, all the other programs are being discussed as being, you know, uh, happy to have him on board, blah, blah, blah. Uh, but, you know, the, the glaring omission of the Opie and Anthony show is to me proof that we would be, uh, treated like crap over there. Well, let's hope it doesn't come to that. Let's hope. Let's right. hope. <laughs> All right, fellas. All right, man. Thanks a lot. Have a good day. When are you going to be writing about this? Uh, you know, I'm working on it right now. Thank you, sir. Thank you, Mike. Okay. Later, Mike. FMQB.com. Yep. That's no. a big, uh, it's the big industry trade website yeah. and magazine. Everyone goes there. Yeah. Bill, get us out of here. This is Unpredictable Radio. Oh. Holy crap. We need to remember that we are professionals in the entertainment industry. <laughs> Look at you. <laughs> Oh, man. Oh, my God. I'm a grown man, and I'm being yelled at. You're <laughs> idiots. No, and then Jesus is so hold, on, hold on, We're back on, so now we got to, like, uh, talk to everybody instead yeah. of ourselves here. They, Louis C.K. in studio. I guess we found Jesus, his body. They What's going on, on James tomb. Cameron? Found his tomb. Well, because he has the money. He's got. He's. If you put production dollars, like movie money, into anything, you could cure cancer. True. A movie company could cure cancer if they gave a shit. That it's, is true. But movie money is the is yeah. the answer. Space no. program, movie yeah. money. No, when you direct a movie with a pr with with uh, studio money, you realize as you're working like we could do anything. <laughs> <laughs> like we could take this group of people and do anything we want. Yeah, we have to put it on film, so we have yeah. to make it actually happen. Yeah, exactly. Especially in the old days. Yeah. So, wow. but so he found the tomb with Jesus in it. And it's got Mary and Joseph. But wait. And then it's got Mary Magdalene. But how did he find it? I know he has the money to go out and they were look for it, but like someone else must have seen this before James Cameron. Well, it was underground. It was actually, uh, there was a site. They were building some construction material. Some, you know, they were building over Jesus' grave? If you're, if you're oh in God. Jerusalem and you build a building, it, when you dig the foundation, you're gonna find. Some, you're gonna yeah, find. You're gonna something. find some fucking famous Jew who did something. <laughs> Were some Nazis digging for it first, and then some other guy went to a, yeah. a room with a stick with a crystal on it? Yeah, that's what I want to see. No, it's like in Mexico, uh, my where my grandmother's house is. Any time they try to develop, they find an Inca ruin and they gotta stop. Stop. And it's a huge pain in the fucking ass. Those Incas were everywhere. Yeah. They're just of, like infested like rats in the, yeah. here. Time to hand out the toothbrushes. <laughs> yeah. Found. Yeah. Yeah. Old symbol. Grit it off and but give me the, the old is, teaspoon. They right. said that there's <laughs> right. Jesus. Jesus and Mary Magdalene are buried as man and wife, and then their kid, they had he had a son. And he's buried in there too. So Jesus is buried there as, Jesus is as buried Joseph there. and Mary's kid. Yep. And then Jesus' son is buried there? Yes. It's a well, son of son of Jesus. Certainly. And the thing is, the kid... Did he ever do anything with his life? Huh? What, the boy that yeah. Jesus How do you live up to dad? Well, I'll tell you what I think happened, because he doesn't have any wife and no kid. Yeah. I think Jesus had a gay son. Oh, boy. <gasps> oh, no. One in, oh, every, one in every family. Oh, gee. Wow, because the son didn't procreate. Right, he didn't procreate. Mm. And there's also there's some mention in one of the Gospels of uh, there that there was a lad in Jesus' lap. Uh oh. Uh, during the Last Supper. It's mentioned in the Bible. But mm. they left it out of the painting? They left it out of the painting. So they're saying that people are saying that that was his boy. His son was gay, and that's why God hates queers. <laughs> wow. <laughs> because Jesus had this a is, faggot son. The is, gospel according to Louis C.K. That's, right. that's what happened. I'm digging this fucking Jesus version. Jesus had a fucking that's your come guzzling kid. That's TV show right there. <laughs> There's your TV show. Yeah. That James Cameron... Uh, was he? He's an adventurer. Adventurer, yeah. He's Indiana he Jones. Like they, the films. whole Titanic, you know? Yep. Makes the Titanic movie, and he's got to actually go down there. Yeah. Like, and from what I know, it's, you know, not 100% safe. 
to go down that far. <laughs> no, it's really not. Underwater. No, no. It's not like if something happened, you just kind of hold your breath, look at the surface, and, you know, swim up. No, you can't get it back up. You it's pretty much down. get crushed <laughs> right where yeah. you are. You're yeah. on a, they got you on a little, like, wire. Oh, stuff. wire. <laughs> so there's some kind of catastrophic malfunction of a pressurized window. Yeah, yeah you just got to hold on a little bit. Hold your breath. Hold your breath. Can you hold breath. your breath for about the 15 hours it takes <laughs> us to bring you up so you don't implode? <laughs> it's a million times safer not to do that. Right. Clearly. But he goes down there. It's like, mm. can't you just take the word of the people that were down there with the video? And yeah. here's how you, the ship looked. We know how mm. it looked. Here's how it sank. Make the fucking yeah. movie. It's yeah. like, no, I got to go there. No. So now what is he doing? Documentary yeah, about he's, this? He's there. Uh, yeah. And it's coming out, I guess. It's just going to be like on the Discovery Channel, though. Yeah. yeah. They, well, like they found Jesus' like body. And it's just going to be on the Discovery Channel. <laughs> they can only sell it to the Discovery yeah. Channel. They found yeah. Jesus' body, but and, and, uh, the and, networks are too busy. Yeah. HBO already has their schedule like, plan. Years ago, that it's like, we've just... got the idol. This year. It's not yeah. a good time of year. Da -dum, da -dum, da -dum, da -dum. Wouldn't that have been like in Times Square? Like years ago, yeah. with everyone gathered exactly. around watching the TVs, going, Jesus. Well, that's what I only saw, I saw it on Drudge Report. <laughs> yeah. And I click on it. I'm like, this is going to be some Drudge More Report bullshit. thing where you read it and then it goes, actually, no, it's not true. Where you actually, yeah. that's actually what it says. But it's from says the Daily it, Mirror. It, we, they found a box that says Jesus, son of Joseph and Mary and the whole thing. Yeah. Like it's extremely, they said it's 600 to 1. Pro that it's him, that it's him. Did they? Uh, are there bones in there? Have they? Both. What they used to do? Jesus I, bones. Because I, I, wow. I read about it when people when uh, Jews died back then. What they would do after laughing at them uh, is <laughs> put the body on a rock somewhere so it would rot. And then it, when it was bones, they put the bones in a box. And so they have those boxes with bones in them. A That's box of Jesus bones. Of Jesus bones. What would that go for on eBay if a piece of fucking toast <laughs> with Mary's face on it? Yeah. Could you imagine what a box of Jesus bones yeah. goes for? A couple hundred, probably. Yeah, could be a little more than that. <laughs> Hopey. <laughs> But only the, Dis the Discovery Channel. Yeah, only on the Discovery that's, Channel. That's amazing. That uh, people. I know you got Jesus' body, but it's, now. Uh, I don't know if that's going to like compete against American I mean, Idol. Fucking Britney Spears are and her fucking bald head. Britney Spears bald head or Much some fucking big titted marry the old fucking millionaire. Uh. Bimbo dies. Oh, uh, fuck, and I'm so tired of hearing about oh, her. Oh, enough of her. Just and, a dumb, dead cunt. And a fucking... <laughs> <laughs> Who cares? And our, our son that she ruined. I'm the only sorry, uh, sorry. so what you fucking turned him into and a drug addict. And it's on CNN. Addict. I mean, that's on yep. CNN. That's on primetime news. Yeah. And all these serious, the, the same people that report Iraq yeah. with the same straight face talk about new developments. To try to figure out who Anna Nicole yeah. Smith is. She's just one dead woman. Is, right? yeah. Who cares? If the only way it would be interesting is if she died again. Do it again. If she died twice, then Do it would be Do it again. News. I want it on CNN 24 hours a day. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Die twice. They don't care. Otherwise, like, who cares? Women in, die every fucking day. Yeah, there was, a four, I guess, yesterday, 41 people uh, killed and uh, just a shitload injured. Another uh, bombing. In, yeah, uh, another car whatever. bombing in Iraq. It's just amazing. Uh, they're brown. The number of people. Yeah. Fucking the, the brown dead people. I, it's think it's, dozen. I think it's also. I won't say so much brown, and this might be my racism that Amanda called me out for earlier. Mm -hmm. I don't think it's so much that it's brown, that it's far away. We have a miles no, no, to I think it's caring brown. issue. I think it's brownness. What about... Um, Be because if you, somebody, a bunch of people in England die... Uh, we cared about that. It's a big deal. But they're kind of like our brother almost. No, because England they're white. Is, is it they're because they're brown. white? Yeah. Like, what about the French people that died in the heat wave a couple of years ago? They were like... A f 250,000. That's right. Fucking fr old French people died in yeah, this heat wave. Well, and we really didn't care. No. Because they're fucking French. Yeah. I don't know. What about Asians? Shit. Like... We really kind of... The tsunami got a lot of coverage that, because it was cool cares. because it was a tsunami. Yeah, but we but could give that, a shit about those people. No, because they're, you sort of feel like they're a diamond... Like you could plow a truck into a field of them <laughs> and, you, and it wouldn't make that much difference because there's so many of them. There's just so many. Nobody cares about them. No, the val the valuelessness of 
of other people is for different reasons. French old people, nobody cares. No one cares. People don't really like French people here. If it was one country over Italy, it would have been more of a bummer. Yeah. Uh, mm. uh, brown people, because they're brown. Even yeah. if they're here, it doesn't matter that much. I mean, people die in the ghettos in America all the time. Nobody cares. Yeah. But and the main reason, though, in Iraq, though, is because we're that's what they're dying so that we can feel weirdly safe. That's like <laughs> that's like amazing. Yeah, I don't like know. we've killed hundreds of thousands of them so that we can have sort of a subtle feeling of of security. Of this safety. Yeah. I don't even know if it's so much. We're not how even many killing we're people. Killing. It's we're not amazing even, yeah. how many there of their own people. Yeah. There's. A, I don't care what anyone says. There is a civil war going on over there. It's fucking... Mm -hmm. When you're getting every day, at yeah. least a hundred people are being blown to bits by yeah. their own countrymen. That's a civil war. Uh, yeah. Because of their, you know, their different religion or different sect or whatever. They live across a different imaginary line. Mm -hmm. uh, that, to me, is a civil war. But Britney Spears' bald head gets mm -hmm. so much more coverage oh, yeah. than hundreds of people being blown to bits. Do yep. you know how horrific it would be to be a survivor of that, standing amidst, mm -hmm. uh, let's say, 100 people's mm -hmm. pieces yep. and blood on ceilings and walls, as far as you could fucking see, yep. dead people and blood. You're in your mind, you must be, this is the biggest thing to ever happen on the mm -hmm. planet. This is going to get coverage like... This is the hugest moment yeah, ever again, to happen. So you turn on your TV. And you turn on, and Britney Spears right, right, shaved right. her head. We'll be talking later to her first husband. Why does the rest of the world hate us? I don't understand. Why, why do they say we're, like, pompous? Don't care. I'm caring. Yeah. Wow. You know, I think, go to, all, go to allaccess.com. I, yeah, 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 I think that's why they picked a the fight with us, uh, these people. Yeah. Because they've been watching TV and they're like, these guys Put are... Them up. These folks are fucking losers. <laughs> yeah. Look, they, look, look, look what, what they, they watch. do. They need some real news. And they see the commercials for like where they show American guy, husbands like acting all meek with goofy. their wives. Their wives goofy, are kicking. And yeah. We just love beer and watching football like these dummies. Oh, he's trying to work the barbecue again. Yeah, yeah. It's hard. Like, Husband. Yeah. And these guys like in the desert with the beard going like oh, a whole bunch of fucking faggots over there. <laughs> we gotta let's take fucking, these guys. Let's start fighting them. <laughs> Who would be afraid of America at this point? And then we're interested as a nation for a little while, and then we just get bored and want our entertainment yeah. back. Yeah. Like we were so into fucking shock and awe. I yeah. watched shock and awe. It was great. Yeah. And then we're like, who's on Idol? Yeah, nobody Which cares. one got kicked off? I remember off on lesson. September 11th, uh, a, a few days later, somebody mentioned that on Big Brother, those people were still in the house, and they have to tell them now what oh, happened, because they're not supposed to know what's going on in the outside yeah, world. Yeah, yeah. And I was so disgusted by that, and I thought... Oh, that stuff's over now. Like, I actually thought on 9-11, there's not going to be any more Survivor. Reality shows, There's right. going to be no more reality shows. Yeah, Because yeah. now Just there's the real stakes of... in America. Right. It's fucking, no. It was, no. It got worse. Same shitty country, same fucking it idiots. It got fucking worse. You would worse. think they would just open the door and go, go home. Yeah. <laughs> get the fuck would, out. This yeah, is too disgusting. Out. Yeah, we don't even over. have to explain. Yeah. Just, just get your bags and leave. The yeah. show's yeah. over. Have a loved one tell you what happened. Yeah. Um, yeah. Our show's done. Because yeah. the, in in perspective yeah this, this is, is this is the worst fucking thing ever. shit this yeah. is a steaming lump of shit exactly in 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 perspective yep. but we've nope. gotten even worse right back in right, right in where are all the flags that were on every vehicle driving down yeah. the road where's the courteous people waving you in because we're all americans no. it's a traffic jam i remember i remember i was on the the bqe here in new york city um it was th maybe three days later and I, I saw the smoldering mess over there, this is, uh, South Manhattan, just completely in a cloud of smoke for days. Driving by, they're fucking like playing uh, uh, the Battle Hymn of the Republic on the radio. And there's on uh, there's flags on every car. Mm. Everyone's stopping and letting people in. Yeah, because they're all like Americans. you didn't yell at people because all of a sudden yeah. we were all Americans. Yeah. And it wasn't this fucking asshole in front of me that wants to get mm -hmm. in. And I'll get on the other guy's bumper and not let him in. You know, mm -hmm. everyone was nice. And then what happened? Add no, a little everybody, time. Eventually, people do the math and they go, "I didn't know any of those rich cunts in those buildings." Yeah, who cares? I don't care. They weren't me. The conspiracy theorists come out and say we did it to ourselves. We did it anyway. The fucking, yeah, the, the, the people come out and go, "You know how many fucking husbands and wives probably wanted a divorce anyway?" <laughs> yeah, you know, exactly. actually, that's the point we brought up. <laughs> yeah, like that, like there wasn't one asshole in either building. Yeah, like, they were all a single saints. Prick. 
They were all saints, yeah. and you know, and then you add enough time. And yeah. you know who knew only a couple of years would be enough time. And yeah. we're right back to we're yeah. gonna tell you about Britney Spears tonight. Oh gosh, yeah. it's just fantastic. She <laughs> shaved her head completely out of her fucking bonkers. A fucking twenty-five year old twat from Louisiana. Yeah. <laughs> fucking it's more important than of course our, she's insane. our boys in yeah, Iraq. Yeah, of course she is. Yeah. Shaving her head hey. and drinking so what? A couple other things before we get out of here for today. Uh, this cute little story from CNN. Suffolk okay. County, New York. York executive Steve Levy believes he's found a solution to a common not-in-my-backyard dilemma that's kept residents in this Long Island County concerned for years. Where to temporarily house homeless sex offenders after they've been released from prison? The answer, they say, a 500-square-foot bare-bones trailer equipped with eight beds, a bathroom, electricity, and they all and live water, together? But no TVs, telephones, or kitchen facilities. Oh the trailer God. sits on remote county-owned land away from residential communities and will be moved periodically to ensure <laughs> privacy. That's how they move it around. It's just a trailer in they're the middle like of a field They're somewhere. like superheroes. That is a sitcom. Oh, fuck oh, yeah. Man. It's that one. There's your big brother house. Oh, the god. pedophiles. Oh, my God. And they solve crimes, and they yeah. go around. Yeah. And then they leave sure. town like the Hulk. You yeah, know, and then with the, their, their trailer gets pulled away to shoulder. a new location. They're and like, they get into Shazam. new adventures. Like that show, yeah. Shazam. Captain Marvel. <laughs> They're like superheroes. Oh. And then they just move on like kung fu. Well, the, po uh, the politician oh. thinks it's a great idea. Really? Well, the beauty of this concept. The beauty. beauty. No, I love there's, there's no beauty, beauty to anything this. having to do with the beauty. 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 Uh, yeah. <laughs> What's the beauty of this is hairless and doesn't stand much taller than two fit <laughs> feet six. Well, the beauty of this concept is not only is the trailer uh, away from a residential community, but it also has a curfew for those residents within it, and it has some security guards who were there at various points during the day and the evening. The concept what? cost the county what? $85 per person per night, cheaper than putting the offenders in motels. It meets the needs of the person. It also satisfies the yeah. law of the state. We're providing a place to stay, but not a place that they're going to want to live forever. They're not going to get too comfortable there. Oh, God. my God. I can't believe people are having cheerful press conferences about... That is like the... The outskirts of all life yeah. right there. See what happens when pedophiles stop being polite and start being real. <laughs> the real world pedophilia. <laughs> oh, God damn. Oh, my God. And then they'll just trailer them off to somewhere else. How many locations, uh, remote locations could there be <laughs> where people aren't going to be pissed? Jesus. Wow. All right. We got Adam. only eight beds? Yeah, eight beds. Adam, uh, the trucker, what's up? Good morning, bu -bu -bu boys. Love ya. Hi. Uh, Canadian truck driver here. Done the walk over with you boys, and I got on some freight that you might be interested in knowing about. What do you got? I got a skid of strap-on dildos, starter beginner bondage kits, and uh, all the paraphernalia. Oh, you're hauling that, huh? Where are you hauling Where it to? I was going back to uh, Toronto, Canada. We're quite interested there. You have to cross the border with that stuff. So that's our uh, that's our export. That's our our, export. Those are export goods. That's great. Hey, that's a freedom for you. I got, my my dispatch told me to leave it on the back end because Canada Customs will probably want to take a look at it, eh? Eh? Yeah. Well, oh, uh, good good luck with your hauling. Why can't a truck dildos. filled with dildos like spill all over the the freeway? <laughs> it's always like chickens or <laughs> pigs, pigs milk or something. Or something. Right. Hey, I love you, boys. I love you. Thanks, Adam. <laughs> Happy hauling. Don't they have dildos in Canada? They got. Yeah. Why import? we gotta like? Imp why we gotta bring them their dildos? Yeah. Communique coming in. Oh, what is this? O and A. Urgent. What's our status in XM series ah. merger? Oh, FMQB, all access beach to the park. They scooped you. And we, wait, we talked to the guy. We talked to the guy from FMQB. Well, he was talking. They were typing. They were typing right onto their website. And then, and the quote is, something's got to give. Opie and Anthony want to know where they stand in the pending XM Series merger with the pair analyzing Series CEO Mel Carmazin's discussion of the merger on rival Howard Stern show Monday. And Anthony concluding, Mel's answer doesn't make me feel welcome. Carmazin responding to a question from Stern sidekick Robin Quivers, voice discussion.
discomfort with sharing programming with terrestrial radio. He said that he would honor contracts, but as you move forward, you make some decisions. We made an amazing deal with regular radio, Opie noted, adding that CBS was desperate after the David Lee Roth fiasco. Something's got to give. <laughs> you, just, you just said this. I, I know. We just is. said it, and it's in print. Welcome to fucking <laughs> the 21st like, century. Something's got to give, Opie added. We're going to get kicked off of XM, or we're going to get kicked off terrestrial radio, but something's got to give. Anthony Kumas. Uh, Kumas. I don't remember you reiterating it all that dramatically like that. I know. But it, something's wow, got to give. I know. He can't even... Co- <laughs> He can't even quote himself right. Dude, what are you doing, Opie? I'm just <laughs> sick today. Uh, Anthony Cumi is saying that he didn't want to have the show air on Stern's channel. Doing a fucking commercial for Stern added that. It's got to be the way it is right now with our own channel. If we're going to be shit on, maybe we don't want to be part of this. Kumia said, although he stressed uh, that <laughs> ONA yeah, could I this absolutely stressing. work for Karmazin as long as no restrictions are placed on their content, as was the case when ONA were at CBS and prevented from discussing Stern by Karmazin instituted gag order. Now, what is Mike going to write? He can't write the same thing. Mike, what Mike, happened? What happened, Mike? What happened? Uh, and then they gave weird. Opie the big quote. Bold type thing. Something's gonna give. God, I barely Something's talk today, but I get a quote in the, in the press. That's you ought to, you ought to have an exclamation point. I'm like a home run hitter. A lot of strikeouts, and then I hit a home run. You whack this one over the wall. Gonna give. You've been you've and, been hitting nothing but base hits all day, and I just sit back and I hit like a a, a late game homer. You get a little homer. <laughs> I am so sick. Today. I like they have our picture in here. The what? And it's the worst picture. It's our publicity picture they took of us at XM. Yeah. That's so weird. Oh, man. it's horrible. That's and then so weird how they. Yeah. What about us? It says on the bottom. It makes what it sound like it was. Us? Yeah, I don't know. It's strange. Yeah, it does. It makes it sound like what? Yeah. Like we're kind of. Whining. I remember we're we're, whining. I was with uh, when I was writing for Conan. I went with Andy Richter to uh, the the New York Knicks were playing uh, Houston in the finals, the yeah. NBA finals. So we went to Houston and covered it for the Conan show just for fun. And and the bit was that Andy doesn't know shit about sports and doesn't care about it. So he just came up with one question to ask everybody, and it was, "What about the Ori factor?" <laughs> and Robert Ori was playing for, Brilliant. but nobody. He was nothing. He wasn't actually a good player then. So we got him into the post game big thing. And there was a guy with a microphone on the, on a long pole and I asked the guy, Will you hit my guy Andy Richter? He's like, I don't care. So <laughs> on MSG sure. there's uh, Patrick Ewing real serious taking he lost the game. And Andy goes, What about uh, Patrick, what about the Ori factor? And That's Ewing great. Ewing giggled and went, What? What's, <laughs> what's the Ori factor? And everybody laughed. Anyway, about a week later it was in a newspaper from Detroit or somewhere and it said uh, Patrick Ewing determined to bounce back or whatever it was. When asked the question, what about the Ori factor, he shot back with steely eyes, what Ori factor? Oh, like they turned it into this They whole, turned it into a dramatic moment. Yeah, and that there was a hush. Like yeah. all just fucking lies. What about it? Yeah, what about it? And it was just a goof. <laughs> Holy shit, fucking news. God. No, every time you read something about something you know about, it's bullshit. Yeah. Well, I got to assume it's everything on the news is bullshit. It is hysterical reading about it seconds after we just said it. <laughs> yeah, it's <laughs> it's so kind of weird. funny, though. Hey, we're going to have fun with this. <laughs> Still, st- Anthony said steely-eyed. <laughs> Anthony said, my mother's cunt. Just starts saying something <laughs> yeah, else. Just you know? say that. <laughs> just blur just things out. Oh, oh, Mike got scooped. Poor Mike. How did Mike get scooped when we, we were giving him Mike. the exclusive interview on right. the phone? Right. We were saying all this to Friday morning quarterback, but all that, all access just leaves that out of their story. <laughs> wow. <laughs> does it mention how uh, Mel uh, Mel's answer doesn't make us feel welcome? Okay. Yeah. It doesn't mention how he didn't mention us. Right. That was the mention I want mentioned. Well, maybe Friday morning quarterback <laughs> will get it a little. Bit. That's your angle, See, Mike. Mike. See? The fact that he's going out of his way not to mention us. Stop listening to our show and get writing. Yeah, what are you doing on the phone with us? The AP is uh, sending out their story in a minute or two. <laughs> it's going to be on Drudge soon. Uh, oh, look, Jesus is coughing. Uh, huh? You found it? Yeah, I found it. It's on Drudge. <laughs> oh, that's all I had to Jesus do. Was it on? Was it on FoundryMusic.com? That's what I think. If Jesus came back, he's gonna be like on MSNBC with all shit yeah. scrolling by him, and yeah, the, the they Nasdaq won't take the kicker off. Head. Yeah, it'll just they'll, be they'll like break for commercial, and there'll be somebody uh, giving half interested uh, questions, you know, about, talking yeah, at, the opposing and, uh, okay, view. Jesus, thank you uh, for coming by. Next, we have Nancy Grace is gonna talk yeah, to yes. the Jesus. Will be talking, and, and he'll the, be like. Uh, how much oh. time do you give Jesus? 
Yeah, exactly. That's just him. it. He'll be talking. He'll be like, well, the reason I have come back is yeah. I'm noticing that there isn't much. Thank you, G. Thank you, G. You know what? Thank you very much. Oh, okay, thank okay, you. We, thank you for having me. Oh, I thought I was going to have I, another minute. I was going to talk about why I came back. <laughs> no, we're, Jesus, we'd love to uh, have you again. But, uh, but coming up, Britney Spears' attorney uh, <laughs> shoots back. <laughs> that's that's where we live. No, that's it. Holy like fuck. Like, he'll be on Star Magazine. He's in the corner, in a box in the corner. Yeah, a right, little right. box in the corner. No. Speaking of and Britney. there'll be a guy that has to, like, put the fucking little mic wire yeah, up to exactly. his rope. <laughs> Jesus, could you grab in? Do you want to put that through yourself or you want me I'll to do through it? No, I'll, I'll get, get it. it. I'll get okay, it. So Jesus, what do you need? A little makeup? You got some uh, uh, bags under your eyes a little bit. We'll just put a little makeup on you, Jesus. Oh, God. Hair? What do you do with your hair? That's it. Do you just? Do you want me to give it a, a little body to it? He's gonna get a show on We. And yeah, that's yeah. it. Jesus, the offers are coming through for Jesus for his own show. Speaking of Britney, um, yes, Britney. <laughs> da, 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 I told Anthony, Louis, like yes. you are so quick to begin with. Ant is so quick, and I'm on like major cold medicine to so mm. to try to keep up with you guys today has been the biggest challenge of my career. <laughs> I'm like. I, it sounds like I'm right there, but I'm a step behind all day long. <laughs> Oaks on some great cold medication, uh, man. Mm -hmm. uh, I, no, the Britney thing, really fast. I mean, she is just a bad girl, man. Snorting and doing ecstasy and ODing, mm -hmm. according to the guy she married for a few hours. Well, Opie, we all thought this was a new development with Britney Spears, but apparently she's been this way for years. <laughs> <laughs> I just want to say it like this smarmy kind of fucking asshole cocksucker voice. What, what's the story? They're claiming that she had a fatal, almost almost fatal, obviously, well, overdose. When she was married to childhood friend Jason Alexander, not the one from the Seinfeld show, but her childhood friend. <laughs> no, I know I say this all the time. It's so funny with it. Can we yes. get the music for Anthony? There you go. Well, not Britney Britney. As I was saying, Jason Alexander and not the one from Seinfeld. Uh, boy, would that be uh, strange, wouldn't it? <laughs> Two bald people walking around. <laughs> oh, it's terrible. But apparently this behavior started when she was uh, with this gentleman. And he uh, was telling stories now. He has come forward and started telling stories about a very sordid past of sex with a stripper involved. A threesome. A threesome. That's yes, right. absolutely. It'll be a threesome. A drug fueled threesome. Drug fueled with uh, ecstasy, cocaine, and booze. And apparently, Britney Spears experienced an overdose when doing some pure ecstasy. Uh, All the gays and the Jews. Da, 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 da. All the gays and the Jews. Da, 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 run da, watch your the life. show. <laughs> <laughs> and the whores and the blacks and the love. Jason the Alexander, road. former boyfriend, had to bring Britney nude. Nude. Mm, oh into my the god. Shower. Did I say naked? <laughs> I said <laughs> naked. <laughs> had to bring her into the shower and uh, cool her off. Uh, he thought she was going to die. His quote was actually, I can't believe this fucking bitch is going to die on me. <laughs> <laughs> oh, my God. She shit in her little panties. <laughs> she shit her thong. <laughs> he called up the person he got the drugs from, Lance, and uh, drove over to the house, and they put an adrenaline needle in her chest. <laughs> All right. That's Pulp Fiction. <laughs> oh, shit, it is. I get my movies mixed up with reality. <laughs> hey, uh, I got to stab her three times. By the way, going backwards. Backwards. Uh, the Drudge Report, where they're they're talking about uh, Jesus' grave there. Yeah. Because we're, we're wondering how much... Jesus' grave. We're wondering Jesus, how much uh, time... No time for that on this broadcast. <laughs> we're wondering how much time Jesus would get and all that, blah, mm -hmm. blah, blah. Yeah. Well, it's already begun because the Drudge Report, you would assume that the story of uh, the coffin of Jesus would be top billing. Yeah. No, Ellen DeGeneres in her pantsuit gets uh, top yes. billing yeah. over Jesus' mm -hmm. grave. They're saying a 42 mm -hmm. share. 42 share for the Oscars, and then... You get to uh, see about uh, is that high? I don't even know what that Jesus. means. No. Let's see. It's a no. no Oscars, a bore and a horror, uh, unspectac unspectacular, boring. Um, let's see. Uh, what the ABC pulled a twenty four, uh, twenty seven point four rating for the Oscars. Uh, Truth wins. They got Al Gore up there. Um, if numbers hold, would be third least watched Oscars. Joining low of 2006, 2003, and then click here for more American Idol uh, ratings. And uh, over here in the corner, I see um, Jesus's coffin. Yeah, <laughs> amazing. Yeah, it uh, it's got a little picture of it. Doesn't look very impressive. <laughs> 
How's the, uh, how does Oscar talk beat Jesus talk? Well, the picture yeah. of Marty Scorsese is a little bigger than it the is. picture of Al Gore, than Jesus' coffin. Oh, yeah. my God. Should Marty Scorsese holding an Oscar be oh sharing the same, the same page with Jesus? Jesus is coffin. <laughs> like after that movie, the Raiders of the Lost Ark, the idea that there's this weird box that has all this power. Yeah. This is the actual dead fucking Jew body of Jesus. Right. Right. And this nobody isn't the cares. Rock should the fucking. No. Uh, this is uh, should the Ten Commandments. All the uh, the rest of the news just go away. This is it should just this be is... one story on Drudge today. Yeah. That's it. It, it, sh it should be it. That's if it. you open this box, there's a fucking uncircumcised Jewish cock <laughs> and bone. This is the one story that <laughs> wipes, wipes all the other news away for you. Yeah. But nope. no, nope. no, it, it doesn't even get top billing. Nope. Ellen DeGeneres, more important than Jesus' coffin yep. today. Congratulations to Ellen DeGeneres. All right. Got a little uh, eBay joke yeah. for you. Oh, yeah. And a, mm -hmm. a little science to it, though. Mm -hmm. Jesus' skeleton mm -hmm. for sale. Mm hmm. Slightly damaged tarsals and metatarsals. <laughs> what is That's going on? horrible. You're just mentioning those bones because you know just them. Just a bone joke. Thank you. Thought <laughs> <laughs> I. But it's not even a pun. Of course it isn't. It's like just I'm, to show off. That you I'm know just what showing off. Tarsals and metatarsals are. <laughs> I'm just, just showing off. Oh my gosh. <laughs> it's just about ready to go off. That's what I do. It's just about time to go off. No, when I do a, a foot hand joke. Oh boy. Oh my god. From direct. Scholars criticize. Uh oh. oh. Controversy. What? Who would think this would be controversial? Yeah. I think it's just a hands down. Yeah, just, yes, yep. it is. That's the thing is when you read the article. <laughs> You, by the end of it, you go, those are his butts. That's, that's him. His butt. It's it's him. Be. And nobody fucking cares. No one cares. That. Fuck. Do you want to answer that phone? Because that's Lindsay Lohan. Lohan might be going back in rehab. That's yeah, why. Exactly. Blah, 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 blah. Yeah, that's Hello? yeah, that's it's yeah. Ooh. Oh. Oh. Phone call. I like this. How's the dog? Is <gasps> but what if they're. Okay. <laughs> oh, Louis Dog. When last we left you. Yeah, what Louis if the did dog. He, did he say that. So the flight is definitely going to take off? Yeah. Are you kidding me? Okay. Yeah, his dog. He flew his dog. Why? He was and, nice. And because of the weather, it got delayed. So with a bag, it's one thing. Yeah. You know, you just yeah. got your your luggage. What, what does he want? But his this dog? is a living animal. Is he well, he, so he said there's no way the flight's going to sit on the him. tarmac with the dog in it. Oh. Give the dog a seat. Okay. Put him in that emergency aisle so he gets some tail room. Let him fly the plane. Let him fly. I'm still I'm still on the air and they're making fun of you. No. <laughs> I'm, I feel for your dog now. Wait, who are you talking to? What? It's his wife. Oh, I, wow. Oh, she was not, worried about the dog. How yeah. much do we like Louis C.K.? A uh, lot. That's the question I have A today. lot. <laughs> you sure? He's one of our bestest Look, pals. Thank you. I'm on cold medicine. I, one I, of I our remember bestest. that I did this. But He's one of our bestest pals. Is that your wife? It was my wife. Yeah. Wait, what is happening? The my dog, dog is in New York? My or? dog is in L.A. And and they're flying the dog to be with you in New York? Yeah. Apparently he's tried to hijack I've, a plane. You miss your dog that much? Well, what am I supposed to do with the dog? Did you leave her there? No, where the whole family's moving back here. It's not I'm moving my family to New York. Oh, the whole family's moving back. Yeah, not just I'm not <laughs> flying the dog in here so well, I can I, pet it and send it home. <laughs> I don't know. Go you. home. Who knows with you? Who can figure you out? Dog sitting Wait. there with his legs crossed in first class. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I'll take the uh, yeah, Alpo sitting next to the so fucking, guys are the all John that the John Benet guy. You're all moving back to New York. <laughs> um, you were in L.A. Literally. We were in L.A. all these uh, this time to do Lucky Louie, gotcha. and so my wife hates it there, so finally I'm giving up the fucking career <laughs> to New oh, York where that can't get God. any work. And uh, oh, I, every time we move from one coast to the other, I drive my dog, um, because the idea of putting the dog in the plane is just painful, so Bar barbaric. And it, yeah. of so course, now, it goes worse than you ever fucking imagined. Yeah, because now we finally I said, fuck it, I'm putting the dog on a plane. But it is a fucking yeah, historical you can't storm. Land. There's going to be a huge storm, so the dog's going to be probably locked in a crate in the belly of some plane oh. sitting on a tarmac for several hours. Oh, no. Oh, boy. They know there's a fucking dog on the plane. Yeah. This dog's on the plane. They know, yeah. so they, they won't, like, sit there and just let not gonna breathe open in jet the, fuel or... Yeah, no. Oh, it's it's horrible. in the uh, you know in the cargo. Yeah. The yeah. Cargo oh, I understand apartment. they didn't put him in the landing gear like some <laughs> yeah, fucking yeah. Ecuadorian <laughs> trying to get to the United States. We interrupt this program. <laughs> oh. The ozone midget sighting of the day. Two in one day. Richard, Indiana. What's up? 
Yeah, hey, uh, too bad Jimmy's not here. He'd love this. I uh, play in a band in Louisville, Kentucky. We played for a, uh, opened up for a band of midgets called Mini Kiss. Oh, we had Mini oh, Kiss. Oh, we've uh, seen Mini Kiss. dude. This is oh, yeah, old I mean, news. We, uh, we did a bunch of things with Mini Kiss over the years. This is not a midget sighting. <laughs> well, hey, punch it out. All right. Meanwhile, back at the show, they did some terrific things for us over the years. Um, all right. So the dog, yeah, so what's the, uh, the latest on the dog? So they picked her up. I mean, I, I've been calling saying there's a storm, so you're not going to fly her, right? But my wife called to say, yeah, they came and got the dog. Oh, they got it? Yeah, but I guess she thinks that means everything's okay, but I'm not sure why that doesn't mean... Can I can I ask an honest question? Yeah. Would you miss the dog if it didn't make it in one piece? <laughs> yeah, I would this... a lot. Okay. So people get attached to their animals. Oh, here's you. the guy's message. Oh, what is he saying? Should not be affected by weather. We don't foresee any problems. <laughs> of course, schedules can always change. Your dog can always die. <laughs> everything, everything's running on time. Uh, I don't know why they think everything's going to... I mean, there's a big storm headed here. Yeah, right. It's killing people on its, in its path. They um, they fly above so, it. So your family picked up the dog. They picked up the okay. dog, and the dog's going to be on the plane. But who knows where the plane will land and, you know... Is the family on the same plane? What? No, the family's going to fly Wednesday. What does it cost to fly a dog cross country? Uh, it, depending on how you do it. Like if you do it yourself, which means going to get your own cage and doing all this shit. Right. It's not that much. It's like five hundred dollars or whatever. You could just like, come in with a dog on a leash. But I'm and having say, do the this guy. Yeah, this guy picks it up door to door. It's fifteen hundred dollars. Sweet. Wow. Yeah. But that's not bad. You, you know. don't have to pick up the dog or anything. That's that's, that's no. They like, take it to my house. They'll bring it here to New York. But that's like more than a first class seat. For well, a human? No, it's not. Fifteen uh, fifteen hundred is a one cheap, way. Is a cheap one way first class. That's a, yeah, that's business these days. Fifteen hundred. It is cheap, but it's one way. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah it is. I'm not flying the dog home. Uh, let's get out of here. Yeah. Line in the daytime. Oh yes. Uh, no sponsorship right now. Just a quick bodogfight.com. Yeah, right. bodogfight.com. Go right. there. Here's the uh, here's the runner up line of the day. Just <laughs> die. <laughs> just, 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 yeah. Yeah. Oh, yeah. I can't do no wrong though. He's like, uh, all, he's everywhere. Uh, uh, he's everywhere. I seriously think the cure for AIDS was him dying of it. Because <laughs> <laughs> once AIDS gets him, it'll be like my work is done. <laughs> my work here yeah, is done. Yes. There you go. Was Wait, that what? the fuck? <laughs> what is it? Was it in there? It sounded like it. Unfortunately, we can't replay it because we don't have that tape anymore. Yeah. <laughs> That's right. That's right. We don't keep tapes. <laughs> I think it was though. It was that sl like light, like? Huh? I think maybe that was it. Yeah. Well, Opie, how is flying a dog hmm. barbaric? Did planes exist when barbarians lived? I don't know, Stephen Wright. <laughs> Jesus Christ! A little nitpicky. It's time, what a barbarian would do. Uh, right. We're around now. These guys kill us on a daily basis. Jesus. Anthony was uh, talking about the Rana Fez event and how that everyone just gets. I gotta say, I, you know yeah. something? I'm glad you brought it up because now I I gotta say I something. I forgot about all this. about it. It was uh, before the show. You were explaining. You, I, I had to go to Atlantic City. I really wanted to go to the Rana Fez uh, show on Friday Ron and night. Fez's event on Friday night over at the Hard Rock Cafe. Uh, huge success. It was a huge success. Uh, Eastside Dave taking on uh, the Rider. Um, they had uh, a great match. I won't give away any details. I'm sure Ron and Fez are going to want to uh, recap today. They're recap have the a whole really thing good show today. Sure. But um, here's something I noticed. Uh, their event went off without a hitch. Fantastically, <laughs> without a hitch. And one of the biggest reasons I think was because of the audience. Their crowd will actually watch the stage. As people are doing things, and after 10 seconds, not start booing, throwing <laughs> shit, chanting fuck you, chanting F free FM sucks. No, they said fuck uh, free FM. Fuck free FM, uh, throwing th b boring, yawning, uh, calling people to the front of the stage <laughs> to talk to them during a fucking radio show. Mm. I was amazed at Ron and Fez's audience. We have savages that come to our shows that w w it doesn't matter if, again, G we could wheel out Jesus' bones <laughs> yeah. on the front of the stage and someone will throw a fucking yeah. bottle at it yeah. and try to like get it, get it in the box. Well, we did the uh, Halloween show live from the Hard Rock and yeah. they started the Fuck Free FM chant. Which fucked up our whole Fuck event. Fuck Free FM. We did the uh, the St. Paddy's Day thing, well, and it just turned into 
uh, uh, guys coming up telling uh, nigger jokes. I mean, we we just well, want. What did you think was gonna happen? I, I don't know. <laughs> you think just gonna drink whiskey and be and having be jolly? a little fun or something? But yeah, one or two uh, jokes is yeah. fun. And right. racial humor over is and fine. Over and right. over again. Right. Yes, and believe me, racial humor is great. I fucking love it. Uh huh. But it's this. When you you know when the attitude changes. Yes. And it's just like you know. Yeah, let me tell you these. Fucking niggas <laughs> yeah, yeah, came in, and you're like, yeah. holy shit, okay, this is turned. No, I went I went to my, uh, upstate, we have a house upstate, and these neighbors, I don't know, I ho- stop me if I've told the story here, I, I'm, I'm a complete asshole. I don't remember it already. But, <laughs> but uh, the, my neighbors were watching the Tyson-Lennox-Lewis fight on satellite, and they invited me, and I go there, and all my neighbors on the street are there. And it's the first. I realize they all go to this guy's house to drink. I've never yeah. seen them all in one place. But I, I, we live in the country. There's, they're all farmers. They're all sweet Christian farm, nicest oh, people shit. in the world. And we're all sitting there watching the Tyson fight. And one guy yells out, uh, "I think the nigger's gonna win." <laughs> oh, because there's two black guys oh, fighting. Oh no, but not unclever. Not right. At, it's, it's funny, but uh, let me let me now. Yeah, you were waiting for the reaction to see how it played in the room. Yeah, and I'm like, okay, a guy <laughs> said something. The story I'm going to tell my wife is, oh, we're at the Tyson fight. I'm watching Tyson, and, and guess what? Uh, this guy said nigger, and then another guy goes, I think the nigger's going to lose too, and they're all laughing. All right, tags and on. Each person in the room, all of my neighbors, everybody lives on my street, said nigger by the end of the by Holy the end of the fight. Shit. And and they're after a while, they're just saying stuff like they're like two monkeys up there, <laughs> like just saying, you know, I heard they don't do nothing they're like animals like they're yeah. just fucking why just... don't he hit him with his tail <laughs> yeah, <it's just> like, <laughs> oh. Oh. and i'm just going oh god yeah these are my yeah. neighbors i don't want now i can't i don't want my daughter knowing their kids and you know we gotta move honey <laughs> to new york move yeah. the trailer with eight beds and, and what am i gonna take a stand like, yeah. to get the hey, to i'm gonna stand up see here you country folk we got us a boxer lover <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> get it we mean nigger <laughs> so anyway that that's one reason yeah. why we haven't done a live broadcast because the last one went off so horrifically. Their crowd was so fucking nice mm-hmm. and like a- accepting of everything that was going on up there. And you know, like any live show, there are your highlights and some moments that don't work as well. Like uh, and uh, me being on stage and backstage a lot of the time, Ronnie would come back and go, ah, "Let's get this fucking thing over with," because you know maybe something wasn't going over as well as you sure. thought. So there are things that happen like that. But their crowd, like goes through those moments. They get through them. They, they applaud the fact that they're fucking up there giving it uh, uh, their shot and trying. And then the banner moments, like Fez getting up there singing the fucking Fez song was just like he was a rock star and they were cheering and fuck it was amazing what do we get fuck free fm fuck free fm I to do a you show suck for live radio. boring and, and let me tell you Regular another thing radio, whatever. girls girls coming up on fucking stage and being treated with some iota of respect. Mm. I'm not even talking about, like, uh, people at our events get up there and rape the girls on stage, although we do have to watch for we, that. But every girl that got up on stage at one of our events, it's, it's nothing but, show your tits, where's your cunt, you fucking whore bitch, <laughs> show us your tits, boo, boo, and they'll boo when they don't fucking show. And believe it or not, we've gotten a little better with that one. Mm-hmm. A little better. A little. <laughs> but we uh, still got a ways un- to go. Unfucking believable. And then and there's girls out there, and then they're fucking not, they're being treated like human beings. Well, we're supposed yeah. to just like, this is the first year we're not doing a St. Patty's Day show live. Yeah, on go the radio. fuck yourselves. And it and it's a, it's a, I say it's a direct result of the mm-hmm. Halloween show. Now I, I I was very pissed off at our audience when I was watching this because I'm like you know and I start thinking about what we go through with some well, of these live shows. Your audience is like the and the, then, the dirty dozen. You know they're the guys you drag them out of no. jail to kill Hitler. I, w- and I put them yeah, back well in. okay. That's a good point. <laughs> but I was thinking, then it turned around, and I, I had a little bit of revelation. and went, you know something? It's our fault. Sure. We're the parents. Of course. We're the fucking parents that fucked up and let them do whatever they want yeah. and cheered them on when they attacked and did this, that, and the other thing. And we raised them to be the fucking animals that they are. Of course you did. And Ron and Fez raised their audience to be what they are, mm-hmm. and uh, they appreciate well, the guess entertainment. What? There's more people like your fans than there are people like their fans. I, <laughs> Most I, people are disgusting. So you know your, your ratings I, are going to keep going up. I, I, well, we can only hope, I guess. We can only hope. I was, I was appalled. But that by was the polite audience mm-hmm. that Ron and Fez had. Mm-hmm. Well, they're going to have a, a fine recap of the, the event they had. Yeah, it was put on very well. Let's get out of here. We got a line of the day, bodogfight.com. Let's yes. do it, Bill. Here, here, here comes. 
line of the day. Did you hear there was a, a stabbing at one of the parties? Really? Last night, and it was uh, <laughs> Reese. Uh, yeah. Reese. Reese's husband? No, Reese. Ex-husband? No, right there. With Reese Witherspoon? Reese. No, with a knife. <laughs> oh, my. oh, my God. Are you still playing? Oh, my God. God. It's one of, oh, one of the worst my. jokes I've ever heard. Oh, that you heard? It is one of the Who told worst. you that one? Uh, Joe. <laughs> <laughs> Come on. There you go. That's a great one. That's pretty great. <sighs> Isn't that bad? It's pretty great. I laughed when I heard it. That's I funny. think I was drunk. <laughs> and they didn't have Flavor Flav just completely taking over their show. That's another thing. Yeah. Flavor Flav, like it was organized. Did, did you ever hear about this? No. Flavor oh, Flav one of the greatest over. moments no. in Opie and Anthony history. Mm -hmm. I won't We're, blame the audience for that. No, no, we of course not. We're trying to do a Halloween party, and, and part of it was Flavor Flav just off his show, hot as shit. He's putting out his first album and whatever. 20 years 20 or whatever years. it was. So we're like, and he's done our show. Like, yeah, we'll have him show up at the Hard Rock and do maybe a song on stage. Wave to the crowd, do a song, we'll and then leave. He was on stage for close to an hour. He and brought no one... out every boxer that he had brought with him. Middle way. Yeah, they were all of them. Let me tell you. <laughs> Dude. And he had a posse of, <clears throat> I, I don't want to exaggerate, so 50, please help me. Conservatively. Had to be 50 people. Oh, my God. On stage. And can he I, introduced every you, one of them. Can I just tell you the related story that you're going to enjoy? Yeah, please. <laughs> this is a story that uh, I, this guy I know, Mike Rowe, he's a comedian. Yeah, Mike. You know Mike Rowe? Yeah, yeah. Dirty Jobs. No, 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 different Not guy. That one guy. <laughs> <laughs> Mike, comedian. Mike Rowe told me this story that he was at home in Connecticut where he grew up, and he never he had a working class family, didn't really like them, uh, didn't get along with anybody in his family. So he's having bad holidays. And everybody's racist in his family, and he's, so his father, his his uh, cousin comes home and says something like, oh, "Geez, you know what? This uh, today at work, this nigger fell asleep at the forklift, right?" So he's depressed about it. Uh, it, it late late at night, he's having a glass of milk in his mom's kitchen, and uh, his brother comes down, who he is the one person he relates to, <laughs> and says, "What's the matter, Mike? Well, you know, uh, cousin, whatever Ray said, uh, the nigger fell asleep at the forklift, and his brother goes, the nigger." fell asleep at the forklift <laughs> <laughs> so anyway there's that level of the story right i was working at cedric the entertainer which is a black guy show and half yeah. the writers were white half were black and so we're trading race stories you know having a bit of a summit <laughs> and i tell that story and one of the black writers goes, fucking nothing makes me madder than a nigger falling asleep at the forklift. Oh, and no other black guy's going to get a job at that plant now. Like, he took this, this story yeah, yeah. from that angry standpoint. And then I tell all of that to my friend Dino. And it's still, nobody's getting the Grasping point. Grasping the fact. Yeah. And so then I tell the story to Dean, my the friend Dino. And my friend Dino's reaction is, how the fuck do you fall asleep at a forklift? <laughs> 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 it's like nobody's listening to Mike and his fucking problem There's with a, his race. Uh, an inner torment here that no one's really <laughs> getting. Nobody's getting. Go forget about the forklift <laughs> yeah, part. Forget about the nigger the anything. forklift. That's not the point. Could have been anything. And somewhere there's this fucking guy who fell asleep at a forklift has no idea what he's doing. No started. idea his story is being no. told throughout no. the land. <laughs> and he's being called a nigger at the forklift <laughs> by thousands of people he's never asked. And now it's Cedric on the radio. the entertainer yeah, knows about him. And now millions of listeners around the country know about the nigger who fell asleep at the forklift. forklift. <laughs> and one man's inner turmoil. <laughs> and his odds with his family. <laughs> but the Flav, uh, Flavor uh, Flav hijacked our show for well over uh, an hour, and no one was brave enough to tell him to get the no fuck off oh, the stage. 50 guys out there, and he's introducing each one. Yo, I want to bring out... And then he starts playing some, some music and rapping. So you think he's going to get started And he he, it took him so long, but his raps were just him talking about his posse and who... Yeah. He, so he, so we were like, oh my God, what do we do? In the end, he thought it was a record release party for his album. For his, for his album. Not, he, he didn't... He didn't realize he was just doing a guest spot on our show. I think show. someone told him that to get him there. The whole, oh, Jesus. Louis, so the we're whole sitting audience the was cold. white. Like, uh, do you notice anything? Would this uh, be the crowd you'd be playing in front of at a record release party? Yeah. Like Michael Jackson when he picked up that non-trophy. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. <laughs> that was pretty much it. I want to accept this award. <laughs> no, it's not an award, it's just douchebag. Something. It's something on your birthday cake, <laughs> you fucking kid toucher. <laughs> All right. We can go on forever. Uh, Louis, thank you so much. Thanks, guys. Oh, absolutely. Louis, again, Thanks man. for having me. Uh, we love having we found out Louis is going to be on the ONA Traveling Virus this summer. That's great yeah, news. Yeah, great. And uh, with the Boston Comedy Connection, uh, end of the month. End of the month, okay. Tempe Improv, Phoenix, uh, 
sometime this month. Too. MySpace, March. website. I got LouisCK.com, Lucky Louie on DVD, HBO, yep. Shameless. Commentary special. and stuff on the DVD. Lots of that, yeah. yeah. Right. Funny shit. It's always Thank a pleasure, Louie. Thanks, Thanks, guys. so much. We'll see you guys tomorrow. See you tomorrow. Oh, no, tell your friends. He's infected. That's right, OP. Yeah. Shut your mouth. I love the homoerotic nature of the whole event. The virus made my genitals rot off. Oh, dude, don't come near me. We're your celebrity skin cancer connection. And it was better than my first kiss. Oh, laugh until your innards just spill out on the chair. And Anthony Show. Line of the Day is brought to you by Bodog. If you'd like to vote on any of the weekly show polls, go to ilike2listen.com.